Hello there mortals, I am Jensen and welcome back to Undertale. In this session, I have deleted my save entirely and we're going to be running through and trying to find all the fun value of events because I don't know if they're necessarily canon to the game, but what I do know is that they are in the game. So we do have to consider them at some point anyway. I personally believe they're cut content and I'll go into that later, but for now we are going to be absolutely fine. Let's go ahead and just name our character. I don't know, we got six character slot, so let's just go as a nice tasteful pooper. We are pooper in this playthrough right here, and we are going to be going through and we're going to find all of the fun value events, which means we can't really kill a lot of people. A lot of the fun value events are tied to genocide route, a lot of them are tied to not killing anybody, so we're going to have to do a very specific playstyle. Right, so I'm going to speed through this. There's going to be lots of spoilers in this playthrough, so if you don't want any spoil spoilers, go onto my channel and go and look up any of the billions of playthroughs that I have done. I've done three playthroughs. I am almost finished Genocide, and that is going to be the last playthrough that I do before the game theory comes out. Awesome. Let's get through Flowey right here. That looks a little bit too loud on my recording software. Let's go ahead and drop that just by a reasonable amount. Maybe this much looks good. Perfect. Awesome. So, I do have something that I want to say as well, uh, just while I'm right at the start of this episode. Please do not come onto the streams if you do plan on coming onto the streams and talking about committing felonies in real time. I had a bit of a complex situation a couple of days ago where somebody was talking about doing a crime uh, in real time in my chat and it, it upset a lot of the people who were in the chat. It also doesn't really help the um, privacy aspect of YouTube chat because essentially when you start saying, hey, I'm doing this crime, people can dox you. On top of that, I do also have a responsibility to kind of at least protect to the best of my ability all of the younger viewers that come onto my channel because I, I can't control the age of the people who do come onto this channel. And I do kind of want this to be a safe place no matter who you are or where you are in life or anything like that. So just don't talk about crimes, please. <laughs> it's really, really awkward and you may accidentally end up doxing yourself. Essentially, I don't want my channel to ever pop up on something like Turkey Tom or Keem Stars channel or uh, Kiwi Farms, anything like that. I, I, that's just not the channel I want. So I'm, I'm going to be trying to avoid drama as much as humanly possible. And if that means restricting free speech, which I don't necessarily want to do, I like having a First Amendment on my channel. If I have to restrict free speech to uh, people committing crimes, then so be it. Okay, good. And we'll hit this lever right here. We got to get through this little tutorial zone. I don't think we can access the... No, we can't access the menu just yet, so I can't change the controls, but we do want to. All right, we're going to skip through all of this dialogue, and we're going to speak to this dummy instead of attacking it, because we're going to go about as pacifist as we possibly can, and we don't necessarily want to... Uh, kind of kill too many people because that'll invalidate at least three or four of the fun value events later on in the game we won't be able to do them yes uh it's also a good idea to just not commit crimes in general so uh, hi there red rocks please don't commit crimes in general uh no we don't actually want to attack him we missed that's okay toriel just scared off the frog thank you toriel i I haven't noticed this before, by the way, but I couldn't help but notice that last time we were playing this, in the intro, we saw Flowey, right? And Flowey was kind of like shooed away by Toriel. Do you think Toriel actually knows that that is her son, Asriel? Also, heavy spoilers in this. Again, I'll iterate that just in case people missed it the first time. And kind of skip through all of my um, complaints about people committing crimes in my chat. Okay, good. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Okay, good. Oh no, this one's going to be really hard. The notification on Discord was seven minutes late. Hey, that's absolutely fine. I was actually uh, going to be streaming late anyway because my headphones were only coming out of one side of the headphone. I don't know why that was, but I had to deal with that for a good five minutes. Luckily, it fixed itself right as I was supposed to go live, but, you know, it is what it is. Okay. We've almost gone through here. There are no fun value events until we kind of get to the other side of the ruins, by the way, which is this area here where Toriel is teaching us basically how to play the game. Okie dokie. Let's just uh, skip through all that dialogue so we can get through as fast as possible. Hello, this is Toriel. Uh, yep, I'll do that. Don't worry, Toriel. I will do exactly what you say. Don't you worry. Okay, we're going to take a piece of candy. We're also going to take another piece of candy. And we're going to knock the bowl over. Great. Nice. Also, I like your new profile picture. Thank you. It's a lot more HD than the last one, isn't it? 
Okay, good. HP fully restored. I think I actually just exited out of it. Perfect. We have finally saved our pooper. Our pooper now exists. It's canon. Our pooper is a canon. Or is canon. I don't know. Hard to tell sometimes. Rocket hop close. God, these controls are awful right at the start of the game. Uh, let's go ahead and compliment him. It didn't understand. Blushes. Oh. oh, that's right. I forgot about the whole bullet hell aspect of this game for a second. Let's go ahead and spear him. Awesome. Let's go through and we're going to fall through the floor, which is absolutely fine because we're just going to ignore everything that we just did. And we're going to go in here. Good thing our ankles are made of springs, huh? We've got hydraulics. Uh, she's going to ask us what kind of pie we like. I'm probably going to go with cinnamon. I'm, I'm pretty fond of cinnamon myself. Okay, great. Now, this is probably going to be a stream that's really going to piss a lot of people off. And the reason I think that's the case is because I have seen a lot of the fun value events on the on the wiki on the wiki for this game and i'm not necessarily convinced by any of them as well as not being convinced that they're even canon in the game because quite frankly i think they're cut content no that was my last skittle oh i'm really sorry red rock so you can just pick that up off of the floor if you if you want to bolster your immune system though all right let's go around here we'll take this entire path and we're done nice now we want to push this rock on there, and we want to do the last one last, so that we can kind of like speak to the rock as well. A pair of frogs up towards you. That's lovely. I don't particularly care though. Let's go ahead and compliment this one. Blushes deeply. Oh my. I think we've just oo-wooed the uh, the froggos. All right. The battlefield is filled with the smell of mustard seed. That is actually against the Geneva Convention. Let's go ahead and flatter the other one as well, because I know that we can dodge all of these little blips. Oh, we got backed into a corner, but we still dodge them anyway. Let's go ahead and spear them both. Dunion rings. Great. We got four buckery boosts for that. There was literally nothing. Okay. Whoa there, partner. Okay, so this is the rock. Yep, great. And get on the platform. Very good. And also, I'm going to need you to stay on that platform too, my dude. Yes. Excellent. So, uh, the reason that I think that this is cut content, I'm pretty happy just to go through exactly why I think that all of the fun value events are cut content, is because they weren't in the full release of the game. They were patched in afterwards. And uh, somebody told me that they weren't in the game simply because there was only a issue with, a, with there being a typo. But I don't believe it was a typo. Essentially what had happened is the fun value in the code was capitalized. Okay, great. And since it was capitalized, we probably want to act against this guy, right? We probably want to go ahead and go into act Napster Bluke and we'll cheer him up. Give Napster Bluke a patient smile. Ha, huh, he loved that. Okay, so why they weren't available in the base game when it fully released was because uh, people said that there was a typo on the fun value itself. Oh, this one's tricky to dodge. And when the fun value itself was pushed, it wasn't actually accessible. It was it was kind of lower, uh, uppercase. And a lot of people were just saying it was a typo. The reason I don't think it was a typo is because small companies can get away with doing this. Small companies can just get away with um, kind of capitalizing any kind of... Oh, what are they called? A variable. If you capitalize a variable, then the variable ends up becoming a class variable in most programming languages. If you're on a bigger studio than one or two people, which Toby Fox was not when he was developing this game, then you can get away with using uh, commenting systems to kind of comment out that line of code so it just never calls to that script in the first place. But when you capitalize it, you basically uh, kind of like say, don't use this script unless there is something that is trying to take from that there. It, it, it's hard to explain essentially, but a class variable is essentially a bucket, a bucket of schematics. And whenever you want to kind of like stick something into the game without having to program it over and over again with other things, you'd want a class variable to call on so that the template of the class variable can be applied to that value. It's very, very handy. Now, in a small studio, you can get away with uh, just capitalizing your code into a, a class variable, and it doesn't really call on anything simply because you know that there is no class variable to call on. But if you're in a bigger company, you can't really get away with that. 
when you are in a bigger company, sometimes somebody else in a different department may have actually made that class variable into a functioning script. And when you call on a class variable that you capitalize out of the game altogether, then you unfortunately call on that script, which can, uh, best case scenario, crash the game, and worst case scenario, uh, really, really nasty kind of bugs, corrupt saves, that kind of stuff, right? Even nested loops. You can even get nested loops in there. What is with this guy? He just, he just won't cheer up. He wants to show me something. Okay, that's nice. All right, he's crying upwards into a top hat. That's very, very dapper. Excellent. So, since I saw that the value was capitalized on the full release of the game, that's why I think it was cut content. It's a very, very common strategy to be using, and uh, yeah, bigger studios wouldn't use it. Bigger studios usually adhere to a single uh, type of code, but new developers and small studios, they can definitely use class variables to comment out codes. And the reason they didn't delete it in the first place is because it was probably a really, really handy line of code just to keep in the game so you can use it as a template for something else. Did you see the Be Right Back edit I made on the fan art channel? I did read Rux, it was pretty good. Is it unhealthy that I spent over six hours listening to an artist I really like? No, I do that pretty frequently as well. Hi there, Jensen, not gonna stay long, yet I'm here to give you my daily cameo, see ya. By the way, have a nice day, bye bye. Okay, Spamton, you have a great day as well. Okay, so we still can't spear this guy. I think we gotta flirt with him, no, cheer. Yeah, he really likes that. I've actually forgot how to fight this guy for a second there. I also forgot the controls of the base game. Can we change them yet? No. No, we cannot. Okay, that's fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and, wait, can we buy anything from here? Because that'll skip the Little Miss Muffet fight. Yes, okay, good. We literally just gave them seven eighths of our total revenue from this game so far. I don't know what we got out of it though. I think we were just like uh, donating to the pause. Tell me when the suit is ready. No, no, it's purple guy. Purple guy is making you the suit. Hello? Okay, good. We're getting a phone call, which is interrupting the flow of gameplay. Now, since I think that the fun value events were cut content, we don't want to be in here whatsoever. We want to be in the second one. And also down here, we want to get some defense, I think, as well. I think there's armor in this one. Yep, perfect right here. Faded ribbon, perfect. Now, I believe that that belonged to Chara at some point. I believe that that faded ribbon, ac ribbon actually did belong to Kara, since this is kind of where Kara lived for a, for a long period of time. Uh, let's go ahead and don't pick on him. Finally, so okay, so that was actually the right choice. Excellent. And now we can spare him. Good. That fight is over. Now we need to hit this lever in here. And we're gonna go hit that Right there, good, we've opened up the future. So once we get out of the ruins, we'll actually start seeing the uh, delicious, delicious fun value events. The far door is not an exit, I don't care. Yeah, but which is the right switch? None of them, good, okay, gotcha. So this one's gonna tell us which one the right switch is. If you can read this, press the blue switch, which is up right at the start of the room. My gosh, crawled up close. Let's go ahead and talk to this bug right here. He doesn't care, apparently. Yep, a lot of things to dodge. Or is there? No, there was not. Okay, let's go ahead and mercy that one out of the way. And this guy is just gonna start dancing. I don't particularly care. Yellow did not expend this tonight. Well, I have been uh, saying that we're gonna do the fun value events for maybe like three straight days in all of the streams. Excellent, we can actually mercy him now. Let's go ahead and do that. Done. Next time we find a save point as well, I'm gonna change the controls on the main menu. The switch, press it. Yes, we definitely wanna do that. So yeah, I'm apprehensive about the fun value events being canon. I'm apprehensive about the fun value events actually giving us any lore that we can use, but I am gonna uh, kind of play through just in case there, any, there is anything that the wiki may have completely misinterpreted. It's not fight. Let's go ahead and do the Vegetoid because he is probably the biggest threat. This other guy, we only have to live through one, whoops, one single attack phase. And then he just starts dancing. What about this Vegetoid? Is he good now? No, he is not. Let's go ahead and talk to him about dinner. You pat your stomach. He offers a healthy meal. Great. Oh, this guy didn't actually do that thing that I was just talking about. Oh, damn it. I wanted to take that vegetable as well. Okay, let's go ahead and pat our, our belly again. Yes. Nice. He's going to offer us a healthy meal. Hopefully we can eat one of these green... Th oh, piss. Yoink. Got it. Oh, it only restores two. That sucks. That actually sucks. 
Okay, there's one we can spare. Let's get the Vegetoid out of the way. And this guy's just going to keep dancing. He's not a threat whatsoever anymore. My girlfriend and her husband are getting married. <laughs> Green, I did expect this this morning. How about that? Okay, let's go ahead and spear this, this little bug right here. Done. I don't know what his deal is. I think he just wanted to hang out and see what we were all about. Okay, good. We're going to use that switch and we're going to go through. The next one I think is going to be the green one, which is center pillar right here. It's a switch. Yes, we're going to press it. Absolutely, we're going to press it. Done. And that should be all of the kind of like areas through here taken care of. Pair of veg toys came out of the ground. I'm actually going to use a monster candy right here because I don't know if we will take too many hits. These guys are kind of annoying, actually. Oh, no, they're not. They're just playing a memory game with us. All right, let's go ahead and act. We'll devour one of them. You tried to eat Vegetoid, but it wasn't weakened enough. Okay. Pretty sure we can kind of like use that to our- Oh, damn it, we took that hit. I, we can use that to our advantage, can't we? We can like kill them passively, I suppose. Let's just pat our stomachs. This is going to be a long fight, I think. Okay, okay. Oh, yes. Ah, oh, damn it. We lost six. Okay, let's go ahead and that one I think is pacified. Let's go ahead and pat our stomach to this other one. Vegetoid offers a healthy meal. Excellent. So this guy is probably going to give us a bunch of nice little goodies. Shoving our gullet. Nice. Vegetoid cackles softly. And they are done. Perfect. Okay, I lied. It was over 10 hours and I listened to him overnight instead of sleeping. That's okay. Uh, my Yinset. Yinset listens to the same song over and over again for hours. Uh, we want to go this way and get the toy knife, I think. Just in case we need to do so. I don't think we'll need the extra attack, but we'll get it anyway. Because we may need it. Okay, Pooper is coming on through here. We'll go up, up, up. And this should be Toriel, right? We should be coming up on Toriel's place. Yes, right here. Perfect. I'm right here, Toriel. Excellent. Let's get rid of all of that exposition. We didn't even hear past the first bar of that song, by the way. Okay, let's go ahead and save. Now I am going to return. We want to go back to the main menu because I want to change the controls. How the hell does one change the controls? Nope, not like that. Uh, say hello about yourself. Flirt, puzzle help. That's not helpful. Okay, I think we actually do have to Alt F4 and then go back to the main menu, which I'm absolutely happy to do. Let's do that. We're going to be doing this a bunch of times, by the way, to get all the fun value events. So I'll go back up to Steam. I will bring Undertale back up. Excellent. Here we go. Bring this up to full screen. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and go into the settings, finally. Now, we want to do the joystick config, don't we? We want to do confirm as X, which it is. Cancel should be circle and menu should be triangle. And that's done. I'm actually going to lower this as well. I'm going to lower the uh, sensitivity. Oh, okay. Maybe that's sandbagging us. Okay, uh, we probably want to change this to analog only direction as well. And... Okay, good. Control test! Oh yeah, that's so much better actually. Oh hell yes, I love that. Yes, I am tone deaf. All right, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. Let's get out of here, out of here, and we're going to continue the game. Okay. Do you smell that? Yes, it is uh, fun values. I smell fun values. Yeah, thank you, Toriel. Uh, we're going to skip through here as fast as we possibly can. We've seen pretty much all of the lore that we can get aside from post sands. Post sands combat is a little bit fiddly. I'm really struggling with them, actually. I'm doing the bad time simulator in my spare time, like... 20 minutes every day or two. He is so hard. The platforming is, is not as hard as I thought it would be. But honestly, the kind of like the moving around and then not moving for the blue stuff, you got to stop moving for that. That is really tricky for me to get the hang of. I like to lip sync to her songs while peeking my head out of the window in the breeze and cry. Who are you listening to? Miley Cyrus? You'd rather stay up and chat with me then? Uh, I want you to know how glad I am to... Okay, good skip through all of this please all right we actually have to kind of pay attention 
Well, maybe we just like skip all the way through. Okay. How do you exit the ruins? Why that's not the default option is beyond me. And she's gone. All right, we're gonna follow her down, down into the basement of this building. And let's go. Hello, Toriel. Yes, I wish to know everything. Tell me all of the secrets while I skip through it. It's literally like, hey there, child. Nah, next. We need to go next. The monsters and next. <laughs> okay, we'll pop on through here. And let's go on up. Let's actually go ahead and use the faded ribbon because we didn't do that. Uh, we're also going to have to go back to the menu because I'm realizing now that I can only use the analog sticks to kind of like move around. We also want to be able to use the arrow keys. Did you see the Five Nights at Freddy's Secret of the Mimic trailer that came out today? No! Ooh! Yo, Jensen, saw you commented on my post yesterday? Yeah, it looked like uh, I, 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 like, gave you money in exchange for the endorsement that you stuck on your on your channel. It was quite funny, actually. All right, we're going to go ahead and let's act on Toriel. Let's give her a talk. Couldn't think of any conversation topics. Well, that sucks, doesn't it? Uh, let's not get hit by any of these. Wow, I have actually just gotten really, really good at bullet hells, I think. Yeah, we definitely have to go back to the menu and change what we're doing here. Uh, we'll keep talking. I'm trying to think. Ah! Okay, we actually got hit by that, unfortunately. Let's do it again. Ironically, talking does not seem to be the way out of this situation. And I'm going to slip all these. Very nice. Awesome. Uh, how about Mercy? All right, Mercy it is. Ah! Ah! Damn it, we got hit by one of those. Okay, good. Toriel looks through you. No, she does not. Ah! Oh! I think we got hit by that last one, unfortunately. Okay, let's go ahead and try and slip all of these. It's kind of like a, a strange little wave of things that come down at us, right? Whoa. And now we're going to slip sideways through all of these. That last one doesn't do anything, so we're not even going to bother trying to slip it. Toriel is going to have to kill us with the way she's going now. Whoa. Oh, damn it, we took one, which is absolutely fine. We still have the health to do so. Attack will run away. Oh, that's right. We can run, can't we? Maybe we should just do that. Whoa. Okay. Uh, no, we can't do that because every time... No, we flee. We flee. We escaped. That is right. Go upstairs. Already? What will it take for you to learn? Doriel blocks the way. Oh, we probably should have used an item in between that fight, right? Whew. Yeah, Secret of the Mimic comes out sometime next year. I have, I have not seen anything like that. What is Secret of the Mimic? It sounds good. Because the Mimic is kind of like a lore point in FNAF that never really got explained, isn't it? I'll go ahead and drop that sound even further. There we go. Okay. Let's try and just mercy Toriel, I think. Might be the best idea. Actually, let's flee. That's right, go upstairs. Okay, that's the same repeating dialogue. I'm going to go ahead and eat one of these monster candies. And now let's go ahead and fight her. Red Rex, what is the mimic secret, I wonder? Probably that it's a mimic. Oh, the mimic! Oh, yes! Uh, that actually ties into the um, Five Nights at Freddy's theory that I have that I'm saving for the playthroughs. Watch the trailer when you get a break. It's like a few seconds long. Okay, I will do that. Let's go ahead and mercy, Toriel. Okay, so that just restarts the entire fight. We took one of those hits. That's unfortunate. All right, and going to do it again. We still have minimal health, unfortunately, so we can't really take too many hits. Let's go ahead and do more mercy. Okay, I've got the technique for this. you got to, like, slip through at the gaps. It doesn't work so well, but it does work, I think. Okay. I don't want to be hit by any of these. Good. Done. And now we're going to mercy her again. What am I doing? What do you mean, what am I doing? I'm not going to hurt you, goat mother. Oops. I actively took one of those. Uh, let's go ahead and use another monster candy. Good. And this one's pretty easy to dodge. We just got to, like, stand the safe spots. Okay. Magical attack. I'm fine with that. Attack will run away. No. I will do no such thing, Toriel. So we could kill her, but again, like, a lot of the fun value events are invalidated entirely by murdering people. Uh, there we go. Good. Up. Oh, we took one. That's fine. Gonna go ahead and spear her. Uh, I don't want to fight her. That's the thing. That is a cancerous moveset, by the way. Okay, good. Stop it! No, you stop it, Toriel. You stop it. We can probably only take, like, a couple more before we have to start actually using more health items. I think we can get one more attack before we can probably get away with using a health item. 
Mm, she's probably going to stop attacking us very, very soon. Let's go ahead and use a monster candy. Nice. 10 HP. Perfect. Uh, whoa, I can't believe I slipped that. Good. Slip that one too. And slip that. Great. Let's go ahead and mercy her. Go away. All right. Denial. Wait a minute. Can we just like hide at the side of the screen? With that attack? Well, we can't now. Whoa. Whoa. There we go. Okay, perfect. We only took one hit there. We need to practice. Okay, good. Ooh, Jensen, what's up? Let's go. Yeah, we're going to be finding the fun values today. I know you want to go home, but, but please go upstairs now. I promise I will take good care of you here. I know we do not have much, but, uh, Spear, we're going to have a good life here. I don't want that life. Why are you making this so difficult? I've got Easter eggs to go and find, Toriel. Don't make me feel bad for this. Haha. <laughs> Pathetic, is it not? Yes, it is pretty pathetic, honestly. Uh, uh, I'm literally just mashing the skip dialogue button and it's not doing anything. Hilarious. Are you using the hard mode route after Sands? Maybe. I tried the Frisk hard mode route. There is no additional lore. There is nothing for us to find in the Frisk route. It's just hard for the sake of hardships. We tried it uh, already, and it's uh, actually a real massive pain in the ass. <laughs> like, we could learn all of the movesets of kind of like the harder enemies in the game, but I can see kind of like how the difficulty just snowballs. It's just going to add more hard creatures to every fight. It's not going to be like, you know, these are the creatures. These are the, the battles you're going to fight. It's just going to add more of those annoying enemies on top of the fights that we've already kind of started doing. That's all we're going to find. Ooh. Nothing but cooler? Yeah. There is, in fact, a different ending, but only the ending is different. Okay, maybe we'll go back to it, or maybe I'll just go onto the wiki and see what that ending is, then I'll see whether or not it's actually worth seeing. Because as far as I can tell, it's not worth seeing. Chaos, chaos! Hey there, Jevil. Okay, I'm gonna uh, skip through all of this. We basically want to get to the snowy area as soon as possible, right? Yeah, I don't know if Toriel knows who this is. She probably does. She probably doesn't. It's just common knowledge, but... Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Yo, Jevil. Bye-bye. It's a fun ending. Is it actually a fun ending, or are you just baiting me into playing a hard mode of a game? Hey, did you see the Delta Room news? Chapter 4 is almost done. Yes, we looked at the newsletter yesterday. Uh, that's very exciting. I can't wait to play Chapter 3, which is apparently done. I don't know why they're just kind of like... I, I don't know why they're dragging it out to release both of the chapters at once. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. If you were going to, you know, release periodic episodics, it would make way more sense to not do that. We need the stick. Okay, we already have a stick. Uh, we should actually go ahead and go into our items. We want to use this toy knife so that we have access to the stick so we can skip all the dog fights as well. No, it is a really fun ending. How fun? How fun is it? Like on a scale of uh, five to six, how fun actually is it? Let's play a numbers game. Is it when your HP drops to zero, you lose? Yes, yes. Okay, Jivel is, um, Jivel is sandbagging us. I think he's actually here trying to make the fun values harder to get. Yeah, let's play. Okay. Here we go. It's Sans. Uh, if only he knew that we were halfway through trying to kill him. Also, I, I feel like Sans was inspired by Anubis. If Anubis farts lots. Because the fight with him is very unusual, isn't it? It's like he kind of like weighs your heart against something. And the only other kind of like form of mythology that I can figure where that is the case is Egyptian mythology with Anubis. 5.7 out of 6? Hmm. I don't think you can use decimals and fractions. So I'm, I'm very suspicious about how fun this ending actually is, to be quite honest. Chapter 3 probably has no cliffhanger because Chapter 3 starts in Dark World and Chapter 4 starts when it's morning already. Okay, that's kind of cool. Alright, sure. Um, I will be playing it as soon as it comes out as well, so long as it's not on the same day as Silent Hill 2 because I'm going to be clapping that one as, as much as I possibly can when it comes out. Alright, bye Sans! Actually, hey, uh, no, we're not interested in dating your brother. We'll kill him if we can. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save right here and I'm going to see whether... It, there's no way of going back to the main menu from here, is there? We gotta like Alt F4 and then we gotta restart the game. Cause I have blocked out all access to my D-pad, which we are gonna need for some future fights. Let's full screen this bad boy. Good. 
Get the cursor out of the way. Uh, settings. Yes, I want to go into joystick config and we don't want analog only. We want normal. We want normal so that we can use everything else. Perfect. Now we want to exit the screen right here and continue on with the game. As Pooper. We are playing as Pooper. Who's up here? The snowman? No, this is the fishing spot. So now that we're all soaked here, I am going to start editing fun value config files. So I'm going to save again for the sake of prosperity. We're going to alt F4 and I'm going to do a little bit of black magic behind the scenes so we can see all these fun values. We are going to go into percentage, local app data percentage, so that we don't get automatically put into the roaming file in app data, which is uh, virtually useless to us. We're going to go into Undertale. This is our save file right here. Now, what I was doing is I was going into the undertale.initialization file and the fun value we rolled was 45, okay? That's important. What we also have to do is go into file zero, which is not really editable with a text file unless you specifically say, please edit with this. And we're gonna take a look at this one as well. And the reason for that is we want to change the fun value at line 36 down here, which is also 45 as is in the fun value right here. So I'm gonna open up the wiki, the fun value wiki, and without spoiling anything, I'm going to go in uh, period by period and we're going to see if we can't get all of the uh, fun value events. So it looks like the first one is called the, the wrong number song, right? So it has to be between two and 39. So let's change this to, I don't know, 30 and we'll save, and then we'll also change this one here to 30, and then we'll save that as well. And now we have, oops, probably didn't wanna drop that one down. Let's go ahead and reopen that actually. We'll probably want this one up a bunch. Done. So, fun value should be enabled to get us the wrong number song at the river person place in Snowden Town, okay? Okay? All right, let's go ahead and fire the game back up. Yes siree! Ooh, yes! Lol, how the heck do I rate something from five to six? Uh, you, you gotta pick a number. It's either, it's either five of six, or it's six of six. The chat has been going crazy since Jevil joined. It always does. Jevil is an absolute lunatic. Type one if you're in Discord. Uh, one. There you go. Done. It didn't do anything, but I did it regardless. So, we're gonna continue now. We should have access to a fun value event. Last time, it did not work. I'm gonna save anyway. And then we want to check our fun value uh, files right here. Make sure they didn't change. No, this is at 30. That's at 30. Both of those lines, perfect. So this works. This actually works. Let's go and try and find the river person place. I don't think it's this fishing pole right here. I think that is where we get that catfish joke, right? We're probably also going to have to change it just in case we don't reach Snowden Town before we get the papyrus Easter egg as well. Fun value? Yeah, we're going through and we're looking at the Easter eggs, which I do not believe to be canon in the game right now. I believe that they were cut content. Uh, a lot of people disagree with me because they don't have formal training in information technology and programming and stuff like that. But I know all of the tips and tricks for small gaming studios and everybody insists that on the full release of Undertale, the fun value events were not accessible organically because of a typo, but what they actually did was a fairly well-known industry standard um, method of disabling it without deleting the code or doing anything uh, kind of code specific. Language specific, I should say. Insanity is the best? It can be, unless you're driven by it. Snowdrake flutters forth. Uh, we need to riz this guy, right? Uh, we need to heckle him to get him to tell us a joke. You tell the Snowdrake that no one will ever love them the way that they are. They struggled to make a retort and slink away utterly crushed. Nice! Hey, that's perfect. Okay, we didn't even have to throw a stick at him, which I would have done. Okay, so this fight should be pretty easy. We're just gonna use the stick and that should uh, instantly gratify us in this fight right here. The best place to hide is insanity. That is a pretty good place to hide, but there are better places. We're using the stick. You threw the stick and the dog ran to get it. You played fetch for a while. Ah, oh, a fun stick appears. I'm not moving. Great. Doggo loves fetch. Can we sp <coughs> can we spear him? Yes, we can. Perfect. Done. That was a fast fight, wasn't it? Wow, we we need to risk this guy. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna risk everybody that we can. We don't want to kill many people because when we get to the hotlands, there are a couple of Easter eggs that are very very dependent on whether or not you've killed too many people. 
Okay, so this one's just going to be a fairly easy introduction, right? What is up here? This is the snowman. We're going to take bits of him and we're probably going to eat him. Yes, I'll take a piece of him. Good luck. Thank you. Can we take more? No. All right, so genocide route, we can basically dismantle that snowman and then eat him for health. We're going to take that snowman piece. Okay. Sorry, I need you to leave. Bye. Bye-bye, Red Rocks. My heart goes out to all of you sinners. Ah, devil, you little devil, you. Okay. So, uh, we should be coming up on one of the Easter eggs. I am remembering that there is an Easter egg before the Papyrus fight, which we may have to see before Snowden Town. So we're probably going to have to edit the uh, config file again. All right. We have the orb. We have the orb. We're going to go all the way through. We're going to humor this gigantic revolting chef. And we're done. Good. Uh, we'll pop through. This guy's selling ice cream in the snow. Probably not a great idea to be quite fair. Hi, Sans. What's, what's cracking, my dude? Let's go down here. I don't know this area very well. If I can be quite honest, I don't think that this area has a lot going for it. And I feel like we're about to come across a Easter egg. Through here should be a fight, if I remember right. No, that is the dog's boots. They are foreshadowing for a boss fight or a marriage. Kind of hard to tell. We need to go all the way back. We need to go all the way back and we need to go and find a save spot because there is actually an Easter egg that we're about to come across. Uh, let's... Just use this ice to skip through walking all this way so we can save the save the stamina of our thumb. Ice cap struts into view. Let's uh, insult its hat. Uh, ignored. You managed to tear your eyes away from Ice Cap's hat. It looks annoyed. Ah well. Watch me give a hoot! I love this oscillating frequency that he's got right there. Okay, let's go ahead and ignore him again. It seems defeated. Excellent. Done. We'll continue with this oscillating frequency right here. And now I think that we can just kind of riz him away, right? Tell him to bugger off. Good. The, I think there is going to be a save point very close to here, but we do need to change the the config file a little bit. Just before we get into the... What is it? It's the, it's the crossword puzzle, isn't it? What's your proof that Snow Drake is a teenager? I don't think that that is the case. What's it? Lesser Dog. Hi, Lesser Dog. Would you like the stick? You threw the stick. He loved it. Okay, he's going to run at us, and I'm going to slip him. Oh, he still got us anyway. We were moving at maximum speed, so there was no way of getting around that. What a damn fart that was. I love how he says Riz. This is peak brain rot term usage. I, I like Riz. Riz comes from like the 1980s when people used to say that charisma was, was a skill that you could use in real life because of Dungeons and Dragons. So I love all these breathers and drug addicts walking around saying Riz as if they came up with it, as if it didn't come from a, a, a board game from 40 years ago. Okay, uh, we're going to ignore this guy's hat again. I think he's literally stalking us. Uh, I don't know what is going on here. Oh, that's unusual. Haven't seen that attack for a long time. Let's go ahead and ignore this guy again. He literally just threw spikes at us. All right, he's defeated. Uh, we got the oscillating frequency to go through. This is pretty simple. Uh, let's spear him. Done. Now, we did just save, didn't we? I'm just going to double check and make sure that we did just save. Good. Now what we want to do is Alt F4 and we want to go and find the fun value for, what is it called? The nightmare mode, 56. Okay, so let's change this here to 56 and we'll save. And this right here also has to be changed. Whoops, almost just edited the whole file. 56, right there. And we save that and we should have access to nightmare mode now, theoretically. Okay. This is gonna be the first Easter egg that we find, by the way. I guess Riz is not much of a brain rotted world. It's used in a lot of content farm stuff though. Oh, that sucks. I hate I hate that. I do hate that. It, it does kind of suck. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that that's your experience with it. So, we're about to confirm whether or not my little technique here is going to actually give us the fun value events every single time. But it's going to take a wee while to actually get to the enemies. We could probably kill this guy. This guy's a long fight. We, we'd be better off in a world without him, to be quite honest. All right, he's secretly checking if you're looking. Let's ignore him again. Good, he's defeated. Oh, poor baby. Poor bit. I didn't touch the lines. Why'd I take damage? All right, fine. I'll take that damage regardless. Watch me here. I still use and I love the term. It has a bit of a weird reputation. I don't like Ohio Riz. That's brain rot. That is literally brain rot at its core. 
Because people have to know what Ohio is like. And all you're doing is really propagating a, um, an offensive stereotype for an entire um, a, a demographic of people. Like a large demographic too. Ohio is a, it's a big place. Why didn't they call it Florida Riz? That makes way more sense. All right, here we are. Yeah, man. Good. So this is the puzzle. Ohio Riz's brain rot? Absolutely, it's brain rot. It's gross brain rot too. Nightmare mode! Hey! First puzzle! First easter egg right here. So, Monster Kids word search. Let's actually do this. It says Nightmare up here in the corner. Uh, this is, I think this is just the like ICE normal thing, but he's melting as opposed to the other one. I don't know what's up with the face on the snowman. I don't know if that was there. So, fall, winter, spring, summer. Funnily enough, these are actually in order of when... Of, of the seasons, right? And it's also kind of funny at the same time because fall is how we fell down here and then we immediately go into winter in the um, uh, this frosty area that I don't know too well. Don't know what spring and summer is supposed to represent. Summer, I think, is supposed to be the hotland. So, we've also got monster, skeletons, mermaid, robot. That's got to be kind of like the bosses, right? That's got to be the bosses of the game. Cigars, we don't see any interpretation of smoking in the game at all, ever. Sig, also don't see any cigarettes in the game. Uh, Gears Fissel Febreja, we also don't see in the game. Hot, we definitely do see in the game at the Hotlands. So, let's try and actually do this. Fall, I already found Fall. F-A-L-L, -L, right there. It's, it's, it's up in that corner. Hope you guys can see my cursor. Uh, winter, let's find Winter then. Winter, found it. Right here, easy. Spring, uh, S-P-R-I-N-G, it's backwards. It goes upwards from the uh, corner down here and up into there. Summer! S, 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 S. Uh, it's gotta be kind of like the top ones, right? And it's probably gonna be backwards, let's face it. Oh, I've already found gear shift for It's the whole first line. That's silly. Ah, Florida's wackier. Exactly, Florida Riz, right? How about New York City? New York City Riz? They're kind of, they've, they've got some charisma though. Uh, let's drag this conversation away from Brain Rod. Guys, don't fight. Remember Happy? I saw Happy send a message in another person's Undertale screen. Yes, I've permanently banned him from my channel for being an absolute piece of garbage. I don't use Brain Rot, I'm Gen Z. Yeah, Gen Z uses Brain Rot. Believe me, Gen Z uses Brain Rot. A lot of it. Can we not argue? Yeah, no arguing in chat. Everyone who argues gets a timeout. Stop stereotyping younger generations, please. It's everybody, everybody who uses it. It's, it's not just like younger generations. It's everybody who uses it is using brain rot. It's it's the brain rot itself that's the problem, not the people who use it, because the people can always uh, grow up and and be redeemed, necessarily. Uh, okay, so I found hot. It's right here. We we're after summer, weren't we? Summer, 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 summer. S-U-M-M-E-R, ah, found it. Going diagonally from this S all the way up to the corner right here. Uh, monster. Let's try monster. It's right here. It's actually in order as well. Good. Skeletons. That is... I don't know where I would find skeletons. It's probably going to be a backwards one though, right? Because it's it's too big to be downwards, which means it can't be crossways downwards either. So it's got to be on a line and it's most likely going to be backwards. I found monster right here again. Skeletons. Yes, yes, yes. There's cigars. Skeletons. Skeletons. Yeah, right here. S-K-E-L-E-T-O-N-S. Snotty Lex is what that is backwards. Mermaid. We need to find Mermaid. I think we actually already found Mermaid, didn't we? It's probably also going to be a single line one because it's too big to go up or down. Mermaid. Mermaid, Mermaid, Mermaid. Where are we going to find a Mermaid here? Mermaid. Mermaid. Right here. It's backwards. Right here. Right after this P and M. Good. Robot. Where is Robot? If only we could get like a, a Sharpie or something like that. Robot goes straight down here. We already found Cigars, which means we also found Sig. Yishlis Fibur is the top line. And we also found Hot, so we beat the whole thing. We beat Nightmare Mode. Nice. Yes, everybody uses it. So don't use it that much. You've reached the cap for capping. What up, hey there, Linda. Hope you're doing, hope you're doing good today. Backwards, it's backwards around the middle above Monster. Won't argue, let himself. Yeah, yeah, I'm good at puzzles. I'm good at puzzles anyway. Okay, so we just beat our first fun value event. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to see where the next one is, just in case we kind of need to change the fun value in advance. So I'll bring it up over here. Fun value. So these are the ones that we want to see, right? Uh, we, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm going to keep the wiki over here for anybody who doesn't already know what the fun values are going to be. 
Uh, we need to go to Papyrus's Cardboard Sentry Station, and we need to set the fun value to a different number. So we are going to make sure that we just saved right here. Good. I can't look at chat, by the way, while I am changing these fun value events right here. So fun is 56. Gonna have to remember that. So we'll delete 56, and we want... Uh, let's try 42. 42 seems like a good one. We'll save that. We'll replace this here, 56, with 42. Done. Let's fire the game back up, and we're going to go see another fun value event. And I'm also going to bring chat back up. Good. Awesome. Nice. Thanks, you too, man. Because of the gear select, the thing is one letter off. I don't believe so. I, I, like to, I like to think that Toby Fox would not sandbag us with a fun value event. I'm bad at puzzles sometimes. That's fine. Anyone can be bad at puzzles. Because you can always practice pu puzzles. You always get good at them as well. <laughs> Guys, please, for the love of God, just don't argue. We all have a common interest of me. Right here. Okay, good. What's gone, kid? We're gonna see it, because we're not killing many people. Oh, we've got Jerry for some reason. That's weird. Uh, let's go ahead and ignore the ice cap, because I'm pretty sure Jerry's entire purpose is to kind of, like, buff damage, and we don't actually want any of the damage buffed. He doesn't attack himself, which is pretty nice, but... No, he doesn't buff damage. He expends out the... No, we don't want to do that to Jerry. He expends... He extends the amount of time that the attack cycle is going for. So I'm going to ignore the guy with the hat again. Good. And we're also going to abandon Jerry, I think. That's going to be how we take care of him. Whoops, took a little bit of damage there, but that's absolutely fine. And some more damage. Okay, we're going to mercy that guy. And we're going to ditch Jerry, who doesn't really do anything whatsoever. Ditch. Nice. You and the other monsters ditch Jerry when it looks away. You won. Oh, that feels good, actually, to ditch Jerry. Uh, there's a switch hidden in the snow. We already know it's there. Good. Wonderful. Nice. Hello there, Tyler Runke. Hope you're doing very, very well as well. So, um, if anybody doesn't know, the whole point of these Fun Valley events is because some people are insisting that the game is not... Uh, the Fun Valley events are not cut content, which I believe that they are. I believe they're cut content because I have seen how they were hidden in the full release of the game, and they were patched in later to be accessible organically. Some people are telling me it's a typo. I think that's absolute cap. I don't think that um, anybody could reasonably program uh, anything for like an hour of their time and then think, oh, you know what, that was definitely a, a viable typo. Because when you're plugging in variables left, right, and center, uh, you're not going to make a typo on a three-letter variable. It makes no sense. Uh, let's go ahead and throw the stick. Stick. We throw the stick. Good. We played fish for a while. Good. So these guys are going to give us some little nuzzles, which is great. I love nuzzles from doggos. It's probably my favorite thing that doggos will ever give me. Uh, can we mercy them? Yes. But I love that stick trick. Excellent. Nice. So Sigma. Yeah, I'm Sigma. I'm, I'm all about Sigma lifestyles. It's just us seeing people say, wow, I hate brain rot, when like over 40% of people use brain rot terms daily. A lot of people use brain rot terms on the internet. People don't actually use them IRL. That's that's not a, a, a common thing. Oh, let's go ahead and hit those buttons right there. Uh, we need to find... Uh, yeah, we ate your spaghetti, sure. Okay, we, we're skipping on the dialogue, because we've already seen it. Uh, pardon, Pardonnez-moi, Pepperus. So we already know the answer of this puzzle as well. This one's a pretty simple one once you've done it a billion times already. Go away, Pepperus. I already, I already know that there's a puzzle coming. So, oh bugger, how do we do this again? We gotta go all the way around, which is why that uh, is left open. We gotta go all the way around here. And fortunately, we can just kind of like step on this and step back off and same with that one. Then we hit the button. Dungeon rings. Wow, you solved it. Great. All right, continuing onwards. Yeah, uh, people are also insisting that with the Fun Valley events, there is lore hidden in them. I have seen all the Fun Valley events on the wiki, so I also fully disagree that there is going to be lore in any of these. But we do want to see it for ourselves just to make sure so that there's like a, a public record that, yes, I did give the Fun Values a chance. And against all odds, I, it's still probably not going to affect the theory that I've already scripted. Jensen, are you doing pacifist or true pacifist? Uh, we're probably not even going to finish this route, to be quite honest. Okay, uh, let's face it, we are going to go through, we're going to find every single fun value event, and if there's still time left, uh, I'm going to go back to Hydra now, and we're going to play some of that. We're not going to finish the game. I have already done True Pacifist. That has already been finished on the channel. You can go and watch that if you need to do so. I have returned. Hello there, Nick. There's a switch on the tree. 
on the tree. That is not, surely not. That's pretty easy. I've been waiting all day for this video. Nice. Well, I'm glad you're present for it. Hey, there's that doggo that we speared. I think this is Pepper's station, isn't it? Aware of dog? Please pet dog. I don't think this is actually uh, Pepper's station. Who the hell is that? That dog considers itself an artist, but doesn't even know what to create. Probably doesn't even help that his brain is the size of a small piece of kibble. It's not very nice. It's not very nice at all. Okay, good. Uh, let's go ahead and save this. Pooper is going on woods now. All right, we've got another puzzle. This one's actually pretty damn easy. Got to be said. I'm going to start up here. We're going to go all the way around this away. And up here. And straight to this one. Down across here. Up there. And now we hit the, hit the button. Nice! I don't know who put that puzzle there. It, it, but if it was Papyrus, that was probably his best puzzle by a long shot. Okay. So through here, this is the doggo fight. So I think we're about to come up on the bridge, aren't we? Ah, did I miss Once Human? No, we haven't gone to Once Human yet. We will be uh, doing some Once Human. I think I'll be playing a little bit of that next week because we're pretty close to getting to the DLC of Hydrogenia. Uh, we probably have to just like flee from this guy, right? Because he's a long fight. Go ahead. What do you mean go ahead? Okay, whoops. I shouldn't have flicked through that one. The scent of fresh pine needles. We can't flee, unfortunately. Let's undecorate him. Okay, this is going to be three attack cycles then. Uh, okay, good. Didn't even have to move. Let's undecorate him again. And let's see which one of these is going to be the... Yep, awesome. Middle one. Perfect. Slightly less irritated. Let's go ahead and undecorate him once more. And he is done. I wonder why his mouth is all sideways. All right, good. Let's go ahead and spear him. We won. We got 20 buckery boos. I don't know what's around here. I don't think there's any fun value stuff up in this cave here whatsoever. But I'm going to just make sure in case. It's a door. So, I don't know if this actually is a fun value thing. Okay. I'm watching your run on Undertale then. Yeah, do that. There is a Delta Room reference in the fun value events that was added a few days before Delta Room was released. Awesome. I can't wait to see that. He asked Pepperus for help with the puzzle that he arranged. Uh, look like his face. He says that there's a switch on the tree. It works. Oh, that's pretty cool. Fun value? No, fun value. Now it's the greater dog fight. You already fought Doggo. Get it right. <laughs> What's your favorite soul? Mine is the blue. Mine is black. Mine is Kara's soul. Kara's blackened soul is my favorite because uh, I've got a theory uh, coming out soon based on it. I call him Supreme Dongo. Secret boss in here. It's not a fun value thing. Uh, is, how do we trigger it? How do we trigger a secret boss in here? Do we have to just like walk around in circles a bunch? Insane tray combo. Person with the bravery soul uses liquid determination syringe. Ew. Gross. That's heroin. You walk around for a while, you fight a secret boss. Okay, we'll try that because we haven't done that yet. And we are looking for Easter eggs. So this one's actually canon in the game and organic to find. It's just with the, with the fun value events, I'm always really skeptical of people, you know, using cut content as a foundation for a, a series of theories. And it seems like the entire fandom series of theories these days are hinging on Matt Pat's assumption that the Mystery Man icon is Gaster, which we are going to see in this playthrough. And I'm going to tell you why I don't think that it's Gaster, because it was never confirmed once, anywhere, ever, whatsoever. Uh, and also, the fun value events um, apparently claim that Gaster is alive, which they don't actually. And I've got a theory that um, really kind of debunks that as well. What if you turn off the mushrooms? That's heroin? Yeah, it is heroin. This takes a minute. I assume you've played Elden Ring? I have played Elden Ring. I loved it as well. I don't, I didn't play it like anybody else though. I played it like a stealth assassin. The only boss that I legitimately fought head to head was Melania. And uh, it took me a couple of hours to beat her because she's pretty tough and I was pretty under leveled given the fact that I was a stealth main. But I also had this build called the Big Blue Bonk which was reliant on the Karia, Karia, yeah, Karia Mana Great Sword, the, the gigantic two-handed sword. So I would do like basic attacks with that, but I'd also filter mainly into Strength and Int, so that the special, the Big Blue Bonk with the three tiers of damage, the longer you hold the uh, Big Blue Bonk down for, that's what I use to stealth most of the enemies that I would come across. It's pretty funny. Turning the mushrooms on and off doesn't do anything here. DLC run? Maybe. I haven't actually done Elden Ring on the channel. Uh, my best friend uh, that I'm living with right now, Carl, he's playing through the DLC right now and he's adoring it. Oh, here we go. Ooh, Glide swooped in. Yeah, we definitely haven't fought this guy. Okay, should we applaud? Let's applaud. You clap really sloppily. Glide sucks up your praise like a vacuum cleaner. Okay, I roll. I admit it. All right, we haven't seen his attack cycle. 
It's actually... Oh, my God. That is... What a penis of a boss. Oh, my days. Okay, I'm eating the spider donut. Good. Wow, check out my pecs. Uh, no. I... Whoa, oh, my God. You gotta be really fast for this one. Ah, uh, we took one, unfortunately. All right, let's go ahead and applaud him again. You clap like a gorilla. Light is becoming addicted to your praise. What else? Oh, my God, that one's big. Oh, poos! We're probably gonna die here. No, damn it. If we had more health, we probably would have stood a chance against that guy, but he's rough. That is rough. Hey, if it works, it works. Yeah, I know, right? I also put a lot into dexterity. Nobody hate me. I, I like to put a lot of points into dexterity so I can use archery viably in Elden Ring as well. I really like the bows in that game. Okay, so he's, oh, he's tough, actually. He's really tough. I wonder if we can do this, like, backwards. We probably could, actually. We probably, it, it doesn't matter, like, where we start, I don't think. We're probably always going to end up at the same place regardless. Okay, good. Done. I don't know anything about this guy when it comes to spearing, because I only fight him on genocide for the high amount of experience. We probably could do with fighting him. I didn't see any, like, save points around. How about we go back to him after we get to, to, to Snowden Town? That probably, that's probably the most sensible thing, right? All right, we've got to fight Doggo just over here, and then we're probably going to come across that bridge as well. <sighs> what do you mean, backwards? You just did it normally? Dex build? There are good bows in Elden Ring, like Radan. Mm, I don't use Radan as a bow. I'm pretty sure he's a uh, boss. I think that he actually does, like... I think he's sentient, and we can't use him as, as a bow. All right, we did that. Oh, he's bucked at us. I forgot that there was an attack cycle with this guy. All right, good. Greater Dog is waiting for your command. Really? Okay, we're spearing him immediately. Done. We threw the stick and we skipped. Yeah, Dex build is really, really good. There is some that scale with uh, Dex and Strength as well. I love those ones so much because of the Strength that scales with the uh, uh, Karai and Greatsword as well. I know it's not like a meta or anything like that, but it's really fun to use. A Greater Good Boy. Oh my gosh, that's a super good boy. It was a super good boy, but I... We, he's gone. He's gone somewhere else. Mods have lots of uses. You interact with all the snow puffs, you get 30 gold. And the deck where the dog is asleep and only wakes up if you move. Oh, that's good. That's good to know, actually. Free snow puff money. It's fine. We'll come across money. Oh, money's not really all of that... All that useful to us in this playthrough. Gotta be said. It's not that useful. Okie dokie. I wonder if there's any way you can actually activate this. Because there are kind of like environmental bullet hells, right? With Undyne and uh, the... The rocks that fall down the waterfall if you're not doing genocide because that dog is throwing ice into the ocean to slow down global warming or to keep this place frozen. Who knows? Hi, Sands. Hi, Sands. Okie. So, welcome to Snowden. I didn't see Papyrus' station, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and save. We'll go ahead and save. I'll take another look at the, at the fun value events and make sure that we've got the right one. Sands call. Cool. This occurs when the fun value is 40 to 45. So that is at Papyrus's Cardboard Sentry Station. I don't know where Papyrus's Cardboard Sentry Station is or if we passed it. If someone could let me know uh, where it is, that would be absolutely perfect. Oh, you know what, actually? I'll look up a map. Snowden Forest Map. There's got to be a map, right? Oh, yeah, there's plenty of maps, actually. Okay, so... Where are we looking? Where the hell is Papyrus' sentry station? Oh my god, this is an eyesore to look at. Look at this! Ugh! Yuck! Where's the rest of it? Oh, maybe I should actually, like, look at the original picture instead of just looking at the Google preview. Nope, I was blocked from it. Okay. Thank you, Internet! Um, what else is there? I don't really see Papyrus' cardboard sentry station on a map. Okay. So that one's not an important lore one whatsoever. It's just like a goof. Uh, I have a quick question. Uh, could you add high on life to the next game vote? I, If not, I understand. I do have high on life. I could probably play it. What else? I know a mod that makes it an environmental boss. What the? Oh, that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, the, uh, the bridge. Uh, that is really, really cool. Undyne made the falling rocks thing. Are you sure it's not like the, the dog who's literally throwing rocks into the river? Because we see after we pass that dog that the rocks are, are going into the waterfall area and then that same river that was north of us uh, when we go into the waterfall is, is like falling on us and all the rocks are falling from that, 
that river right there. So I would assume it's actually the doggo that's throwing the, the rocks into the river. All right, Santa's call isn't necessarily important. Uh, there's also Elphys's call, but I think we actually need to... Okay, we need to find Papyrus's cardboard sentry station. We've already got nightmare mode. Sound test room is... Upwards from the Box Road save point intersection in Snowden Forest. Let's do that one, why don't we? Let's go and find the box intersection at Snowden Forest. Box Road. So is this the first time we come across the box or do we have to go further ahead? I think this is the first time we go, we find the box, right? Oh, there's lots of people here. Okay, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit, see if I can't find the box on the road. Uh, again, chat, if I am going the wrong way, please let me know. I think the ice wolf is throwing ice to the core. Why would that make any sense? They're harvesting the core for its um, magmatic potential. Uh, Jerry came too. Flee. <laughs> we just ran away. That was so easy, that one. One of the calls and pacifists after you friend Undyne. Yeah, I think that's going to be the Elphus one, right? Okay, I'll get the I'll get the free money. It's a snowpuff, and this is a snowpuff. We've done this already in every playthrough that we've done, I think. Another snowpuff. Good one here. That is really a snow puff. Yes. What is in this? Behold, a snow puff. That is okay. So that is a uh, that that's an Elden Ring joke, by the way. No, Demon Souls. It would have been Demon Souls at the time, right? No, Dark Souls. No one played Demon Souls but me. Behold, a snow puff. Hey, eh? there's thirty gold inside of this. Okay, we didn't have to interact with all of them whatsoever. And this is a snow puff. Yeah, these are just kind of like these are Dark Souls notes left by other players. That's funny as hell. Uh, we may be going the wrong way for the box, right? But I am happy to kind of, like, backtrack ages. I think she says she hates making puzzles, so she just put a ton of rocks up there. Not sure, though. Could be misremembering. Uh, possibly. What the hell? Hey, is this the thing that the dog made? Seems like the base of a snow dog. Nice. We came back. We saw something new. Isn't that cool? Gotta go, Yinsen. Bye-bye. Okay, Teardrop, you have a great night or a great day, whatever time it is for you. Demon Souls is a cult classic. Yeah, but no one played it. Uh, 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 the FromSoft games, they took off after Dark Souls. Dark Souls took off. Demon Souls never took off. Dark Souls took off. And I know this because I had Demon Souls on PlayStation and there was nowhere to get information about it other than the physical game guide that uh, they sold for like 60 bucks. It's kind of like a sideline thing. Okay, we're going to flee from this. Screw Jerry. Demon's Souls was a good game. It was a really, really good game. It was probably one of my favorites. So this is the one I thought that we were coming to. It turns out that's not the one we're coming to whatsoever. So if we go further back, we're probably not actually going to find the other box intersection, are we? It's, does anybody actually know? Has anybody seen the fun values? Or am I just kind of like guessing? Am I extrapolating from incomplete data? By the way, we have access to most of the uh, fun value events right now. I'm just going to go back and I'm going to see if I can't uh, trigger them. So the one that we're going after now, hopefully, is one of the ones that has kind of like a percentage chance of actually spawning, but it is going to be one of the important ones. What do you mean seeing the fun values? Well, the, the, the fun values in the game are Easter eggs. There's a lot of YouTubers made videos about them. I'm... This is a fun value! Hey, is your refrigerator running? Mm, no, I fell down a gigantic chasm and I hurt myself. Okay, I'll send someone over to fix it. Thanks for letting me know. Good communication is important. Okay, wonderful. So that's one. That's one of them. We're gonna abandon this uh, guy as well. Gonna go ahead and flee. Okay, we can't flee from this wanker apparently. Wanker! Sorry, I, I think I just had an outburst there. Let's go ahead and heckle him. You tell the Snow Drake that they aren't funny. Insults towards humans. That's not very nice either. I think, I think he just very cordially gave us a slur. I'm heckling him. Insults towards human. Ah! Oh damn it, we got boxed in on that one. We had no chance. Uh, can we mercy him? Can we flee? Yes. Good. Okay. Wait, what fun event are you looking for? Uh, I was looking for that there, um, what's my dingle? The, the kind of, and this right here. This is also something we're after. 
So the next one we are going to go after is another phone call. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to close the game so we can edit the fun values, right? Which are on this notepad right here. Everyone can see them. It's public knowledge. And we need to edit two of the values. So I, can't, oh, I also can't read chat while I'm looking for the fun values uh, to put in. So the second one is between 46 and 50. Let's be safe and we'll put in, say, 48. That's probably a good idea. 48. Let's save that. And this one here, we are also going to have to change to 48. And we'll also save that. Now let's boot the game back up. And we are golden for another fun value event. I hope we're all excited for these. There's two fun events in that room? Yeah, we're going to go and see the other fun event that's in that room. I am literally going out of my way to make sure that we force them to spawn. With a little bit of programming knowledge. So it should be right here that we get another fun value event. Here it is! That's a fight! Okay, I'm fleeing. No, he's uh, not letting us flee. He's just going to kind of harass us a little bit. Can we flee now? No. Okay, this is... Really frustrating. All right, uh, let's go ahead and just ignore him because he's a an absolute penis. So I think that this fun value event only actually triggers after we kind of like befriend Undyne. There is one, They some of them do actually have their own little requirements. And I think we may have accidentally found one that requires a requirement. So we'll go ahead and we'll leave here. I'll go back through just in case there is going to be a phone call. Doesn't look like it. Okay, so there, it, for the love of God. Actually, we don't have to sit through this. So now we want to change this to the other Fun Valley event, which is just north of here, which is going to be... Uh, 65. And we need to defeat Papyrus. So we do actually need to progress a little bit further into the game. Good. Let's do that. Let's do that right this second. I was actually looking for the, uh, the game. I thought I minimized it, but it turns out not. Okay. If you say yes and say something like, great, I'll come over to deposit the brewskis. Yes, he does. That is exactly what he says. I don't even know if he's being facetious or if he's lying or something like that. I love that event. It's a pretty, it's a neat one, isn't it? It's a cute one. So we have to come back here at some point anyway. I think north of here. Uh, that's got to be like the place where Karen, the boatman, kind of drops us off, right? Or maybe he drops us off at the Snowden town. We'll have to figure it out later. Uh, so we've got to beat Papyrus for this next one, and we also have to befriend Undyne for another one as well. Let's go ahead and ignore this dickhead. Why is he harassing us? I don't care about your hat, you twit. Go away. Literally go away. Okay, let's go ahead and ignore him again. All right, he's upset with us. He's going to fire another few spikes. I don't really care, to be quite frank. They're pretty slow to dodge, and we'll spear him. Good. Now we're going to gap it on through. They keep paying us as well. Even though they're harassing us, we're the ones being paid. <sighs> I, I speak Spanish. Right now I'm playing Undertale on the genocidal route. Man, you are going to have a bad time at the end. Believe you me. All right, we're going to just gap it all the way to Snowden Town. And then we're going to try and rush Papyrus. We've got to defeat Papyrus. I don't know if we have to kill him or if we just have to kind of like get past him. Which we will do. Maybe we kill him. Uh, there's no fun value events uh, tied to Papyrus kind of later, is there? Oh, uh, we need to we need to spear him to befriend Undyne, don't we? Yeah, definitely. Let's go ahead and save right here because we got pretty far without a single fight. And if we uh, die, we're going to be a little bit obnoxious. The fishing rod room is where the sound test event is. Yeah, that was the next one that I was hoping we could get, but we need to uh, defeat Papyrus to get it. According to the wiki, unless the wiki lied to me, Okay, uh, apparently fleeing does not work on Jerry. I just took that hit. That's fine. Oh, damn it. Damn it, Jerry. Okay, let's go ahead and ditch Jerry. You and the other monsters ditch Jerry. Excellent. He's going to fire a bunch more of these spikes at me. Wonderful. You do you, buddy old pal. Now let's go ahead and ignore him. Yep, good. Hello, my hat. Screw your hat, my dude. Screw it. Uh, let's go ahead and ignore him again. Oh, Jerry came back. That's, no, that's bad. That's a really bad thing. We don't want Jerry back. Jerry is awful. Oh my God. What a dick. Go away. Wow. Damn, you snapped. 
I think neither cell phone calls needs any conditions to be triggered, apart from the fun value. No, one of them definitely needs... We actually just tried it out. One of them actually does need a condition for the fun value event to trigger. We need to go and befriend Undyne. Or at least meet Undyne. Uh, it's an Elphus related one. So we need to actually do something Elphus related to be able to see that fun value event. That just makes the most sense, honestly. But the river person spot has the wrong number song. Yep, uh, we'll get to that as well when we go back there. Wait, how are you playing this right now with the genocide route in the save? This isn't a genocide route. This is a brand new save. The... Oh, bugger. It's... Wait, there are triangles in this? That's weird. What if we get them all as triangles? Yeah, so, no, I've, I've backed up my save. It's sitting on the desktop. Uh, we are playing a completely brand new game. This one is... It's not the genocide route. We, we started a new one so that we could see the fun value events. You can't see all of the, you can't even see half the fun value events on genocide simply because uh, the Gaster followers, they don't spawn ever on genocide. You gotta have a low kill rating. Fling sometimes takes a couple of attempts. All right, let's try that out. Nice, great. Last time I played genocide route, I played through the whole game with a mod to make you die on one hit. Ugh, that's rough. That's, why? Why would anybody do that? Sorry, the more you know. The Elphus call I got when I first went on through Snowden on that run. Uh, we'll go back there anyway because we still have to beat Papyrus regardless to go and trigger the uh, sound test room, which is right over there. I haven't been farther at all in that run. It just didn't work for some reason. Challenge run. Challenge run, no, I'm not doing that. One hit is, I'm bad at bullet hells. That's not a challenge that I'm just like open to taking. We're going to go through here, and we're going to immediately try and uh, take on Papyrus, if we can. So we go through here, and we should be ambushed by him in the snow, which is not only creepy, but unjust. It's very uncouth. Okay, good. I'm going to try Datum. We're, we're going to try and do as good of a pacifist run as we possibly can. And we are not necessarily going to worry too much about, like, the endings or anything like that. We just... We just want to go neutral, I suppose. As best as we can. All right, Papyrus blocks the way. Let's go ahead and insult him. How selfless. <laughs> you want me to feel better about fighting you. I don't deserve such hospitality from you. Oh, that's right. We got to dodge his bones, right? That's his fight. Okay, let's do that same thing again. There's no need to lie to yourself. Your barbs <coughs> hide a different affection. Your, emotion your emotional cactus. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we did, I suppose. Papyrus is rattling his bones. That's nice. Don't! <laughs> Don't waste your words on me. This is new dialogue, by the way. We didn't insult him in the last run, but we don't necessarily care what he does. You insult, but to no avail. Okay, seems acting won't escalate this battle. Gotcha. All right, fine. Frisk got a snow grave. Ugh. Neither the Alphys or Sandskull have any special requirements besides fun value. Uh, the Alphys one, according to the wiki, does have a special requirement, and also we just tried to do it, and it didn't work. Which, it, it has a 100% chance of working as well. So, there is, in fact, a requirement. We just saw it on the screen very, very recently. I'm joking, but it does look like it. The blizzard or whatever looks like a tablecloth. It does! It looks like a doily, doesn't it? It looks like a doily. Papyrus is rattling his bones. Okay, so we now need to, I don't know, fight or... Let's flirt. Okay, we're gonna... We're gonna do it. Uh, I have zero... I can make spaghetti. Okay, good. Let's date. Let's date, Papyrus. We just want to get him out of the way, honestly. His nice guy act for once is working, and I hate that because that's positive reinforcement. Okay, let's date later. No, I do not want to! You dick! <laughs> Papyrus is thinking about what to cook for his date. That's weird. Can we spare him? So you won't fight? Then let's see if you can handle my fabled blue attack. Finally! Uh... Oh, these are tricky. These are really tricky, actually. I don't know if we can actually get around these. <laughs> but that was hard. Thanks! Ah! Damn it! <laughs> it actually jump scared me. Weird, because I got the Alpha's call before I got past Snowden. Maybe my game is glitched? Hmm? I've got no idea how that would have happened. We literally just tried to do that, and it's not possible. You're blue now! That's my attack! <laughs> okay, you're blue now! Let's go ahead and do some acting again. Maybe flirt? Okay. Let's date later. I don't actually want to. So now we've got the blue soul, which hilariously 
Someone said something about the blue soul that was a little bit strange, wasn't it? Okay, good. Gonna just dodge all of these if I can. Excellent. And a big one. Gotta dodge his big bones. Like we're trying to dance in the club. All right, I'm sparing again. Okay, good. Ah! All right. Good. Uh, we're gonna slip this. It's a shame you can't like hold down to go down faster. That would make everything so much easier in this entire game. Even the sands fight would be easier. Good. Done. Okay, I took that one voluntarily. That was... I chose to do that. Mercy. Okay, I'm just going to hear all of his dialogue before I give two hoots about what he's actually going to be doing in terms of combat. Okay, good. Nice and nice. And I'm going to slip that one and we're going to jump over that. Nice. I'm surprised we actually got around that one without taking damage. Undyne will be really proud of me. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, let's actually get a good run up for that one. And this one as well. Nice. That was a little bit faster, which is perfect. I like the fast ones. It's the slow ones that I have trouble doing, because then I have to move myself. Ah! Ah! Damn it. Ah! Okay, dodged. Let's go ahead and mercy him again. I'm just going to try and exhaust his dialogue, I think. Oh, for God's sake, I didn't touch anything in that. The hitboxes in this game, gotta be said, significantly more jank than uh, Deltarune. Like, I think unequivocally more jank. Okay, let's spare him again. Don't know what the hell he's doing with his time, but quite frankly, I don't care. Done, and done, and done, and little... I took that one straight to the dome. Uh, iframes got me through that one. Nice. Uh, let's use an item. I think that spider donut might be a good idea right here. <sighs> the Cyan Soul is a funny mechanic on the secret boss on the Switch. What secret boss? Oh, right, yeah, the secret boss. We saw the secret boss out in the uh, Snowden Cave as well. Maybe I dreamed it, like the famous Megalovania rave dream I had. Define! Cite your source! <laughs> Alright, let's go through here. Nice. And through here, great. Anything more? Yes. Man, his bones are uh, growing and showing like crazy, right? I spare him. Okay, this is actually one of Sans' attacks, and it's one of the ones I really struggle with. Okay, good. Uh, let's go ahead and mercy him again. Good, done. Oh, damn it. Oh. It was way slower than I thought it would be. We're also supposed to take one there as well. Uh, let's go ahead and spare him again. And, wow, well, damn it. The stick, the stick is actually sandbagging me now. Uh, I took that one voluntarily as well. We have only six health. Let's go ahead and just kind of, I don't know, do what he says. That was a shame. Okay. <laughs> I used iframes to get through that one. And now we're going to jump. Wah, nice. And jump. Wah, nice. There's not like another one coming either. I don't think we've got any more like uh, health anywhere. So we probably don't want to take any more hits. Oh. Good. Another. This is your last chance. Okay, great. That's awesome. I love knowing. Oh, piss off. Seriously? Okay, good. And another one. Excellent. And we're probably going to have to jump a small one. No, we do not have to. Okay, special attack. Thank you, Dopey Fox. Thank you for saving me. Okay, stupid dog. Please don't swear at the dog, Pepperus. Come off it. All right, good. I'll just use a really cool regular attack. Okay, we're doing the... We're doing the... We're doing the combat. Whoa. Oh, that was close. Oh, no. There was literally no chance of us getting through that one. Okay, and good. Don't know how we slip those. And another few over here. Great. And Toby. Hello there, Toby. Okay, slipping over here. Cool dude. Nice. Gonna jump that bone on a, on a skateboard too. This is um, where we go up all the way, right? Perfect. And done. Is it gonna be another little one? It could have killed us, by the way. We've only got one HP. Ooh. You can fight Mad Mew Mew with the PC port by putting to the suggestions a while ago. Okay. Mew Mew isn't Cyan Soul. It's two colored blue and red for the default. What the hell? That was so close. I know it was so close, wasn't it? Okay, good. We've done it. We've done it. We have uh, defeated him, which means we can now go back. Thank you for mercying me. I love your doily snowstorm. 
Yeah, so look, those rocks, they're uh, going into the waterfall. So we're about to go into the waterfall area. Let's be friends. I don't want to date you. I don't want to date you. Oh my god. That is so weird. I think he was supposed to have jumped us. I don't know how he did that over our head, though. All right, we've beaten him. Uh, that was so close. Yes, it is technically the cyan. According to Toby Fox himself. Uh, uh, do you have a source to cite on that? The secret life is redacted. Huh, cool. All right, uh, so I'm going to do a heal, and we're going to go back now that we've defeated Papyrus, and then we're going to go and try and get ourselves the uh, fun value thing that was tied to him. You're quoting Twitter? That's dangerous. That's very dangerous. Um, that is probably actually the fastest way to ever get a, th a tomato thrown at you. Like a rotting tomato, not like a good, nice, big, crisp and crunchy tomato. Not a big red one, but like a, a kind of moldy tomato. You'll get to moldy tomatoes thrown at you for quoting Twitter. It doesn't even matter if it was right these days. If you quote Twitter, you're just like um, bottom of the barrel stuff. Uh, Toby Fox said, quote, quote this post, quote this Twitter post. And you'll get all of the copyright restrictions on every Undertale video lifted. And I've been quoting that post, and it's actually... S the Quoting that post has now gotten the uh, content ID manager for Toby Fox's soundtracks on Deltarune and Undertale. They are now manually rejecting every single one of my disputes. So Twitter means nothing to anybody these days. It's a real shame that Toby uh, kind of like chooses to put statements on there, because it, it's, it's just worth dirt. It's worth, it's worth absolute dirt. Toby Fox's Twitter, how is that not official? I don't know, how about you tell his content ID managers? I don't really know anything that goes on on Twitter. You are living the dream, my dude. Twitter is an absolute cesspool. There is nothing on there that's good. Literally nothing on Twitter is ever good. And then Elon Musk bought it and it got even worse. Because uh, now everybody is just uh, doing memes. Doing memes and stuff on Twitter. Okay. We're almost all the way back at the place that we're supposed to be at. Then I'll take a look at which of these fun values that we're supposed to enable. Because I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be one of the big lore ones. One of the big lore reveal uh, ones. Oh, good. I can rest my thumb now. Excellent. Let's carry on. Please, I need to tell someone about the Megalovania rave. Did you just tell someone about the Megalovania rave? My dude, you do not need permission. <laughs> it's chat. There's a freedom of speech here. Although, as I said at the start of this episode, when there was no one here... Don't come into chat and talk about how you are committing crimes in real time. We had a really awkward instance a few days ago where somebody was uh, talking about committing uh, real crimes and it made a lot of people really uncomfortable and stuff like that. I had to blur it out so that, um, y you know, just protecting people. Uh, someone essentially doxed themselves by saying they were committing a crime. What? Yeah, I know, right? Who would actually do that? There's some good art on Twitter. Uh, I think you probably find that same art on DeviantArt, right? They, they tend to share a demographic. Right, Jesus. Hi, hello there. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so we're here. We're at the box. Uh, we did save, didn't we? I'm going to double check by just saving again. And now we're going to Alt F4 out of the game. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Right up here, you're going to find the play... No, I'm totally joking. <laughs> we're going to edit the fun values. We want to go into the fun values, and we want to see which one of these... We trigger. So, I think it might be the wrong number song is what we're trying to trigger now. Uh, uh, I think. There's Sans Call, there's Alphys's Call, which we can't do yet, potentially. We already stuck that fun value in and we didn't get anything, so I think we do have to satisfy some requirements. There is Nightmare Mode, which we saw. Gaster's Followers as well, which we need to get to the Hotlands for. Uh, sound Test Room. That's, uh, that is a big lore one that uh, a lot of people are telling me debunks entire theories of mine, but it doesn't, and I'll, I'll show you why. Because it, all it does is really confirm that one person existed. Oh, uh, really? Oh, I thought I was actually just about to be sandbagged by this, um, this app that I use. Okay, let's go ahead and bring the game back up and see if we can't roll for this because it has a kind of a, a, a half a test to a, a half a percent chance to actually spawn. But since we've got both of those fun values in there, it should be absolutely fine. Are you Aussie too? You see Mozzie? No, absolutely not. I am a New Zealander. 
I'm New Zealand. Being on Twitter is the crime. <laughs> when I was doing my first genocide rat, I was so obsessed with fighting sands that I had a whole dream about it. In the dream, his gastroblasters were not called as gastroblasters, but were instead called as megalovanias. As the soul, I went over the top of one of the megalovanias and just kind of squashed it out of existence. <sighs> Maybe you didn't get the alphas call because you did the sands call first. Do they happen in the same spot? Yes, they happen in the same spot. Ligma, hello there, Ligma. Wonder what your last name is. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save. Now, there should be a 50-50 chance of getting the sound test room up here, right? No, nothing. I'm going to ult here for, we're going to fire the game straight back up again. I'm pretty sure that we can roll for it like this. Just like so. Fire it up again. Then the music abruptly cut off with that one sound effect. Okay. Wow, that is really a fanfic you were, you were going for, huh? Okay, let's go up here. Sound test room? No, nothing. Okay, let's ult F4 out of there. And maybe there is another fun value thing that we have to kind of like... Edit. Kills none, room 46. That's good to know, actually. Love. We don't have any love. Our name is Pooper. Great. Love that for us. Yeah, no, there shouldn't be anything else that we necessarily have to uh, edit, right? We should be able to get all of the fun value events now. The fun value is set to 65, which it is. And Papyrus has been defeated, which he has. There is an additional 50% chance for a hidden sound test room to appear. The menu itself contains three very short looking traps and a longer track that once picked cannot be deselected. None of these tracks are used anywhere else in the game. So again, this is all cut content because it's not used in the game and on the full release of the game, you had to edit game files to be able to see it in the first place. So we can't use any of what we're seeing here for theory crafting whatsoever. It just can't be done. We can't do it. Now, I don't know how this role kind of like works. Okay, nothing. But it is a 50% chance and I don't know just how unlucky we are getting right now. Let's just keep on rolling. <sighs> I think it might have died, but I'm not sure. Also, this is now a joke between a couple of friends. Okay. Let this back up. Continue. Uh, do we get it? No. Okay, so fun valley events, they're not spawning. Weird, huh? This, this is actually a really, really weird thing. Like, I get that you are only technically be able, uh, supposed to be able to see one fun value event per game. But you should be able to edit them in real time, because I'm pretty sure there's not, like, a confirmation anywhere that invalidates any other fun values. Yeah, let's just bring this up. Before version 1.01, which was the first patch, the fun value was capitalized as fun value. That turns it into a class-based variable, and it stops anything from being able to be accessed without editing the game files, therefore cut content. And several code checks thus made those events inaccessible. It's cut content. Regardless of what we find. So. Alright. Global. Oh, I see. Okay. The presence of fun events is indicated primarily by line 36 of file 0. I already found that. Internally referred to as global flag.5. I don't know where to find that. Several of the events additionally require the named value in undertale.ini to match that of the global flag. Yes, that is absolutely true. So, we probably want to try and find the global flag then, don't we? It's got to be somewhere. We can probably do a control F in this file right here, just to look for a boolean. I think what we're looking at is all of the monsters that we've encountered and fought right here. It's just kind of like boolean values, which is pretty good. This right here is the time, way down here. What is this? 46. That's what we spawned with as our fun value, wasn't it? What if we change this to 65 as well? Was it 65? I think it was 65. Where's the other text file? Nope, that's the one we've got open. Where are you, buddy? Where is the fun? Oh, this is now at zero. Strange. 65. Save. I saved over it. And this one right here is 65. Good. Awesome. All right, let's, let's try doing this again. Because we may have to save to kind of like weird let's see if that fixed it all right fun value is 65 that hasn't changed whatsoever they do change in real time as well by the way 65 right here perfect so we should have the right fun values if we go up here 
Welcome to Sound Test. Listen to all your favorites. Press left or right to select. So we've got to change the fun value. Then we've got to actually save the game. That's how we do it. Press left or right to select. Press Z to play a song. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Okay, what's next? Let's try Meat Factory. So we've got Happy Town. There we go, guess this thing. We'll check out that one last. Meat Factory. Weird. This is cut content. I'm pretty sure this was supposed to be in the lab down below with all of the guester stuff, right? I've got a little confession to make. I have an illness in my ears with um, the, I have a, a thinning of the bone that kind of registers frequencies in my, God, I have to take this off. Um, if you guys ever like listen to a really low bass song and you find that it makes you feel kind of drunk when you are stone cold sober, you have a thinness in your ear bone that creates uh, kind of a vibration whenever you hear oscillating bass frequencies. I definitely have this. I definitely have this, and uh, this right here is triggering it off. Now, it's interesting that it's called Meat Factory, because we have seen the kind of, like, homunculi beneath the laboratory. We have seen those. So we know that there was kind of, like, an instance where Gaster was taking monsters and kind of blending them together. This is my theory, by the way. Was taking them and blending these monsters together to try and get a soul as powerful as a human's. And I feel like there was supposed to be more Gaster stuff in the game, but it was uncharacteristically too creepy for the final product, because Toby Fox really wanted his game to be kind of like um, based around friendship and working together, which is why a lot of people seem to um, see the true pacifist ending as the canon ending. And uh, to be quite honest, I'm actually inclined to agree with them as well. But all of the plot points are in the game. All of the plot points do give us the history of the game. So we can't invalidate any of the other endings regardless. I... So, Meat Factory. I feel like this was supposed to be Gaster's area. But it was never programmed into the game because it was too horrifying in comparison to the rest of the game. Meat Factory reminds me of the game Meat Loaf Rotation. What, just the name of it? What do you mean Gaster was blending monsters together? Uh, you might want to go and watch our true pacifist playthrough on YouTube if you missed that stream. Let's get this horrible sound out of my ears before I literally go drunk. Alright, Trouble Dingle. All of these are looping, by the way. They're, they're not like a huge song. They're all just looping. So Trouble Dingle is um, very glitched. Again, this is uncharacteristically creepy compared to the rest of the game. So... This is the reason I think all of this is cut content. I think that it was intentional that the fun value in the text file, I'll show you the text file right here, this right here, the fun value right here, this was capitalized in the prime release of the game. And the reason for that is that Toby Fox did not want any of the fun values to call into the scripts organically because they are just uncharacteristically creepy. I've kind of gone to this fun event before. All right, um, so yeah, you weren't able to actually access all of this. I'm pretty sure it was cut content based exclusively on just that plot point alone. I know uh, how small studios do develop games because I've got a lot of experience in modding, development, and I've had formal education in game development. So uh, this, this is something that you very commonly see in smaller studios, but in bigger studios, you won't get away with this because if you capitalize the fun value and then like in 10 rooms away, some other department, uh, they actually do have a class called fun. Um, you'll accidentally call to that script every time that you kind of have the... Every time, that, every time you encounter the fun event that would have triggered, you call to the script of fun from a different place, which best case scenario crashes the game, worst case scenario creates a nested loop or corrupts the entire save file. So you can't get away with doing that in bigger companies. Bigger companies usually are very um, sound specific. Uh, sorry, language specific. This music is really throwing off my speech, gotta be said. Now, okay, let's take a look at Gaster's thing. Again, uncharacteristically disturbing in comparison to the rest of the game. All of these are minor chords. It feels like Dorian modes, if I was to kind of like poke into the, the music theory side of this. It's just gonna loop like this, by the way. So, 
This is also cut content. Thanks for your feedback. Be seeing you soon. Okay, so you listen to Gaster's theme. It ends. It says, thanks for your feedback. Be seeing you soon. Right? That doesn't actually confirm that Gaster is alive. It confirms that Gaster existed. Gaster is a, like a, a character that was in the world at some point. That is all that that fun value gave us. There is nothing else that you could have extrapolated from that song. It doesn't confirm Gaster's alive. It doesn't confirm that Gaster just spoke to us. Especially if you go with the theory that WD Gaster stands for Wingdings Gaster, and he exclusively speaks in Wingdings. The text we got was not in Wingdings, and thus cannot be Gaster. Can't be done. So that right there debunked everything that people have been uh, telling me that the sound room proves. Unequivocally proves there is no evidence here. There is literally no evidence for the game. Even if the fun values were canon and accessible in the full release of the game, that told us nothing. It told us zero plot whatsoever. Also, while you have Gaster's theme going, you can't play any of the other songs. I just think it's neat. Yeah, so it, it basically locks you on Gaster, which again is uncharacteristically creepy. It sounds like Lavender Town, which there are creepy pastors about the Lavender Town theme song. So that right there was probably one of the biggest fun values that we are going to see. And I'm going to save. I'm going to collapse the game uh, so we can go and get the Elphys, um Easter egg as well. We're, we're going to edit the game files again. Now, we want to hide this so you guys can't see what is going to happen. We'll see. Because uh, now that we know that we have to save afterwards, it might be a little bit different. Uh, where is the fun value? Fun! It's at zero. So once you see the fun value, the fun value just goes to zero. That's good to know, actually. That's really good to know. Uh, between 46 and 50, let's just set it to 48. And I'll copy that after I, before I save the game. And we'll change the 65 down here, which just changed to a zero. Interesting to know. So you can't access that Easter egg again. You can't re-trigger it. Whereas some Easter eggs, they stay as their base value, which means you could potentially re-trigger the Easter egg. Um, but I, I don't think it'd actually be able to if there's just kind of like a Boolean that says, hey, don't do this. It's probably tied to all of the fun value events that are kind of gaster related that it just sets it to zero because I don't think Toby Fox really wanted people to um, dive too much into that necessarily. So this one here, we're going to save really quickly and we are going to get ourselves access to this other Alphys core. Maybe you guys were right. Maybe we don't actually have to do anything with Undyne. Okay, we've got uh, that big dickhead right there. We've insulted him a bunch of times. Uh, it looks like there is no phone call. No phone call. There is no, there's no phone call from Alphys right here. So we probably have to meet Alphys first. <sighs> the sound test room proves that Gaster has or had a theme. Boom. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You guys are also, I, the reason I'm doing it in this format, by the way, so you guys can see my desktop, is so that you can see that I am sticking in the right fun value events and then triggering the event as best as I can, essentially. So that is everything that we want to see in Snowden Forest. The next, there's a couple more things. The next one we're probably going to see is in the Waterfall. Man, this guy's harassing the hell out of us, isn't he? Uh, we're going to go to the Waterfall. And in the Waterfall, we're going to get ourselves a little bit more lore. It's not canon lore, again, because none of the fun value events have been kind of approved as canon by any of the development team of uh, Undertale or Toby Fox himself or Deltarune or anything like that. None of them have said, yes, it's the thing. But... There are some connotations with it. There are some connotations with it that we do necessarily want to see, even if it's useless to us in terms of theory crafting. Because what we don't want to use in theory crafting is speculation and conjecture. Speculation is fun, but it's it's really bad when you are trying to put together an investigative narrative. We don't want to do that. What about the wrong number song in Snowden Town? Oh yeah, we can do that one. We can do that one uh, as soon as we reach it, actually. Let's do that. Let's go through all of these and we'll trigger the uh, wrong number song. So that's just like, that's north of where the dog is throwing all of the, all of the ice, right? I'm pretty sure. Let's also see what happens when we kind of trigger all these to be triangles. I'm going to leave here. Because I've never seen it before. Circles, yes. And then we're going to do the whole puzzle again. Because otherwise there would be an X facing the other way. Okay, come down here, come over here, 
Come down here. Nice. So, triangles. We got the triangles. That and that. And now I'm coming over here. I don't want to... Damn it. Okay, we're going off the ledge. Okay, we died. Oh, well. Maybe it does nothing. It probably actually just does nothing. Honestly. Now that I think about it, it probably actually does nothing. How many are there? None. Oh, I see. It's just like, oh, you've been on here too many times. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. We'll go through here. We've got something on our head. It's snow this time. These are the poofs, which means we're right next to the bridge. We'll go and do the wrong number Easter egg next. I did say that this stream specifically was going to piss some people off because we are chasing Easter eggs and we found half of the ones that we necessarily would need for theory crafting, but unfortunately they're just useless to us in just every single way, shape and form. I got the wrong number song on my first two playthroughs before I even knew about fun value, so I just assumed it was a normal thing and was so confused on my third playthrough when I didn't get it. Yeah, I feel like it was added in a patch as kind of like a, hey, thank you guys so much for supporting our game. Here's a reason to go back through it if you uh, want to keep on playing it. Because uh, it's a short game. It's a short game and it's it's genius, quite frankly. It's a, it's a genius game. It's so fun. Okay, ROM number song. This is 2 to 39. So let's go ahead and go into our fun value. And we'll just hit, I don't know, 5. It's, it has to be between 2 and 39, which I'm happy to do. Save that. Save that. And we fire the game back up. Okay. Let's go back in and we'll see if we can't get ourselves the wrong number song. Bing! Bong! Bong! Bing! Bing! Boom! Bing! Bong! Boom! Bong! Boom! Bing! Get that mouse out of the way. Uh, so we go north twice, I think. That's what we're doing. Wow, hello there, rabbit. I was a child just staring at that rabbit's ass. That doesn't feel great to say. <laughs> All right, let's come up here and we'll see whether or not we can actually find this wrong number song. So it should be up here, right? Hello? Hello? That's the right spot, isn't it? I'm pretty sure that is the right spot. It's the boatman area. Uh, song plays in Snowden and the river person room. Yes, if the fun value is between two to 39, did the fun values change? No, no. They're both still the right number. Okay. Right, the phone call begins with somebody whose name's asking for somebody else. I'm not going to spoil what that is. There is a known glitch with it. Okay, that's not relevant whatsoever. There's no, like, percentage chance of it happening either. So it should just trigger. It should, it, it should just be happening. Weird. Maybe we actually need the river person in there first. That, that could actually potentially be a thing. This is the right spot? Yeah, I, I knew it was. Uh, let's go ahead and just really quickly go and save. Actually, nah, let's just progress. Uh, we can always come back here, right, with access to the river person. Because as soon as we get to the, excuse me, Papyrus, I'm just going to slip by you here. Your spaghetti is revolting. We're going to slip by, we're going to go to the waterfall. Because there is a fun value in the waterfall that we are going to uh, need for our theory crafting. You don't need the river person in there first? Well, we didn't get the, we didn't get it. It didn't trigger, unfortunately, so... We, uh, we're, we're out of luck. I got that one before. I could just play the sound. It's on the wiki. Damn, that sounds... The sound of rushing water. This is what rushing water sounds like. Nice. Okay, so... Around here, there should be another one of these Easter eggs. Where is it? Uh, it is the... There is a fake hallway... We need to go to the crystal save point to get that one. And also Gonakid is in the waterfall as well. Right before the room where Undyne first throws spears at the protagonist, if the fun value is 90 or greater for the Gonakid. Is that exclusive to the Switch? No, Clam Girl is exclusive to the Switch. And she's not available on the genocide route either. Okay, so what we want to do is get to the crystal room, and I'm going to trust you guys in chat to tell me where the mystery person easter egg is, because I'm not entirely sure when we are going to come up to Undyne. Alright, I know there's like a, a thing behind here. With the 2-2, two -two, we're going to take this 2-2 two -two for the extra defense, in case we actually do get uh, kind of ambushed. 
go ahead, go into our items, and we will use the tutu. Whoops! You ate the snowman piece? That's not what I selected. I'm sure of- oh, maybe it is what I selected. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Whoops! Alright, we'll carry on, and we want to go to the crystal spot. This is not where Undyne throws the spears for the first time. I'm almost certain of it. Uh, let's go ahead and skip all of this dialogue, because it's not very interesting. Every time I've gotten the wrong number song was before River Person. We'll have to go back for it. We'll have to go back for it. Hello? It is I. Mystery Man is between the cheese and crystal room and the room with Sans Telescope. Yeah, that's that's why I said we're going up to the... Uh, We're going up to the uh, crystal room. The cheese crystal. Yeah. Undyne doesn't throw spears in here. I love how she just kind of slinks off. She's got an invisibility cloak. Hello! Okay, I don't really care what he has to say. We're going to skip through it. He fell on his face. That's embarrassing. What an oaf. Okay, let's go ahead and save. Good. Now, through here... Uh, we still need to reach the telescope, don't we? The telescope room. Put that there. I'll take this. Does anyone else find the genocide route, like, weirdly easy until you get up to Sands? Is that actually a thing? Alpha's told her that seaweed is, like, super scientifically important. Oh, I'll bet. I'll bet. All right. Aaron Flex is in. We're going to go ahead and flee. Come on in. The water's fine. Oh, he's actually flexing. All right. Fine, Aaron. You flex away. Good. And we are going to flee again. Okay, can't do that. Oh, he's sweaty. Gross. I hate when mermaids sweat on me at the gym. Fleeing. Okay, we can't flee from this guy. He's too buff. Oops, we took a hit. That's absolutely fine, though. Fine, we're going to flex then. You flex. Okay, good. Flexing contest. Yes, please. Sweat elsewhere. Please, not on my heart. Sweat away. Uh, let's flex on him. Good. And he's about to flex himself out of the room as well, which is exactly what we want. Nice. Perfect. And one more flex, and he is dipping. What an idiot. What an actual idiot. Okay, now we're going to go up here. We're going to start doing this puzzle from below, which is, again, a very easy puzzle once you actually know what to do. Come down here. Nice. That's two. We need three. And then we're probably also going to need the fourth one, which is just situated up here in the exact same location as every single other one. Good. Can we beat it? No, we can't. All right. Ring, ring. Uh, this is Papyrus. How did I get this number? It was easy. I just dialed every... Okay, we've got this dialogue before. That's not any kind of what's my dingle. Good. Let's come in. So this is lore, right? There's lore on the walls, which we have already seen. We're going to ignore it all, though. Washua shuffles up. Okay, what if we flee? Yep, we're off. Bye, Washua. You have a great day. I'm going to come up through here because I know that the door is here. Everybody else does, too. So I think this is where one of the fun value events are, right? I wish I could save in here, but we can't, I don't think. Hmm. Yeah, I think we have to come back here regardless. Actually, we'll probably look at the text file since it updates in real time. See which room we're in. Room. 86. Is this the... Because uh, we can see that and we can correlate that with the fun values. 86. 86, 86, 86. No, we need to be at room 91. Okay, so we need to go a little bit further ahead. So this will be 87, I think. Some of my friends and my brother keep comparing me to Sans and Undertale. Oh no, it is back. Oh no. That's not good. Okay. I'm actually going to ult F4 here, and we are going to try and get the Goner Kid. That might be a good idea, because I'm pretty sure that that is the one. On a dock right before the room where Undyne first throws spears at the protagonist. Right, good. So, fun value needs to be over 90. Let's go with 92. We'll just... Go for a, a random nice number. 36 uh, should not be 5. It should be 92. These have to be the same number. Going to save them both. And now we want to fire the game back up. And then we're going to do a save. And then we'll go and we'll see if we can't get that uh, fun value to spawn. Ah. 
Well, actually, my brother told me you're not Sans when I was acting normal. What do I do? Uh, you do whatever pleases you, my dude. If you want to be absolutely based and be recognized as a video game character, um, then uh, by all means, do so. Freedom of speech and all that. But you got to live with the consequences of your freedom of speech. You know, it's pretty much as simple as that. Be who you want to be. Don't be who other people want you to be. Uh, Aaron flexes in. We're just going to go ahead and flex. We're going to do it. We're doing the flexing contest. Oops, just wa almost walked into a gigantic puddle of sweat. That was close. We almost just bit some sweat. Let's go ahead and flex again. Nice. Come down here. He's doing a bunch of flexing. We got hit by a flex, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and flex once more. And he is gone. He's done your rings. Bye-bye. Thank you for the 30 buck reboos. He must have really needed that flexing contest, honestly. Gonna go for the furthest one first for some reason. Actually, well, uh, this is faster. Why would I not just do this? And then we, the other two need to come from beneath. Nice. We've already found a speedrunning strat. Beautiful. Come through here. Ring, ring. This is Papyrus. He's gonna harass us. Okay. So, Gonna Kid should be in the next room, right? Now, here's the thing. The wiki did say there's additional dialogue if we have an umbrella with us. I'm going to go ahead and just run away. Or not. It's fine as well, I suppose. Oh, you penis washer. I hate you. Flee. Good. We fled. Let's go on up here. All right. He's not in here. So we probably actually do have to... Just go through and get to the point where we get an umbrella. Uh, when we get the umbrella, that is when we can guarantee we'll find the Goner Kid down there. So we'll we'll go through Undyne's rooms, we'll get the umbrella, we'll return, and then we will be in a very good spot, I think. Okay. Hi, Undyne. Bye-bye. I'm going to slip all these. Man, she's got a lot of spears. Oops. That was close. Almost got hit by one of those because I was stuck on a corner. What if we can just, like, keep on moving forward? No, we can't. Going down is actually risky. Whee! Oh, damn it! Okay, we got hit by those. That's absolutely fine. And we'll slip those. And we'll slip those too. And these ones should be pretty easy as well. Nope. We're now in the long grass. This is where she comes through and she finds that kid, right? But like, I never try to act like sense. Maybe it's dad jokes and puns. Maybe that's why. Wrong guy. Wrong guy, Undyne. We're in the grass. We're right in front of you. Okay, we're leaving. No, we're going to get harassed by him. Oh, piss off. Right, so, I feel like, um, I don't want to say this preemptively, but I have, oh, good, crystal cheese. Excellent. So, we want to save right here because there's a fun value right at this point in time. And we want to go and change the fun value, don't we? Because we're about to encounter another fun value event. I think this is the mystery man one. Nope, those are the files. We actually want the fun value table. All right, where is it? The, it's not the goner kid. We're, we want the fake hallway. Yes. This is, this is definitely it. All right, so we need to change uh, the two text files to 66 fun value right here. The six, we'll save that of course. And this one right here. Also, 66. Save that, and we'll fire up the game. Now, this is a big one. This is a really, really big one. I am reading on the wiki right now that this is the mystery man icon. However, unfortunately, even the wiki admits that its relationship to Gaster is not based on truth. It's just a bunch of made up stuff. All right, so right ahead here, we're going to find the fake hallway. Ooh. That is a god roll. 10%. There's a 10% chance of him actually showing up there. Otherwise, this room is just empty. 
Okay, so theory crafting time. Theory crafting time. Everybody pay attention. Everybody on the internet for the last nine years has said that this is Gaster. Why has everyone said this is Gaster? Because MatPat made the connection. So we're going to listen real carefully to what we're about to. In fact, you know what? I'm actually going to bring up Audacity right this second. We're going to record this and we're going to play it back and we're going to compare it to Gaster's theme, which we have all ready found. Uh, our input should be... Oh, God, we want desktop, don't we? We want the desktop to be our input. Oh, no. Microphone, no. Uh, none of this is actually what we want. Orcs, no. Probably output, right? Penis, penis? Undersell. Okay, uh, what can I do on my computer that would play a sound? Oh, I know. How about... No, that's not doing anything. We, we actually do want to record this, though. We definitely want to record what comes out of here so we can verify it on the fly. Headset microphone? No. Why can't I record my desktop? Cable output? This is just going to be Spotify, I think. Okay, that's nothing. Primary sound capture? All right, primary sound capture. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll hit record on this and we'll do this on the fly because there is something in this fun value event that we do want to see. Are we ready for it? I'm bringing it up. I can't see chat because I'm recording. Oh, no, it's not. It's, oh, it's recording my voice. God, that's so annoying. I hate this so much. If only there was like an easy way of recording it just voice, right? Ah, the fact that I do have the official Sans hoodie and usually have my hands in my pockets if I have them doesn't help the Sans allegations. Yeah, that is definitely not going to help, my dude. I don't want to bring up OBS as well. Okay, I'll, I'll try to figure this out. So, yep, minor recording channel, perfect. Voice mod, we don't want to record through that. Steam streaming, definitely not. Road, no. Maybe. What, there is no, like, I can't, why can't I record desktop on Audacity? That is so strange. Yeah, so this is obviously reading my voice, but I don't think it's actually reading the... But I hate Audacity. <laughs> there are so many, like, things that you could potentially do with Audacity, and they just don't work. Okay, I'll have to do it in post, which I don't want to do. We are here. We are here. Let's see what the relationship is. Okay, so we have the soundbite. I will go out of my way in post to see if that is, in fact, as the wiki claims, a sped up version of Gaster's theme. Because the, every single theory that the entire fandom is uh, accepting these days is exclusively relying on that being Gaster's theme. Theme. That is the only connection that the internet has. Uh, there's not really a, anything else that we can do in here, right? So, if you also consider that this is, again, cut content, then the theory crafting community has used cut content and then speculated from that cut content that that is WD Gaster and WD Gaster is, in fact, still alive. Right, we did it. Uh, we're going to use this telescope right here. If we can. Let's go ahead. Yes, I'd love to use the telescope. And now we've got a ring around our eyes. Now, I thought this was a bruise. I thought someone punched us in the face. But it turns out that's not actually the case whatsoever. Okay, so we've got that fun value event. The only ones we really want to see now are Gonakid and also the... Uh, what is it? Gonakid and... Uh, we don't want to be in here. The Gaster followers, which we are going to get because we are very specifically going out of our way to not kill anybody. We want to go down here, don't we? Because this is how we get through the area. We're not going to bother with Timmy or anything like that. We're just going to keep on going all the way through. Oh, go away. Go away, Sans. Okay, so we'll get rid of this. Bye-bye. We'll come up here. 
Go down here. I think this is the way through. Oh, great. We just got two flan. They both can be speared. Done. That was probably the easiest fight we've had so far. We got no money for it, but we did it regardless. Okay, so why do I always insist on coming up here? There's got to be a reason, right? Yes. This is progression. Excellent. Okay, so... Good. I mean, there's the whole fun value being 66 thing. I heard that in the code. Guess his stats are all 666 or something. Yeah, uh, like, we know he's evil. He mashed a bunch of monsters together to try and create the, um, the soul that was as big as a human's. And I've also got theories on that. I feel like it was so that he could sustain the gigantic barrier or at least increase its potency so humans couldn't get through it. I feel like that is the thing. Did you just go away, Sans, when Pepperos called you? Yes. Yes, I did. They're related. Sans can hear me. Sans is omniscient. Okay, good. We're uh, being attacked by Shiren, hiding in the corner, but somehow encounters you anyway. Okay, let's run away. Bye-bye. That's going to be an easy fight. Uh, we're going to go over here, and I think we'll push forward until we get to the... We're not going to worry about this whatsoever. We're going to push forward until we get to the Hotlands. I'm probably... Yeah, let's ignore the umbrellas for now. We're not going to worry too much about the annoying dog or anything like that inside of the annoying dog room. This guy's going to harass us. Hey, buddy. Oh, I just realized he's kind of like a little T-Rex, so his arms are just too small to hold things. I thought he was armless. It's not omniscience, just stalked. You don't know that. In fact, actually, we have direct evidence many, many times in this game of seeing Sans elevated above the level of gameplay that we are presented. He also has that giant machine. No, uh, go away. Go away. Don't follow me. Leave, child. I probably shouldn't be speaking to him like this on account of him uh, possibly dying really, really soon. Do we see him after the Goner Kid? Is that actually a thing? Maybe. Hard to say, though. Great, let's take an umbrella. <laughs> no, let's not. Okay, hoist me up, buddy old pal. Hoist me. Hoist me. Yes. Thank you. Now go away. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, good. So we got all this way. We're now kind of like in the dark area now, aren't we? So we've got full health. Perfect. No, this is the part where uh, Undyne throws the spears from beneath us this time. Which is actually a really, really easy uh, path to, to get through. Gotta be said. Okie dokie. Watch out. Watch out, child. There is a literal knight trying to uh, stab you with a bunch of spears from beneath. Yeah, this is simple. We've done this so many times that it's just... We know exactly what we can and can't get away with. Okay, good. Nice. If we get hit by one, that w that was our entire path block, by the way. If we get hit by one, I'll be very embarrassed. All right, good. Come all the way down here, because we don't really have a choice. Uh, let's go up here. Maybe we can, like, bait her into flicking them into a place where she would not want them to be. All right, what's down here? Is there anything down here? Oh, we actually got hit this time. All right, that's fine. Uh, we'll still continue onwards. Uh, they're getting a little bit faster, which I don't... I still don't really care about too much. Let's just not die. Okay, we've made it. This is actually the end. Good. Good. Okay, nothing through there. We gotta go down. Whoops, we got hit again. Let's not get hit by a spear. Excellent. That's what I like to see. Grand. And we'll keep on going forward. Perfect. Okay. Like, this is fun. The environmental uh, bullet hell here is really, really fun. Undyne Maidens is so easy. Yeah, it is really easy, isn't it? So we go back, we find Undyne, then she kind of like stamps on the bridge and it, it goes downwards. I think we're actually walking the plank here. Hello. How are you? I am a child. I am a yellow child. Better to be young yellow than old yellow, am I right? <laughs> All my traumatized uh, 90s kids will be sitting there thinking, oh, old yell, I forgot about that one. Are you okay? Here, get up. Pooper, huh? <laughs> That's our name. 
That's a nice name. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, I think this is Toriel. I think I think that's supposed to be Toriel. Maybe. Maybe it's Toriel. Hard to tell. <clears throat> Alright, let's do a save right here. Good. Occasionally, a piece of trash will flow through. Excellent. Nice. I am an endless cycle of garbage as well. We're all poopers, if you think about it. Not Toriel. It's, Az it's Asriel. Because? Yeah? What's your reasoning? Okay, so we're probably going to get harassed by the ghost, right? The ghost dummy. It's Asriel. Oh, right, yeah. It could be Asriel actually talking to us. I was thinking maybe it was like a flashback to when um, Kara came along. I don't think that was for us, necessarily. It's setting you home on neutral slash pacifist. Yeah, I'm probably just misremembering the uh, gameplay that I did. Go ahead and have a wee chat to him. Doesn't seem to be much for conversation. All right, apparently we're feeble. Yeah, we gotta like bait him into hitting himself now, right? Ah, oh, sucks to suck, little baby. Uh, we're gonna use the dummies because we can't actually attack or do anything about this. So we're just gonna mercy because it's the fastest way of getting through the attack cycles. Good, gonna slip through here, slip up. Good, and bada bing bada boom! Enjoy your death! Good, Mad Dummy is doing an armless dance. Excellent, that's what I like to see. Oh! <laughs> that was very close. Okay, we hit him a couple of times, excellent. Let's spare him again. Let's go ahead and try and fire some of these off over this way. Or not. That was an annoyingly easy one. Oh, damn it. Who's? Okay, good, we hit him a few times. He should be getting really, really mad now. Okay, let's hide in here. And let's also get him to fire some more little balls of garbage at himself. Okay, let's hide in this tiny little gap. And here, perfect. Nice. We hit him a couple of times again. I think we only have to really hit him once, right? It's not like... How the hell were we supposed to get around that one? I don't think it's, like, dependent on how many times we hit him. I, th I think we just got to hit him every attack set. All right, it's gotten us pitiful, which is uh, just not true whatsoever. What an actual jerk. What a dick. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, slip through here, and we'll slip up from here, and then we'll get him to hit himself again. I love this garbage swing jazz. This game is such a good soundtrack. Oh, it's so good. Okay, good. At least one of those is going to hit. Two hit. Nice. Perfect. Let's go ahead and do it again. Apparently, this is all futile. Oops. Got hit by that one. That's a real shame. Okay, that should hit him. At least once. Perfect. Nice. <sighs> that has real heard the humans. Ask for help. All right. All of the dummy ghosts are now fired, which is fine. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Now you'll see my true power. Rather lying on people that aren't garbage. Okay. We are now going to get him to try and hit himself with these missiles. Whoops. I think that hit me. But I think we also hit him. Okay, good. Go on, fire away. Fire up here. Wow, okay, we're slipping the missiles way too smoothly. Okay, good. And up here, good. Perfect. Got him a couple of times. And we got him another guy. Oh, nice. All four of those last ones hit him. Let's go ahead and just use a bandage. Sure, why not? Still kind of gooey. Gross. Mutts! Attack! Oops. Took that one straight to the face. That's absolutely fine. I don't mind whatsoever. And up we go. Nice. Hit him. Oops. Uh, none of those hit. Actually, all of those hit because he walked right into them. No way. These guys are even worse than the other guys. Who cares? Who cares? I don't need friends. I've got a knife. Woo. I don't even think that was supposed to hit us even if we, like, didn't move either. Okay, you can't hurt me and I can't hurt you. You'll be stuck fighting me forever. Uh, no, I highly doubt that this is actually going to be the case because I've got a game to go through. What? What the heck is this? Ah, acid rain. Oh, forget it. I'm out of here. The slide. The goddamn slide. Hi, spooky ghost. Okay, he's going to be a little bit upset because uh, he, he thinks that we were having fun. We weren't, actually. He was trying to kill us. If only ghosts understood the consequence of death. Well, I'm going to head home now. Uh, feel free to come if, if you want. No, I'm, I'm actually good. I'm good. You do you, buddy old pal. 
Spooky! Go away! Okay, we're gonna get save now. You feel a calming tranquility. You're filled with determination. Good, Pooper has finally saved. Uh, we're gonna progress onwards as fast as we can. This should be the shop, right? This is where we buy the uh, good iframes items. The clouded glasses, yes. And the torn notebook we're definitely gonna buy because they are kind of overpowered, actually. Now let's go ahead and equip them before we forget. Clouded glasses, yes. And also, torn notebook. This increases our iframe. So even if we get hit once, we're still going to be at a really, really good spot. Okay, what is through here? Literally nothing. There's no other Easter eggs on the waterfall, by the way. So we're not going to come back until we can kind of guarantee the Gonicut is actually going to spawn. All right, we'll come down here and we'll go this. No, we won't. we got to go this way, don't we? What are you doing, game? What crack are you smoking? My dude. All right, Timmy appears here to defeat you. That is a special enemy, isn't it? Let's go ahead and feed, no. Flex, no. Run, flee. I've got better to do. I love how they're literally forcing Timmy on me. Okay, I'm kind of lost actually. Or am I? No, I'm a little lost. There is one way was, oh no, I think we actually just solved the puzzle. No shot. What? <laughs> Whoa, okay. We actually did just solve the puzzle. First go. That's weird. Weird. Weird indeed. You're fine? Yeah, I thought so. It feels so good just solving a random puzzle without knowing what I'm doing. Please no more, Timmy. Okay, good. We, I'm going to spear one of them. And that one is... Smells like a bait shop. Eww. Imitate. You approach Mold Small. Suddenly. Ugh. Ah. It's like a, uh, I hate this. I actually hate what this thing is. Mold's big. Oh, mold small, mold's big. It gyrates reservedly. Okay, let's go ahead and unhug it. You don't hug mold big. It appreciates your respect of its boundaries. Good. It's doing some slime sounds as well, which we're not really interested in hearing, which is just gross. Okay, let's go ahead and mercy this guy to death. Done. Be nice, I like. My wife. All right, let's get all the way along here and hopefully we won't get attacked again. I do remember we have to go up and now I'm lost. Pose. Along here maybe, and then up, up from here. We need another one of those lamps. Okay, I think that was a dead end. What's up here? Lamp, thank you. Okay, we had almost finished it again, completely blind and in the dark. Okay. Let's push on through here. We should be very, very close to the... Okay, that doesn't function. We actually have to interact with the... Um... We have to interact with this. Behind you! Hi, Undyne! We have to go to the Hotlands next. I remember on my first playthrough, my brother and I pronounced Undyne as Undini. <laughs> yeah. Okay, seven human souls. She is going to uh, basically just lore dump onto us. Yucky! I care not. Okay, good. Here is the small child who's going to defend us. I still sometimes call her that just for laughs. I call Papyrus Papyrus because there was one guy who went so far out of his way to try and correct me on it. It's just become a running joke at this point. Like, I, I, can't, I can't undo it anymore. This guy insists, it's Papyrus. Uh, papy yeah, Papyrus. I was like, no. <laughs> Not on this channel, it ain't, buddy. Okay, we'll go all the way through here. This is where the kid will fall down. Now, I do have a theory about the Gona kid. I feel like it might be kind of like a kid in a parallel dimension who was who fell off of here. Or maybe Kara went through the exact same thing. Hard to tell. Really hard to tell. Okay, she's, he's going to give us a bunch of dialogue. Uh, okay, good. He's going to say something real mean. And now he feels bad. The shame has learned. Oh no, he's tripped and he's going to fall off the ledge right there. I'm going to save him, obviously. Be good. Piss off, Undyne. And away she goes. Bye-bye, strange lady.
I think Monster Kid is armless. I think he's armless too. He's not going to hurt a fly. Okay, let's go ahead and leave him. Bye-bye. He is a goner. <laughs> he is a goner, kid. Okay, so through here should be the entrance to the hotlands, right? Undyne is not interested in attacking us. Never mind, here she is. Seven. That's a good movie. What is in the box? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna flee from her. And then we're just gonna leave. Yes, she is interested in attacking. As in a lack of arms? Yeah, he doesn't have a single weapon on him. All right, let's go ahead and run away. That's it then. No more running away. Here I come. Okie dokie. Good luck with whatever you're gonna force me into. I'm gonna leave? Plead, let's just plead. As long as you're green, you can't escape. Unless you learn fate danger head on. You won't last a second against me. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've been here before, my dude. Damn, that one was really hard, actually. Uh, let's go ahead and plead again. Good, nothing happened. How about this? Okay, good, good. And now we want to go ahead and challenge her, I suppose. The bullets get faster. Nice. Good. And now we're going to plead again. Nothing happened. Okay, that sucks. I gotta really focus on that, by the way. That's kind of tricky, because I have to take my hand off the controller and, and use the keyboard. Challenge! I won't let you snatch away from me. Excellent. And now we want to go ahead and plead, I think. She remembers someone. Her attacks became a little less extreme. Enough warming up. Whoops. Ex oh, piss off. <laughs> That's why. All right, let's flee. Bye, Undyne. I'm leaving. You have a great time. <laughs> she is faster than us, though. You won't get away from me this time. Oh, really? What if I just... Oh, she's right, actually. Okay, fine. I'm pleading. Nothing happened. Fine. I'm doing you a favor. Incorrect. And now we run? No. Okay, let's go ahead and challenge. Good. And that's perfect. Good. And now we see if we can't run. We can't run. Let's go ahead and challenge again. Sure. Killing you now is an act of mercy. Oh, piss off. Seriously. And now we want to run. No, we want to plead, don't we? Do you remember someone? Ah, well. Bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, bong. Whoops. Got hit. Good thing we had so many iframes on that one. Now we want to possibly run. I think we want to run. Flee! Okay, we escaped. Good. I'm going to run up here, and I'm also going to get... Oh, piss off. I tried opening my menu to use a healing item, but it, w it wouldn't let me. It literally would not let me. Let's go ahead and just use a... Okay, we don't have any healing items, which is maybe not the best thing in the world. Let's go ahead and plead. Nothing happened. Okay, I'm going to try and plead as much as I possibly can. Good. We can't spear her. Let's plead again. You told Undyne you didn't want to fight. Okay, don't really give two hoots, to be honest. Good, 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 good. Done. Let's go ahead and see if we can run. No, we cannot. Let's go ahead and plead. Nothing happened. Okay, so we need to challenge her. Before we can, like, plead. Oh, damn it. We took that one hit. So we can't take another hit whatsoever. Okay. Challenge it is. The bullets get faster. This is exactly what we want to do. Good. Nice. And now we want to run, don't we? Or not. Maybe we could just not run away. Okay, good. Attacks are a little less extreme. Of course they are. Excellent. And now we want to run, don't we? Nope, can't run. For the love of God, seriously? What is up with this fight? Okay, attacks are a little less extreme. Oh, okay, we did. Literally didn't have a chance right there. Ah. I love this game so much. It reminds me, not the hands, just hands. Unnecessary the. Not hands. You know how much I care about typing grammar and stuff? Skedaddle. 
You can heal here. Something weird is that I usually hardly chat in all live streams. You don't need to challenge her. You can only run when you're red. Oh, I see. That makes him Pooper. Stay determined. <laughs> don't worry. Pooper is going to squeeze out the next one. It's interesting that you uh, comment on my one, on my streams here. I mean, it, it's, it's not like surprising because I'm a pretty engaging kind of guy, but at the same time, pretty cool. Let's actually go. How far back are we? No, that's Toriel's phone. Pooper. Toy knife, old tutu. Jesus, we are so far back. Oh my god. Why isn't there a closer save point? That doesn't make any sense. Why, why do we have to go through this entire region just to fight Undyne right at the end? That's so rough. Okay, we'll equip all of these um, iframes things. Excellent, done. Now let's go ahead and go through these. Challenging just makes attacks faster. Yeah, I figured that one out. There is a save right at Undyne's fight. Why didn't we find it? We spawned so far back. Are you sure? Okay, we're going to have to go through this entire thing again blind. Uh, was it down? Yep. And then we want to go this way. No, we want to go up. Okay, good. I found something. I'm going to go all the way up here. Go around a little bit. Okay, we're being attacked. Timmy is here to defeat us. I fled. You, I've got better to do. That's a, what a, what an alpha move. What an actual alpha move. That is so based. Could you imagine? Somebody challenges you to a fight and you literally just say, sorry, I've got better things to do and then leave. That's like jujitsu. That's how you beat people with jujitsu. You walk into Mold Small. Okay, let's go ahead and mercy that first one. That other one's going to go really, really big, I think. Let's go ahead and flirt with it. Okay, it's big now. Ah! Oh, 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 we got hit. Damn it. Okay, need some distance. Let's go ahead and unhug him. Good. Slime sounds. Gross. I don't want to hear any slime sounds in any game ever. I know what they mean. Okay, we'll spare him now. Good done. Oh, oh, no. I was not on the screen. Oh, where are we? We are so blind. Here we go. Up here. Oh, I actually... No, never mind. I see the path. How embarrassing. I probably didn't even need to touch that lamp, to be quite honest. All right, we made it. We made it! Base emoji lookalike. All right, so this is where she harasses us, right? Behind you. Yes, yes. I love how we also have to sit through this cutscene again. That's my favorite thing in the world. Dang, even I have some trouble navigating that room when it's dark. I got really good eyes, but I also have a giant ring light right in my face, so I look all pretty. It, it means I don't have to put on makeup. Hi there, Five Host. How are we doing today? We're going back through Undertale, and we're looking for all the fun value events. Well, at least all the relevant ones to uh, kind of like th theory crafting. We already found the mystery man, and we do have the sound bite that plays, which apparently is the Gaster's theme, but sped up. So I'm going to look at that in post. I'm going to edit it so that I can slow it down and compare it to Gaster's actual theme, which we've already found in the sound test room. And then we're going to see whether or not um, every single theory in this game so far, across the, nine, the whole nine years that it's been around, is actually valid. Okay, this guy's just going to harass us a little bit, right? Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. Everybody say bye-bye to the armless idiot. I'm actually spaghettini, like spaghetti, but thinner. That's just noodles. Okay, I'm getting it. I'm claiming it, Undyne. You go find your own kid to rescue. I don't even like this one. You can have it after I'm done. Yes, bye-bye, armless idiot. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. Leave me alone. Literally, just bugger off. Faster, please. I don't like that kid. Honestly, he's annoying. He's really annoying and he harasses us. Wookie. It's not just noodles. <laughs> what is it, vermicelli? Yeah, there was no save point. 
How is he holding? If he's doing that with his teeth? Yeah, no, he was he was chewing on the edge of the cliff. Okay, good. So we're right at the foot of the core. We could probably kill Undyne. I don't think she's tied to any of the fun value events whatsoever in the game at all. Okay, good. Wow! Jesus, lady, dump your exposition elsewhere. Good grief! Oh, I see. It was right behind us. Okay, so that's only there when we uh, kind of like j are just walking up there. And I keep thinking that she's uh, going to kind of like attack us immediately. Whoops. As long as you're green, you can't escape. Okay, that makes sense. That does make sense. Okay. Ah! Too hard. Way too hard. Okay, we'll try and spare it. How about this? Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Excellent. But yes, we've dreamed of a something. I care not what you dream about, lady. I just want to go find some Easter eggs. Mercy time. And now sunlight is just within our reach. Bing bop. Bip, bap, bop. Bip, bap, bap, bop. Bip, bip, bop. Bip, bip. Excellent. Come on, swipe your spear. What is wrong with you, lady? Please. Yes. Okay, now we can leave. I'm gapping it. We're leaving. We're going. We're leaving. We're out. Bye, Undyne. Oh, she's actually aimbotting us. Okay, fine. You won't get away from me this time. Incorrect. Let's agree to disagree. Okay, good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go ahead and do an act. Let's remind her of somebody. Nothing happened. Okay. No humans ever made it past something. Excellent. Done. Let's go ahead and do another. Plead, I suppose. Nothing happened. Fine. Oh! Oh, damn it. This is so fast. Okay, let's go ahead and mercy her. Stop being so damn resilient. Muck and mech. Good. Whoa. Good. Excellent. So now we are going to flee. Bye-bye. Bye, fish lady. And she closed the gap real fast. So we just have to survive a little bit longer. We can take about three hits, I think. Okay. Let's go ahead and go back to act. Racism. What the hell? What are you guys talking about? How is he holding? He's doing it with his teeth. <laughs> He's speaking. He's using ventriloquism. That's that's how he was. Uh, that's how he was attached to the cliff. Okay, undying attacks. That's lovely. I don't particularly care. Let's go ahead and just like mercy. It's the fastest way through. Good, 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 good. Easy clap. Mercy again. Excellent. Easy, 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 easy. A little bit harder and easy. Good. Oh, spare her again. Okay, bugger off now. Whoa! Ah, uh, we took one of the hits, which is a little bit of a shame. We can still take another two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Whoa! 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 <laughs> and we'll mercy her once more. This should be it, right? Uh, no, she's not swiping us whatsoever. All right, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, we took one. Okay, she's not swiping us whatsoever. Ha ha. Okay, good. Oh, that one was actually kind of clutch. We got three health left and we have no healing. Okay, we're dead again. We're going to go buy some healing because we uh, don't have a choice but to spawn all the way back. Oh. Actually, I just realized just how far back we have uh, spawned, and it's it's kind of killing me. <laughs> oh, I'm not filled with determination at this point. Because when it comes down to it, right, this game actually is so slow after you've beaten it a couple of times. You have to sit through all of these cutscenes. Uh, they get to be a real pain in the ass. All right, let's use these cloud of glasses. Uh, good, and we'll also use the torn notebook. The thing that I don't like about this area is that it's so dark. You have to go to the Timmy area, right? It's, it's basically forced. Does anybody else ever just talk with their teeth closed or am I weird? 
Uh, it's a, it's a little bit weird. I know that uh, Mary Shaw used to talk with her teeth closed pretty frequently. But we're the steer of Mary Shaw. She had no children, only claws. All right, uh, come all the way over here. We want to go upwards next, don't we? And then all the way this way, and done. There is actually no way of seeing uh, the background in this zone, by the way. Uh, uh, she's playing Snake. I'll pose. <laughs> Great. Okay, we took a hit. That's awesome. I don't even want to fight this thing. Be gone, bot. Be gone. You've got better to do. I do have better to do. All right, that's half of our health gone. Awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and just dip straight down. Dodged up, dick, di di yeah, we're gonna dick as well. We're gonna dick, dive, and dodge. Good, we'll come up through here. We're being attacked by Mold Small. Great, spear that first one. And, uh, well, well, I'm just gonna flee from it, honestly. We don't care whatsoever. Not interested. Now, I'm gonna use my eagle vision to get us all the way to the end of here. We're not even gonna bother. We're not even gonna bother going all the way to the... We're not gonna touch the lamp. We're just gonna go through. There we go, done. Like people just see me gnashing teeth. It's hard to do, actually. Ventriloquism is a, a real... It's, it's cringe. It's a real cringe thing to do, but it's also very hard to do, like tap dancing. That's also equal measure uh, difficult and cringe. Okay. I love sitting through this cutscene, too. That's great. It's a shame we can't just, like, skip it and just go straight up the grass. We don't actually need to see this cutscene at all. I've been doing it less frequently, though. Can't make a good B or P sound. Well, it's going to be hard to buy petrol then, isn't it? Okay, good. Bye-bye, child. Don't slip and fall. Okay, beautiful. Right, we'll come up this grass right here. Ignoring all of these flowers, because we've already heard the exposition. We're only here for Easter eggs. We've already seen that lore. Okay, here is where we get that really annoying kid falling off the ledge after he literally insults us. Understand game gameplay? Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. This is literally how I am playing the game as well. It's good, huh? It's good, huh? It'd be nice if there was like a setting or something in the menu that just like skipped unnecessary cutscenes. Like even just keeping the boss introductions alone would be okay. I wouldn't mind that. But then again, like, the, I think the Sans fight is just really hard to do because there's so much time in between the fights that you just lose any, um, any, oh, okay, I'll go do it. Don't worry, I'm dying. I'll do it, you slow-ass fish. Jesus. Has anybody had ketchup chips? Yes. I'm from New Zealand. That's half of our diet. Unless it's a chip filled with ketchup, in which case that is absolutely revolting. Sans fight is easy. What do you mean? Uh, I am really struggling with him. He's the wall. He is literally the wall of the entire game. There's not enough, like, you don't have enough time to practice the fight in between. Like, uh, it's really annoying that the save point is not right in front of Sans. The save point is a good, like, 10 seconds walk away from Sans. And sometimes when you're uh, trying to do the fight, the fight is less than 10 seconds. So you can, act, you can guarantee that it'll be like twice as long to get back to the fight. Hi bye, bye. Hello there, Gunner. Bye, Gunner. Kura is really annoying. Who's KR? Okay, so... We're going to backtrack and we're going to use this save point right here. The wind is howling. You're filled with determination. Awesome. Uh, we don't have any save uh, 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 items. We don't have any items. We have no items, we have no healing or anything like that. We just have to outlast this lady right here. Let's go ahead and mercy her. Good, 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 good! Stop dumping! Stop dumping tutorial! I've already fought you, like, four games! <laughs> Please just give me the option to turn this off! Oh! I should not be using my uh, controller for this fight, by the way. I should actually be using the keyboard because the dead zone of my controller 
flicks into the wrong direction sometimes and costs us health. Okay. Okay. Done, and now we want to get a, another mercy in there. Bing, 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 bing. Excellent. Swipe me. I think she's going to swipe me after this one, right? Good. And she swiped me. And we're gapping it. We're leaving. Bye-bye. Later, fish lady. You have a great rest of your life. Oh, damn. We really did close that gap. Okay, awesome. We're green again, unfortunately. Kara is the poison damage thing in the Sands fight. Yeah, that is really annoying, the karma stuff. Absolutely. Did you save this time? Yeah, I saved. I saved. I'm articulating my thoughts so that you can see me go insane in real time. Okay, good. We should get swiped in this next one right here. Oh! Yeah, good! Oh, damn it, we took it anyway. <sighs> Undyne holds her fist in front of her and shakes it. I care not. Alright, let's go. We're off. Bye, Undyne! Fish lady. Fish ass lady. When the copyright hits hard. Oh my god, every single one of my videos, though. Apparently, I've escaped for the last time. Uh, I don't believe her whatsoever. Oh, that one was a tricky one. All right. She suplexes a huge boulder. Watch me here. Good, good. Good, good, good. Good, good. Good. Nailed it. Let's go ahead and spear her. Excellent. Bing, 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 bing. Bing, 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 bing. Oh, we got it as well. Nice. Let's go ahead and spear her once more. We have so much more health now that we're actually saving, by the way. Oh, my God. Right now. Oh, damn it, we took one of those. That's unfortunate. Let's go ahead and spear. Oops. Missed one. Okay. Ha ha. Ha ha, she says. Oh, that was timing right there. Okay, good. And we'll spear once more. She's calling us a little brat, which isn't exactly fair. I'm going to use iframes to just brute force this one. Ah! Good. Okay, so we've done it. We're off with one health to spear. I just, I literally just face tanked, by the way. Oh my God, I hate Pepperas so much. That is so annoying. That is so goddamn annoying. Okay, so we need four phases. I'm fleeing, bye. She's probably getting really tired by this point as well. Poor lady. Hey Sans, I'll catch you later. Bye-bye! Alright, she's gonna come in here. She's massively dehydrated. She's gonna fall on the bridge. I'm actually going to give her a glass of water. Nobody hates Papyrus? Well, I don't think hate is the right word, but I, I don't like him. <laughs> As a character, I, I don't like him whatsoever. Alright, good. Let's pour that on her face. Are we gonna get into a fight? Are we, uh, are we good? We good, fish lady? What do you mean, how? He's obnoxious for the sake of being obnoxious. This is his entire purpose. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and we are going to check out the fun values again because we're really, really close to a couple of them. Let's see where they spawn. So we've got the three guest followers here. Which apparently also debunked my theory, but uh, I call Cap. I'm calling Cap on that one. We're going to look at it for ourselves. Uh, sound test room, we've seen that one. Guest of followers. Right, so... Three monsters may appear near the Hotland elevators if the fun value is between 61 and 63, one for each of the followers. Two of them have a 50% chance of appearing, and the one resembling What's Dingle has a 20% chance. They talk about WD Gaster, the royal scientist before Elfies, and his fate. Right, okay, so, let's continue on to, 
Yeah, so they reset the fun value to zero after they do their event so that you don't see them again. I don't know which room this is, though. I, li I have no idea which room this actually is. It could be the elevators. Could be the elevators. So as soon as we unlock the elevators, we should be in a really, really good spot to uh, just continue on with that. Oops. Sorry, to bring my streaming software back up. Now, I don't know if we have to beat Metaton entirely to kind of trigger these in the first place. Papyrus is the best character. I'm just joking around. I respect people's ab opinions. That's smart. That's smart. Yeah, I saw that message as well. It was recorded. It was recorded for the posterity of YouTube. No, that would be a prostate. Posterity. You haven't? Be gone! I need access to the lift. Be gone! I love how his social anxiety actually also inconveniences us every single chance that it, it comes out. Is that the point? Is the point of this game to show us that Alphys' social anxiety is just annoying? Okay, we've got Megaton. Here he is. Mega buns. Yeah, I thought that electric clap was in the uh, was in the song for a second there. Okay, good. So let's mercy him. Let's start with an easy one. What's the price for answering correctly? Uh, that would probably be more questions. Right. Sounds like you get it. Great. All right. Let's go ahead and continue on one onwards. What's the king's full name? That is Asgore Dreamer, of course. Done. The quiz show continues. Enough about you, let's talk about me. What are robots made out of? Uh, probably metal and magic. It's certainly not snips and snails. Here's another easy one. Good. Two trains, uh, the answer is obviously D. Like, come on. How could you not know that? It's so obvious. Don't count your victory. How many flies are in this jar? Oh, uh, it's, it's a pretty obvious A. We all know it. Duh. You guys can't count 58 flies? What monster is this? That is Metaton. I'm so flattered you remembered. It's Metaton wearing a t-shirt. Which ghost would you... Would you smooch a ghost? Yes. Oh, right, because Metaton is a ghost wearing the old human killing robot. That's funny, act. I, that, I, I never noticed that touch. How many letters in the name Metaton? Obviously, that 46. Come on. Everyone knows that. Time to break out the big guns. In the dating simulation, uh, Mew Mew. Alphys, calm down. The grown ups are playing a game, the grown ups are fighting life and death. <sighs> yeah, duh. <gasps> Elphis, Elphis, Elphis. Okay, who does Dr. Elphis have a crush on? Well, that is clearly the human. <laughs> yeah, she crawls and screams. She names programming variables after her. It's weird that the, the developer Toby Fox literally mentions programming variables right there. And yet people are insisting to me that the fun value typo, it, it, it's a typo. He knows the variables. How, why would he make a typo on that when it's uh, such a, a common thing to do in small game development? Okay. Okay, go away. Go away, Metaton. No one likes you here. Especially not humans. Lest we forget that robot was purpose-built to execute humans and harvest their soul. Huh. Is this an below the story? I accidentally put a space there. Okay, thanks for the phone number. Look, I'm actually just really quickly going to make sure that we can't delete her number as soon as she gives it to us. Can we block her? If not, why would that even be a thing? Okay, that's not a bathroom. We all know that's not a bathroom. Uh, where is it? Cell phone. Can we block? No, we can't block him. Fine. Okay, so, oh, great. We're getting harassed already. We want an elevator, don't we? 
We want any old elevator. Jesus, man, piss off. Okay, we're going to have to solve a couple of puzzles before we get access to an elevator, which is going to give us access to the... Uh, what are they called? Uh, the fun value events. So we'll come up here. Go away! Jesus! Don't drag me into your crippling social media addiction. What is wrong with you? Okay, and up here we've got a save point. The whooshing sound of steam and cogs that fills with determination. Now, I think that this is where... I think this is where Gaster died. Okay, great. Aeroplane is coming after us. I'm off. Okie dokie. I just have to dodge sideways. That's fine. I'm, d I'm fleeing now. Okay, no. Not fleeing, apparently. Sure. I don't mind not fleeing whatsoever. Uh, let's go ahead and flee. Finally! Good God. Alright, we'll jump over here because we don't have a choice. And over here because we also don't have a choice. Now, there is a weapon around. Go away! Jesus! We do have the ability to get ourselves a... Here it is. Probably the most powerful weapon in the game. So if we do decide to kill anybody... We do have a great weapon, but I think the iframes are probably going to be more important from here on out, to be honest. Just saying. You'll have to get Undertale Red and Yellow for that. Blocking Alphas. Oh my god, if the indie developers who made fan games thought it was a good feature, why wouldn't Toby Fox? Well, it's not blocking her, but it's the same thing. Okay. Go away! Jesus! I want to play the game! Leave me alone, Elphus. Okay, good. Oh, damn it. We got hit. Okay, that was really unlucky, actually. I'll wait for the second one to pass, and then I'll just walk in front of them. Conveniently, they are going as fast as we are. Yep, we're pressing that switch, of course. Done. Now. Burnt pan toy knife uses stick to take your life. Tough glove ballet shoes. Epic fight like front page news. Is that a Metaton quote? Okay, we can't go north yet, but we did anyway. Great, I timed that really badly. We want to go over here so we can solve a puzzle. I'll kill Elphus. Oh, that would actually be really handy. If you could kill Elphus, I'd, I'd really greatly appreciate it. Okay, let's get rid of these uh, little dingle dangles that are in the way. Uh, we need... Awesome, done. That's one game finished. 100%. I also don't remember how to do them. Every single time I solve that puzzle, I'm solving it for the first time. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Gabe. And here we go. All right, we'll come over here. We'll open up this one. And this one is significantly easier than the last one, actually. Huh. What, what the hell is that cat in the corner? Hello? Wow, you solved it. I'm impressed. You must be a total nerd. Okay. I never noticed that cat before. Okay, very good. No, the thing I said was a line from an animated parody of Bad Romance called Story of Undertale. Right, I like Bad Romance. For the love of God, stop harassing me. I feel like what she's doing is a toxic red flag trait called uh, love bombing. Which is just nasty. She shouldn't be love bombing us whatsoever. It's a disgusting trait. Never seen that? Oh yeah, never seen the cat, right? I've never seen the cat before. I love how every time he claps, it's actually an electric clap. Oh right, sure. Yeah, I'll come over here. Oh, who's? All right, let's get all these ingredients. You found the sugar, thank you. You found the milk, great, let's drink it. You found the eggs, let's break them. They're bum nuts. They're not eggs, they're bum nuts. Human flesh. Can you guys believe someone was trying to tell me on the genocide route that Metaton's purpose was not to collect human souls? We have several lines of dialogue that say so. Good grief. I, I don't know how you could actually interpret it as such. Like, just think that he's a ghost in a suit. It's the suit that's important. It was made to kill humans and siphon their souls off into the, the containers. Triple dot. Man, that's disturbing. Wait, uh, wasn't wasn't I that person? Spigatini? 
It may have been. Were you trying to convince me that Metaton was uh, uh, just like a, a robot who was there for fun and not a robot whose sole purpose was to be established to kill humans? Oh, we've got the whole screen. I thought that we were only... That changes everything! Oh my god! I thought we only had like one side of the tower to go on. Oh, that's so much easier now. Oh, that's so much easier. We still, <laughs> we're still whiffing a couple of the shots though, unfortunately. Okay, we don't want to be hit by these. Go ahead and slip one. We let's not slip through that one actually. Let's let's face tank a couple of these hits voluntarily, of course. All right, good. Uh, whoa, that one was way too far away. Couldn't slip through that one. These are easy enough. Good. We're actually pretty close to the end. Yep, got hit a couple of times there. That's unfortunate. I like this. This is relaxing. Okay, we just got hit by some peepees. That's not amazing. Come on, through, slip through them. Good. Yep, slip those as well. Up, oh, there's a lot of air bum nuts. I thought my controller died, but it turns out it did not. Excellent. We got the beans. I've no hit this before. I probably would have no hit this by now if I'd known that we had the entire screen to work with. That was you. Oh my dude, my dude, you could not have been more wrong. All right, here we go. We've got uh, the core right in front of us right here. Whoops, I'm saving again, apparently. And right in front of it, just down here, we see Gaster's dead body bobbing around in the lava. Great. Awesome, piss off. <laughs> Thank you for the exposition, now piss off. Awesome. So, uh, this, I don't know which of the elevator rooms is going to be the one that we actually want. But we should probably just try roll for this one, right? We'll try for the fun values of the Gaster followers right in front of us here. Let's do it. I'm saving. And now we're gonna ult here for. Now we're gonna. Did anybody else just see the mystery man icon right behind the core? I'm pretty sure that that means Gaster was in the core. So his body bobbing around, that was actually a thing. Oh my god! I was right all along and the entire fandom of nine years was incorrect! Good god! I see where you're coming from, and it has a lot of evidence, but the stuff that's probably from the other humans is all in the different areas, and I don't know how Metaton would have gotten everywhere, you know? Well, he can move around. He's got that wheel that he just moves around on. And the humans are all in the different areas. Yeah, but they were all brought to Asgore. All of the humans were individually brought to Asgore for execution. That is the story of the whole game. I, I don't know how you can see literally anything else. But what about the ruins? Metaton can go to the ruins! He can go to the ruins! He's not, he, he's not invalid. He's got a jetpack. We just watched him fly. He can go to the ruins. He can go anywhere in the game. Also, uh, Toriel uh, goes to the ruins. She is like the first line of defense, uh, to my understanding. If, if a human goes past the ruins, then you can assume that they're dangerous, and thus Asgore takes care of them rather than Toriel. So I'm after the fun value events right here, the Gaster of followers, that's what we're after. So we want to set it to 61 this time, 61. And we want to save that. And this one is also going to be 61. Great. Now let's fire the game back up. Nobody can get in the ruins. What do you mean nobody can get in the ruins? How do you think Toriel got in the ruins? She was the queen at the castle with Asgore, and then she went to the ruins. Where, where the hell are you getting all of this information from? Because it's all very misinformed, my dude. But Toriel is trying to save the humans from Asgore. I just said that! Toriel is the first line of defense. She is the pacifist line of defense. And then when the humans, if the humans bypass her, because obviously they want to go home, Asgore takes care of them. Asgore had Gaster, Asgore had Sans, Asgore had Elphis, Asgore was the one who signed off on all of those creatures in the lab being fused together to create the, the powerful souls. Uh, what else was there? Uh, Asgore had Metaton specifically built to kill humans and siphon their souls into a container so that it didn't go into a monster. Yeah, but she locked it up. No, she didn't. Come on, anyone can go in there. They literally just have to knock on the door. Now, there is a percentage chance of us actually getting the Gaster followers, so we might have to roll this a couple of times. Have we got it? No. 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 
Oh, we still have to save afterwards too, don't we? Yeah, if you think a lock is going to stop a flying robot from landing in an area, you've got another thing coming, my dude. It's It, it, it can't be that simple. Like, anyone can get through a door with the right accreditations. All right, nothing. 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 Where did the, where do these guys spawn? Because I'm pretty sure that it's got to be at a specific elevator platform, right? I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring it up. Let's get a new tab, and I'll let you guys see what I'm doing here. Yes to followers. Okay. Hidden away in the... What? In the first four worlds? What? Give the player information on the lost worlds? What the hell are they talking about? What the hell is Don't Forget? Weird. Okay. Um, so, someone must have uh, given us all a, a tip. Has somebody supposed to go through a door? Again, that's just a tunnel. That's how Toriel got in there, and that's how Toriel is keeping the humans from the rest of the place. So that lock will stop children who fell down there, or humans who fell down there. The lock is not going to stop a flying robot, for the love of God, my dude. Okay, um, multiple factors at play when it comes to the guest followers. First, you have to get the correct fun value. Yep, we got that one. We definitely have that guaranteed. Uh, and somebody is now pointing out which... You know, most people don't point out that you have to do both of these game files. I had to figure that one all myself. All the guest followers require a specific number to be seen, so there's like a 1% chance, chance to even see them. If you do get the correct number, you still have to get to Hotland in order to find them. Yep, follower 1 and 3 have a 20% chance of spawning if your fun value is correct, and 2 has a 50% chance of spawning, but you have to have low love, which we do. That's why we were playing the game as a pacifist. Gaster is the most rare to spawn. No, we already saw him. Also, it's not Gaster. We, why are people saying it's Gaster? Why are people literally pulling all of this out of their ass? Doesn't make any sense to me. I thought Toby Fox patched the fun value editing. Uh, no. He didn't, yeah. It's known for its save files being easy to modify. So, we, it's any... We go, it's, it's literally any elevator shaft right here, right? So, we probably just have to reboot the game a few times. That's for a fan game? Yeah, I was going to say. It's, it's so weird. It's so weird that everybody insists that Gaster is actually alive. Like, the, we haven't seen any evidence for it so far, whatsoever. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save. Because this, this whole playthrough is all about saves. Good. And when I alt F4, if we see Gaster... I mean, that's the core, right? I theorized, I theorized that this little blob right here... Is Gaster. I, that's what I think. We. This has been my theory since the first goddamn playthrough, right? So if I alt F4 and we see the mystery man. Oh, I saw something else that time. No, no, they're pulling it out of the game theory's ass. Right, okay. They're just trusting people. Okay, so fun value is zero. It restarted. Great. Let's go ahead and see what that fun value was. We're probably going to have to punch this in every single time, if that's the case. So this one is. We want. This one to be 61. And we'll save that. I think it might reset when we actually get into the uh, area where they could potentially spawn. Because we just don't know. Let's go ahead and fire the game back up. Uh, now, this is going to be what we're doing for probably another half an hour. I'm not going to lie. So, Mystery Man is Gaster. Well, I mean, that would be everybody else's logic. That's the thing. It, it, by everybody else's logic, Mystery Man is not Gaster if Mystery Man is popping up every time we close at the core right here. This is what I think Gaster is right here. This is, this is Gaster, that tiny little pixel. Okay, so we got nothing in this. Let's go ahead and check the uh, text files. Uh, fun. Yeah, it resets to zero. That's super strange. All right, let's change that back again, and we will reboot the game. I think they, they've got a 20% chance to spawn, so I'm not actually... All that surprised. Let's be fair. All right, let's go through back to here. Now, I feel like um, when you ult F4 the game, there's kind of like a scene playing in the background that is subsurface layer uh, in terms of what you see on the on the game itself. Because we've seen a bunch of things every time we ult F4 the game. We've seen dialogue. We've seen um, weird images. We've seen sprites. Because we've ult F4 a bunch of different times. All right, no one in here. Ult F4, and we can see that the fun value is six when we update this. Fun value is zero. Awesome. 
Uh, let's go ahead and change that to 61. And this one right here has probably also changed. There we go. Save both of those. Now we'll fire back the game. Hello there, Cal the Animator. How are we? I misread my last thing. Is, so game theory is Gaster. And man, that is a theory. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I d I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced about all the Gaster stuff, uh, to be quite frank. Okay, we're still rolling for the gas to follow a one. Let's keep on going on. This is a long walkway. Nope, still nothing. Uh, we'll check the text files and fun is at... Uh, why does the fun value keep moving around the lines? It's so weird. That is so weird. The fun value was at line eight before and now it's at line 13. What the hell is going on here? Okay, remember that the fun value is at uh, line 18 and we've marked it as 61, okay? You sure this is the right elevator? Absolutely not. Absolute, I am absolutely not sure whatsoever. That is why we're trying to try, uh, like figure them out ourselves. All right. It was at line 13. The value was 61. If I go back into the desktop, right? So this one hasn't updated line 36, which is the fun value for the uh, initialization file. No file zero, the save file. If we go in here, fun has moved to line eight. Again, it was 13 and now it's line eight. That is so weird. I've never seen something do that before. Okay, what if we just like go back, save, and then go back into the elevator. Actually, it's going to take way too long. Alt F4. Has this changed? No. The value is still 61. Still 61 here. Set the fun value to 1,000. What? Why the hell would I do that? <laughs> that does nothing. It doesn't do anything. Uh, let's go ahead and bring the game back up. I keep on losing my Steam because it's never where I pin it to on my, on my desktop. I am back. Hello there, Gunner. Guten Tag. Uh, guten Abend. Wow. Wie geht's dein Tag? Main mention. Wie geht's dein Tag? Uh, we're rolling currently for the, the Gaster's followers. And I'm still hesitant that they do anything. But now that we keep like, we keep fiddling with trying to roll them and spawn them. Uh, this one has a 20% chance to spawn. Every time we do that, we go back into here. Here, fun value at line eight. It is 61. This is how you get the uh, first guest to follower to spawn. When we update this, it switches to line 13 and then resets to zero. That's so weird. That is so, so weird. Okay, let's save that. This one's not updating at all. The uh, file's zero, so that's good. Go ahead and fire Undertale up again. Because it's a greeting, Mr. Spaghetti. Yeah, it is a, it is a greeting. All right. I don't even know why I'm blowing up the screen every single time that we're firing the game up. Maybe just so that you guys can see my amazement when I find him as well. Ooh! That is, again, like, just like the Gaster's theme and the sound test room, just about everything that we've, the mystery man. This is uncharacteristically creepy, which is why I keep insisting that this is cut content. Uh, I'll get on the other side of the screen so that you guys can actually see what the hell is going on here. All right, we've got him. Elphus might work faster, but the old royal so scientist, Dr. W.D. Gaster, one day he vanished without a trace. They say he shattered across time and space. Haha, <laughs> how can I say so without fear? I'm holding a piece of him right here. All of that rhymed. All of that rhymed. And he's gone. He said, I'm holding a piece of him right here. So that confirms Gaster is dead because it was a head he was holding. He was literally holding a head. It's, Gaster. it's not Gaster. Shattered through time and space. Now, see, here's another thing that I, my theory is leaning into. With the giant cloud, right, the barrier, when humans fall through it, it's because their soul is more powerful than the barrier. This leads me to believe that the monsters put the barrier there so that the monsters didn't go out and just get absolutely slaughtered by these humans. I feel like 
WD Gaster's entire purpose was to create these blended together monsters in the lab with Alphys. As that guy just said, they work together. And the purpose of those blended together monsters was to blend together enough monsters to get a soul that was powerful enough to sustain the barrier so humans couldn't come through it. Simple, right? He's drug shattered. A human soul isn't more powerful than the barrier. It has to be because we fell down there and we only have a human soul. We are literally a child. Where are you getting this information from? Again, like you're pulling more information out of your ass that I would feel would be um, more in fanfic than the physical evidence than we are literally looking at as we play this game. We're not, we're not finding anything new. Didn't they use multiple souls to break it? No, the barrier is still there. It's still there. We got the intro of the game. Well, given that was when Carol was alive. I think the whole purpose of the core is to kind of like siphon those souls up and then sustain that barrier. And all of the kind of like, oh, get enough human souls and you'll be able to break the barrier. That's just propaganda by Asgore because he's going to find, oh, it's, it's not enough souls. Seven souls, it's not enough souls to break the barrier. Eight souls, it's not enough to break the barrier. Oh, 69 souls, it's not enough to break the barrier. 420 souls, it's a lot of souls, but it's not enough to break the barrier. And he's just kind of like, as king, lying to the entire population to keep them from the world of humans because he remembers the war and he remembers what the humans are capable of. The power of at least a human and a monster soul to pass it. Then how do individual humans pass it? There you go. <laughs> and cite your source! Cite your source! <laughs> Stop perishing Twitter! Just actually cite your source and we can look at it together, for God's sake. My dude! Okay, so that is one of the followers done and dusted. We're going to go for 62 next and I'm going to save as well. To leave it? Again. We don't know that because we don't see it. We don't actually see that that's what is required to break the barrier. We just don't see that. With any of the endings, we still haven't seen it. I still haven't, fi granted, I still haven't finished the genocide run, but we still haven't seen the barrier get broken. Elphys is my source, so reliable. My dude. My dude. Elphys is literally the in-game Twitter. Elphys is about as reliable as a waterproof tea bag. He's about as reliable as tits on a bull. He's as reliable as an ejector seat on a helicopter. You know, all of those things. He's as reliable as all of those. Okay, so we're gonna go to fun value two now. And we're gonna go for 62 because that is the next entry. Uh, line 35 has reset to zero. That's how we know we definitely got it. 62, let's save and we'll save on this one. This guy has a higher chance to spawn though. So we're gonna spend less time um, the barrier gets broken in true pacifist by Azrael. Yeah, how many souls does Azrael have? <laughs> how many souls does he have? Because I don't think it's got anything to do with uh, the humans whatsoever. In the intro story, we saw that, oh, the, the, the seven of the most powerful human mages, they, they created the barrier. How could they do that if the humans can't conjure magic for a start? Um, you would need a lot of magic to sustain a barrier of that size to keep out all of humanity. And to sustain that barrier, you probably need to siphon souls, right? That's probably the source of the magic. Is six souls and every monster soul? So it takes six souls and every monster soul to break the barrier. That's what we know. That sounds to me like the core. That, that sounds to me like the core is siphoning all of that up. The barrier is broken by whatever the hell is plot convenient. Yeah, but we're, this, is, this game has had so much love and care put into it, right? Toby Fox is a diligent and very clever creator. We can't fault him on that. What we are seeing right here is a story that is hidden beneath the surface and the entire internet has gaslit the entire fandom into believing things that are just provably false with how long have I been playing this? Three hours. Three hours, and I have shown that a lot of this is just provably false. It is said that the power of almost every monster soul is equivalent to the power of one human soul. Yeah, but who says that? Are they a reliable narrator? That's the thing. Also, again, with the intro cutscene, we can't, we can't rely on that as accurate information because not only do we not see any faces other than Kara's and Toriel's, like, shape, we don't see any other faces. So for all I know, the intro scene is a story that was told to Kara. We know it was Kara because Kara has a single stripe on her shirt, whereas here, 
We are playing as Frisk, who has two stripes on her shirt. Is, I think the waterfall signs were something. Yeah, it's just propaganda. My dude, you're just reading propaganda. Okay, we didn't roll it, and it's probably going to... Oh. I didn't reset the... Uh... Oh, that's weird. I didn't actually reset these uh, text files this time. That's very strange. Wonder why. Strange. I mean, most people don't get all of the lore in their game playthrough, so it's pretty easy to get it wrong. Well, no. They, they, see, that's the thing. It's really easy to just go onto the internet after you played it once and then just, like, look up Story Explained. And what you'll find is just a bunch of YouTube channels collating data from Reddit and Twitter, and they'll just push out whatever the lowest common denominator believes. That's it. Even if it's wrong, even if it's debunkable, even if it's provably false. The humans made the barrier. You cannot convince me otherwise. How could they? They don't have magic. That, that, we are told that several times in the game. Humans don't have access to magic. How could they create the barrier? It would have to be created by a powerful monster, of which Asgore is. Probably also Toriel. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do a save, and we're going to see what we end up with in the text file over here. What do we got? Fun value of 62. Yep, that's exactly what we want. Line 35, 62. That is good. Perfect. That hasn't changed. So let's go ahead and fire Undertale back up again. See if we can't get it. The barrier is a barrier, or is it? Vsauce theme. Who's that? Who's Vsauce? Okay. We'll fire on through here. And we'll see if we can't roll for this. This dingle dangle. Okay, nothing still. What if we like go into the elevator first and then come back out? Ah, there's no save in there. We can't do that. Okay, nothing so far. Is the save actually changing though? So uh, this is weird because the fun value was changing for the 60, 61 uh, value one, right? But now it's not changing whatsoever, which would probably lead me to believe that we're not actually finding or uh, accessing the right area. So let's go ahead and just go 63 on this one the fun value and this one can also be 63 you don't know vsauce my man are you real i'm a doer not a viewer that is why you're watching me right now let's go ahead and fire this game up just making sure all of the um conventions are right there is a line 20 here which i'm not entirely sure if they're supposed to be so i may have hit enter accidentally but i doubt it okie dokie i'm gonna be playing it small until we actually get the guy to roll so this is supposed to be another really rare one. Nope, nothing. Okay. And the fun value is still not changing. Why is it not changing? It was changing in all of the other ones. Weird. Vsauce is like a person who does science and sometimes figuring out myths in science. Yeah, I don't think um, there's a lot of scientific uh, knowledge in this game, right? Okay, room 155. I don't know definitions of stuff. That's okay. You don't need to know definitions of stuff to look at evidence. It's, it's literally a, a universal skill to be able to look at something and think, oh, well, that can't be true because, uh, you know, we have direct evidence of it not being true. I'm just going to keep on starting this up and rolling it. I don't know if we can only get like one guest of followers per playthrough, which would suck. That would actually suck. But I'm sure, I'm sure we'll get something, right? Wait, didn't Kara and Asriel break the barrier, or did they just pass through? No, they only passed through. That's it. They didn't break the barrier whatsoever. All right, nothing here. Uh, is the text file still good? Yes. Good. And 63 here. Those collate well. Maybe it's on the wrong line. Maybe on the wrong line. But I don't really want to check. All right, let's save that. With the, uh, with the with the enter kind of gone. Because this is not doing anything for us. And we'll start the game back up again. Where is my Steam? God, I wish I was better at this. Being able to start the game up. Okay. Yeah, it didn't say. Imagine the barrier is just the DMV and no one wants to deal with it. I feel like there's... Uh, that's... The case on purpose though. Yeah, so here we go. We don't see any faces in the intro scene whatsoever. All we see is these kind of like assumed stereotypes about both sides with a lot of the 
Uh, what, what would you say? Um, yeah, they seal the monsters underground with a magic spell, but humans don't have access to magic. And when we keep looking, here, Mount Ebert, in some year, this isn't even us. She's got a single stripe on her shirt. This is Kara. It's not us. It's not us whatsoever. So, all of this, I think, is uh, propaganda, unreliable narration from a father figure when Kara was alive. I don't even think we, as Frisk, were told that story. I think that was just definitely Kara. They only passed through because they had the power of a human and the monster soul and nothing more. Saucy? Source? Well, I mean, like, do you actually need a source? That is what we're implicitly told over and over again. That the minimum requirements to pass through the barrier is a human soul and a monster soul. So Asgore, we know Asgore was lying to everybody because he just kept on collecting souls, even though he didn't have to. Toriel um, gave him a, a, a bunch of guff about it last time we... I think it was in the genocide run. I think it was in the genocide run. Okay, I'm just going to try and resave this, just in case it's not functioning as intended. Yeah, it's supposed to be 35. I'm certain of it. Let's make sure we're actually doing the right line. Uh, Undertale. Fun values. Which one was it? Maybe I'm editing the wrong line. On the uh, file zero chart. I could be. I could actually be. Okay. So, just looking around. Someone's actually put together a really good guide on how to do this. But it's really not that useful whatsoever. Um, I'll let you guys read this as well. So we want to find the file zero. File O. It, okay, there's some secret rooms. Great. Open up files here with a notepad, change line 36. Okay, so we actually, we ha made a mistake and we got the wrong line. It needs to be this line. There needs to be 63. Good. Okay. I'm actually really glad we did that because if we didn't, uh, we would probably be in a much, much more annoying spot for a much, much longer time. Okay. Oh my God. An indie game was your personality? I'm extra defensive about this game because I made it most of my personality and if I was wrong, I would probably spontaneously combust. Don't worry, my dude. Uh, a lot of people made this game their personality. I remember when it first came out, it was cringe as hell because I was a jock back in high... Well, I was an emo kid with muscles and I like doing sport. Okay, so now we're actually rolling the right numbers. I was just making sure that the file zero line that we were editing was actually the right line. We need to commit that uh, to memory that it was line 36. Okay, we got nothing. And if we ult F4, all of this should have changed, right? I probably need to put that last line on the code right there as well. Okay, fund value 63, fund value 63. Good. Okay. We didn't roll for it. Excellent. No source equals no proof. Yes! I'm, I'm all about that right there. Like religion. Yeah, okay. You're getting into a, a, a bit of territory, which is probably not fair. Undertale is not necessarily a religion. Blood really brought that in. Okay, no one here. I'll do four. Uh, let's go ahead and... Yeah, these aren't changing, actually. These aren't changing whatsoever, these values. Okay. Let's go ahead and fire the game back up then. We should get him eventually, right? Because they have no proof of a god other than to believe. Ah, uh, you could assume that. Uh, look, guys, uh, there is actually a massive difference between religion and theory crafting a video game. A video game has an implicit story laid out in front of you. Religion is what people use to uh, overcome grief. And honestly, if you're the kind of guy that wants to take that away from people, even knowing that they need it to overcome grief, you probably shouldn't be talking about religion in the first place. All right, nothing. Since it's not like deleting the role or anything like that off of the text file, 
Oh, we still need to save our game as well to like actualize this into the the save. Because we weren't doing that before either. Okay, good. You're filled with determination. That's excellent. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure that that's okay. Okay, fun is 63. It's on a line 8 now though, so that is good. And also line 36 has 63. Perfect. So we'll close this down. And now we are going to fire it back up. I should probably get like a little desktop shortcut or something like this. Actually, let's do that. Uh, a desktop shortcut. Done. Why is it made it a URL? Oh, that's so stupid, Steam. You are such an idiot. It's uh, to Steam, not anybody in chat or anything like that. Bold of you to assume I can read. <laughs> I'm just meaning the whole no source thing. Just comparing. It's fun to believe it, but don't go telling others without proof. Yeah, it's, um, religion is, is much like a, um, a penis. You should never bring it out in public and you should never force it on a child. I can't remember who said that quote, but it was, um, God tier. All right, line 863, line 3663, great. Let's go ahead and go back into Steam. We'll re-roll. This is another rare run. This is, this is a, um, a roll for a 20%, 20% chance. I'm going to stop uh, full screening it unless we actually find something as well. What about the Bible and stuff? An old book with nothing to prove its content? Yeah, I mean, like, that's the whole point of religion. The whole point of religion is to form a community so that uh, other people can overcome whatever hardships they're going through in life. I'm going to go ahead and check the text file, and then I'm going to save, and I'm going to see if that kind of, like, changes the text file. All right, good. It's made up of multiple d books or whatever. Well, I mean, it's, it's not really. It was made up by uh, the Roman Vatican Church who wanted to uh, kind of centralize a lot of anecdotal stories that, that they... That they had. That, that's essentially the contents of the Bible. It's just good advice for people who, you know, realistically probably need that advice. Fun value 63. Yep, that's all fine. Let's go ahead and save. See what it does to the save file. Because if we know what happens to the same file, it's going to be a lot easier to kind of exploit it. Okay, so the fun value went to line 13. This one's still fine. It's not replacing either of the lines. So maybe we could just, like, go back and forth and... Uh, I don't know. Just save in between? Okay, nothing. Let's go ahead, save. So I'm gonna check again that it was on save 13 and saving actually switches the fun value line. Fun value on 13, yes. Let's go ahead and save. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna unfull screen this because I know that you guys can't see a lot of what I'm doing. You're filled with determination. Save, okay, done, what did that do? Fun value at 13 is now at fun value 8. Good. So that does actually change where the fun value is listed. So we probably actually just go all the way through. We could come back, save, and then we can go and check to see if he rolled again. Nothing. Okay. Can you prove history books? Yes, you can actually. You can definitely prove history books. Because if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. That's the whole point of history books. All right. We'll come through here. Nothing rolled. That's fine. I'm pretty sure this has changed as well. Yep, fun value at 63 is now at line 13. I don't know just how rare this uh, guest of follower is actually going to be, though. I think I'm doing it right. I, th I think I've actually got the most efficient way of checking whether or not we have one. Nope, nothing. Okay. Yeah, it is historical sites that, that prove history. Oops, nope, don't want to save too many times. Is that going to shift it around still? It does, that's weird. Gotcha. Okay. Has that changed anything? No. This is a weird way of rolling, by the way. Usually somebody would use a, a random dot integer for their, for, their, for their fun values. I wonder, that's probably actually how he generates it. Gotta be said. That changed the file? Yes, sirree. Honestly, don't know how to make good arguments, lol. Uh, it's not about making good arguments. It's about being right in the first place. Like, I, I was born with a silver tongue. I can uh, sell snow to a snowman. But at the end of the day, if that's what you're using charisma for, then chances are you're just not a great person in the, in the first place. Uh, I think it's more important to spread facts rather than it is to just win 
an argument. You should never look at uh, exchanging information as um, a competition. I think that's really counterintuitive to the to society as a whole, to be quite honest. All right, still nothing. Yeah, to combat misinformation. Absolutely. Definitely. So there's like, there's free speech on my channel. Everyone's willing to, everybody's, you can all say whatever you want, but you got to live with the consequences of saying something, which is that somebody will probably either say, hey, you're wrong, or uh, you'll get a ban because you um, admitted that you did crimes live on a stream. So yeah, I'm bad at wording. I don't know much stuff. That's okay. You get better. You get better as you grow older. And I've got a little technique, right? I've got a little tip. Don't give somebody a fact unless you know for certain that it is honest and true. Right? Because otherwise you'll have to uh, start remembering things like lies. And I personally don't have the brain power to, to remember lies. So just always be honest. Always be honest. If you don't know, just say so. It's absolutely fine. I mean, worst case scenario on that one, you learn something. We can always learn from our failures. We're not getting anything to roll, are we? Weird. It is changing the text file every time we save, though. Okay, let's try for uh, 62 then. Since now we know we're actually going for the, the right ones. And maybe we've got some kind of bug going on. 62. Good. Let's try that. We'll close this down and we'll fire it back up on Steam. Yes, sir, we'll do that. And we'll see if we can't uh, roll for this other guy. Good. You'll get banned if you have a stroke. <laughs> I'm not going to ban someone for having a stroke. That's really unlucky. Like, super unlucky. Has anything changed? Uh, no. Did it save? Maybe not. I don't know what the hell is going on with this game, to be quite honest. Okay, good. That is all looking fine. Maybe we save first? This one's supposed to have like a 50-50 chance of rolling. We'll go back. The only looser in argument is that who refuses to back down from what their point is. Uh, yeah, I would, I would probably agree with that. Although, um, I would probably say the only loser in an argument... Is probably the person who doesn't learn anything. Right? If you're not learning anything, then then chances are you are in fact the loser of an argument. Always learn. Always always upskill. Always strive to be better. Uh, okay, I'm gonna fire Undertale back up. We're not getting the uh, fun values though. Which is a, a little bit of a shame, to be quite honest. I don't know if there's any if, uh, more effective way of doing it. Getting banned makes you unhappy. All right, bye, Gunner. What if nobody learns anything? Uh, then everybody is the loser. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, that's the only... Co you should only compete with yourself. You should only compete with yourself for correct information. This is not going our way at all. I don't know if we're getting really unlucky. I don't think we're getting really unlucky. Yep, that's definitely line 36. Uh, fun value is definitely the right value. It's just not rolling. Like, it's changing the save file every time we've uh, actually gone looking for it, but it's, we're, we're not finding anything. All right, good. Push on through. Will we get it now? No. Now, the reason I went with the 62 value is because this gas to follow up it doesn't have a 20% chance to spawn. It's got a 50% chance to spawn. And it seems as though we are not getting any chance to spawn every time it rolls. Which is not good at all. That is just annoying. So we're probably either really unlucky or we are just uh, not doing something right. Or maybe there's like a, a little thing in the save file that just says, hey, you've already seen one of these Easter eggs. Stop trying. Yeah, that's weird. So we should, we should be getting these Easter eggs. We should have seen it by now. This is the fourth time, I, no, fifth time I've rolled on uh, 62 for a 50-50 chance. You can only flip a coin so many times before you realize that the uh, coin that's being flipped is, you know, loaded, right? Are you having fun? No, I don't think that's the point of the fun value. The fun value is literally just there for everybody who really liked the game more than uh, everybody else. Uh, basically just for an excuse to play through the game again. 
Can you get every guest a follower on every elevator? It has not been confirmed by anybody on the internet. I've literally been looking for that every single time that we look up the uh, how-tos on the guest of followers. I mean, chance is a rough thing. Chance can kind of screw you over and over and over again. But nobody knows whether or not you have to go and get them on different elevators or something like that. You know, I would probably actually assume that potentially we do have to maybe go to a different elevator. Simply because every time we go into the next area, before it would reset this value to zero and it would reset the fun value to zero as well. So maybe you're right. Maybe we do actually have to just push on through the story a little bit more. I mean, there are a bunch of flaws. Why not? Why not try? Please select location. Uh, right floor two, maybe? Go there? Yeah, we'll go to another elevator. But we were just right beside a save location. Nope, that's not a follower at all. Uh, this is Sans. We don't care about him whatsoever. Where is the nearest... Oh, for God's sake. Okay. Did that change anything? No, fun value 62, fun value 62. So that didn't actually do anything whatsoever. I don't think we're going to be able to do it somehow. I, I don't actually think we're going to be able to roll any new gas to followers. Maybe we just go on the internet, right? Because we just tried another elevator and it's, it's not updating the text file whatsoever. So I'm, I'm skeptical on whether or not we can actually... I'll try again, I suppose. I'll try once more. We'll go uh, a little bit through the story. We'll go up to the hotel. And if we still can't really find anything useful, we'll just go into the internet and we'll look them up ourselves. But I don't want to go on the internet to do so because they could be doctored. I, I don't want to take the chance that somebody else is going to, like, just create misinformation and we'll just fall for it, hook, line, and sinker. Okay. Please select a location. Uh, I think we are at left floor one. Maybe? I'm back. Hello there, Linda. What if it's the wrong elevator? Well, we, we just don't know. We, we literally just don't know if it's the wrong elevator or not. I'll tell you what, actually, since I am probably going to be editing this video, why don't we go ahead, we'll go onto the internet... And we'll see screenshots of these followers right here. Guess it, followers. We'll look at the images, because that'll tell us exactly where they would be located. Wow, there is a lot of fan art, a lot of thumbnails. Uh, none of this is interesting to me. Oh, would you look at that? Nothing useful. <laughs> Even people on uh, Tumblr are now getting pissed off with the fandom. Oh, that's a weird one. Uh, okay, so... Looks like there's one of them at L2. And the other one... Is not at L2. L2 is where we would find another one of these guys. I'm looking for L3. This is cringe. This is really, really cringe right here. Th this right here. This is super cringe. Gross. Right, uh... Still looking for the third one. I'm not seeing him. Oh, there he is. Yeah, this little guy with his abs hanging out. This is the uh, third guy. If there was like a screenshot, we'll just put a screenshot in here actually. Okay, so L2 is where one of them is located. Maybe you're actually right. And L3, so it's all on all of the L's, it seems, except for R1. So we need to go to L2 and L3 to start rolling for these ones. This is L1. We don't want to be here, do we? No, 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 no. Okay, so I think we were actually rolling in the wrong place. You're probably actually right on that count. Did you get the Gaster door? Uh, yeah, we saw Mystery Man, but we didn't see Gaster. Gaster wasn't in there. There was only Mystery Man. Okay, good. Uh, let's go back to right floor two. We've seen all the right floor ones. We need left floor one and two, and then we'll see the other two followers. And then we'll roll for Gonakit who is the uh, last piece of the puzzle, which means we're probably actually just going to have to progress the story a little bit further. Okay. They're on the L's because we can't find anything about WD. What the hell does that even mean? They're on the L's. W. Why is W quoted? Why are you quoting W? Uh, let's go ahead and heat him up because this is how we riz him. Don't want to be hit by these bombs. No, 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 no. 
They're too big. Oh, we actually just got hit by one of those bombs, sadly. All right, let's hit him up again. And that should be... Wow. There's no winning here. Okay. Okay, good. And now we spare him. We lost all of our health. Uh, we're actually going to go all the way back, and we are going to touch another save point. Wow, that sucks. Actually, does... This guy uh, does sell things, right? Yeah, we definitely want lots of these. I remember these being really, really good. Okay, good. We'll get a bunch of these. Excellent. We got no space. Let's go ahead. Oh, we got uh, we got sausages on our head. That's pretty funny. Let's go ahead and eat one of these. Good. And now let's go ahead and buy another one. Great. Awesome. Because it's like loser and winner or something. I thought it was pretty good. What's, what's your opinion on the AUS? That's Australia, is it not? Okay, hopefully we're not going to get another text. Because we don't want it. Oh, great. All right, uh, we need to... We can't spare any, but can we flee? No, we cannot. Awesome. I love being stuck in combat. Okay, let's just take all of the hits that we can muster. Let's flee. Good. We don't want to fight anybody anymore. We're, it, it's actually becoming a little bit cumbersome. All right, we're going to have to do this puzzle twice. I'm not even going to bother. Oh, you have to do the puzzle anyway to trigger his sandbagging. God, Alphys is such a penis. Literally the most annoying character in the game. Wait, you don't have to hit all three of them? That's a weird quality of life I never thought we'd get. Oh my god! Oh, right, the apostrophes. Okay. All right, let's go here. Go over here. We'll dip down here. That can't switch around, so let's go down here. And we'll go up here. Oh, it doesn't go side to side. Good to know. What about up here? And then up here. And then up here. And done. Excellent. Nice. The Undertale fan-made alternative Eunice versus. What's my opinion on them? I have no idea what they are. Uh, I haven't actually seen any of them yet. Whoops. Uh, we do want to save here, because I'm pretty sure we're right next to another elevator. Alphys updated his status. <coughs> Screw him. Alphys just stop spamming social media. My god. You brain-rotted, porn-brained bastard. All right, we're going to have to uh, fight these two sexy knights. I think we can riz them, right? Yeah, we can riz them. I think we can riz them. We'll get them to go together. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and act. On the second one, we want to whisper. You tell him your favorite secret. Okay, he's not gonna tell anybody, which is actually great information. Ugh. Damn it. Okay, we took one of those stars, unfortunately. It smells like a military zoo. That is... Wait, are these guys animals? Oh, I suppose they're monsters, aren't they? All right, let's go ahead and whisper to the first guy too. Good. And now we want to dodge all of these carrots. I think they're either carrots or they're poos. I can't tell. All right. Uh, whisper. Be honest. Okay, that was not the right answer. I should probably actually read the exposition. I'm just staying on the side here because it's a safer spot. Sweat pause from number two's armor. All right, number two will clean his armor. Good. Yeah, we got to do this lots, right? We got to actually hit the green while they're attacking us, which is very funny. Okay, the armor is too hot. Oh, no. He's got a sexy abs coming out now as well. Ugh, I've never heard Alphys be called that before. You can't riz them, but you can give them riz. One is a bunny guy and the other is a dragon guy. Oh, I see it now. Well, maybe he's not a dragon. Maybe he's a fish. Hi, man. Call me Gaddy. Okay, done. Hi, Gaddy. Wrong one. Okay, let's go ahead and... RG01 looks bothered by something. Let's go ahead and tell him to be honest with your feelings. And they should get, they should get, to, I think one of them has anxiety, which is what all the uh, wiggly stars are. Okay, we're taking lots of hits. Let's interrupt the fight. I feel like this guy is more of a fish than a dragon because he's got scales. Oh, I suppose dragons have scales too, right? Are dragons fish? Dragons could be fish. No one dying says the bunny guy actually asked to be with the dragon guy. Oh, okay. Okay. But maybe dragons are fish. Maybe that's really the takeaway with this game. Um, 
Do I have to age restrict this? I don't want to age restrict this. I will. I will age restrict this. We're going to go back and we're going to save at that save point. I don't want to do that fight again. Oops, just walk straight past it like an idiot. Okay. Let's save. Good. Pooper has saved, finally. Out of all of the things, that's the message. Yeah, dragon a fish. I, 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 that's my theory. That's my game theory running so far. Go away, Elphus. My God. I will literally press charges. As soon as I find Asgore, I am pressing charges against Elphus. Okay, this is uh, another fairly annoying little bit of busy work, unfortunately. Okay, dude. Okay. That glass of water. Oh, no, it's actually a bomb. Yeah, I know. We've, uh, we've done this playthrough about four times already. Excellent. Hooey. <sighs> Who is the best soul theme of all? Patience, bravery, integrity, perseverance, kindness, or justice? Uh, Kara's black and soul. Whatever, whatever that one is. It's the black soul that Kara brought downstairs. Man, skipping through this is actually glitching everything out. All right, good. Let's go and talk to Doggo right here. We want to... Boop, boop. Done. We defuse Doggo. Excellent. That's what I'd like to see. Yes, now piss off, Alphys. I don't want to speak to you. What have I just been attacked by? Oops. That's embarrassing. Uh. Done. All right, good. So we got to actually fight that pauses it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Excellent. We got this book right here, I think. It's a book. Is it a book? Yeah, good. It doesn't really matter what you do with these things, honestly. What? Are you taking the piss? I wasn't touching it! Alright, good. Uh, we'll pass through here. I don't even know if we actually have to defuse all of these things. I've never tried. Alright, good. Slapped it with my book and we defused it. Excellent. So, there's only a couple more things up here. There's a present. Nice. Whoop. There we go. Gonna slap it with the minimal amount of damage humanly possible. And let's go ahead and go through here to this basket bomb. Nice. Boop. Good. And we defused it all. Ooh-wee. Ooh-wee. Great. Okay, we defused all the all the bombs. Ivan Jensen, I'm back. Tried to focus on something or do something, but it did not work out. Can't even play games I'm good at. Oh, that sucks, Pates. I'm sorry to hear that. You don't have to defuse them, but you probably should. The same feeling has just been getting bigger and bigger. Oh, I'm sorry to hear. I'm really sorry to hear. You don't die. Oh, I see. Human, remember your brain rot. Uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not keen. I'm not keen. <laughs> oh, my head. I don't know why, but it always. It, I feel like that bomb defusal thing is just kind of like a little artificial. Like it's funny and it's clever, but it's it's just a little artificial for me. Ring, ring. Hi, Alphys. Uh, could you piss off, please? Yes, thank you kindly. Bye-bye. Uh, we should be right next to another elevator. Ah, this is where another one of the followers are. I want to find a save point first, though. Please select location. So, we've oh, we've also got left floor three now, too. Hey, that's pretty good. Let's see what's under here. Ah, so this is the third follower. I'm just going to see if there isn't a... No, that's Muffet. We want to go back to the save station. We have now finally unlocked every single place that we want to unlock for this here playthrough. I think right floor one has the save station, right? We want to go to two and three, don't we? Good, 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 good. So this is where R1 was. There is the save station right over here, the save star. Good, now we want to kind of collate who is where, don't we? Because we are going for Easter eggs. That is the whole point of this playthrough. So I'm going to ult F4 right here. All right, we didn't roll it. Let's go right here and go to 62 here. And we'll save this. And we'll also change the fun value here, which reset to 0 to 62. This is going to be the 50-50 follower. I don't know which one this is going to be. But 
We will find out exactly where the other one is when we find this 50-50 guy, because the last guy has a 20% chance of spawning. It's going to be rough. It's going to be a little bit rough. Is save point on L1 to the south? Yeah, 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 yeah. I already know. This is the one that we were rolling the uh, last guy for. So we'll come all the way through here. We're in a good spot. We're in a really good spot. Now that we actually know where the uh, guest of followers spawned, because we looked up screenshots of whether other players were finding him. So we want to go to floor two first. And the way I'm going to figure out whether or not this is the second or third follower is we're going to leave this elevator and then we're immediately going to check the text file to see if 62 is in fact no. So we need to go to L3. Oops. We need to go to L3 for 62. Right here. And going into here should reset this text files. Um, where is it? Fun value right here on line 13 to zero and then shift it to line eight. Right? Should be like that. Oh, we got him! We got him. So 63 is L2. Good. Good. So this is the second piece of the puzzle that everybody is saying um, confirms Gaster is alive. We found the first follower. He told us nothing. Nothing. He told us literally nothing. He told us that he thinks that uh, Gaster is some kind of god or deity now, which Asgore probably would have deified him as, right? Uh, now we are seeing from the second guest to follow it what he has to say. Also, all well, of this is cut content, so it's not canon in the universe whatsoever. Good. It makes sense why Asgore took so long to hire a new royal scientist. It makes sense why Asgore took so long to hire a new royal scientist. After all, the old one, Dr. Gaster, what an act to follow. They say he created the core. However, his life was cut short. One day, he fell into his creation, and... Will Elphys end up the same way? Okay, will Elphys end up... So, again, this is not canon. This is not canon. This is all cut content that we're seeing right here. But, uh, you know, most of the game theories on the internet hinge on these characters right here giving us his position. One, we were told nothing. Nothing. Nothing of import. Literally no use, no usable information for theorycraft or anything like that came from this guy. What he did confirm is that Gaster existed and he was well respected. What does that mean? It means nothing. It literally means nothing. It was cut content. The story that would have filled all of this out was never actualized. It was never put in the game. It, 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 we still don't have a single shred of evidence for Gaster being alive. Right, the last guy said, I've got a piece of Gaster right here while he was holding a severed head. We don't even know if it was Gaster's head. It could have just been a carving or something like that. An effigy. Because I think what happened when Gaster died, falling into his creation, which I think is the core, full of magma, right? I think what happened is that Asgore deified him to kind of uh, sweep some of the more monstrous side of the research under the rug because they were creating these creatures that were all mashed together i imagine in a hope to create a soul powerful enough to match humans artificially so we have seen the second follower and he's gone good now we know exactly where l uh we, we know exactly where the other follower is going to be we want to go to right floor one. We want to go ahead and save there. And then we're going to go for the third one. Are you talking about the amalgamates? Yes, that's exactly who I am talking about. So he fell into his creation. This thing is shown to us so frequently. Why are people ignoring this? This is very obviously his creation. It siphons things out of the, 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 the magma right here and it puts it upwards upwards as in where the barrier is so i think that the core was designed to sustain the barrier i also think that because he fell into his creation this right here this right here this little dot bobbing around in the lava this is gaster now we actually have more evidence to support that being gaster than we do the mystery man being gaster because that was actually physically in the game whereas gaster's evidence is all not in the game whatsoever Okay, we're going to go ahead and save. Now, let's go ahead and close this down so we can uh, change this. Also, we get a flash of the last fun event that we saw. That's what we're seeing in the background. So, Gaster 
That mystery man was not actually tied to the core. That was just a strange bug that we saw. How to avoid people getting pissed off from normal Undertale common facts. Step one, don't speak. Yep. I mean, it's great to observe the game, but not to the point where you're creating your own fan fiction. He was talking through the head? No, he wasn't. He had his own face. Uh, you're absolutely full of it. Are you talking about the amalgamates? No, I'm talking about the uh, guest of... Well, I don't know how old that comment is. Um, the guest of follower. He was holding a head. He was holding a, a, a head. Right? He had his own head. He was holding a head. I can bring the icon up for you right now if you really need to see it again. But quite frankly, you're just going to probably feel um, significantly more stupid. Here we go. Here he is. Can we all see that from here? This right here is a head. There is light on the back indicating that the face is shaded out. Simple as that. He's not holding his own head. He's not holding it. It's not happening. You guys had a good look? I love how the song Amalgam, Glam, simple, sampled Deirdre by the Beach Boys. What the hell does that mean? Didn't Elphus make those after Asgore told her to do research on human souls? And, uh, no, El uh, I don't think that was Elphus whatsoever. Because she injected monsters with determination from the human souls. Yeah, that was Gaster. But when he talked, the head moved its mouth. We already talked about ventriloquism in this, in this stream, my dude. He's holding the neck. If you squeeze a neck, it'll make the whole head move. I'm not saying he doesn't also have a mouth. No, he, he has a mouth. Just thought it was neat? Yeah, but the, uh, like it's, it's, it's a nice little touch. But it, just a guy literally crazy offers tits on Gastelore, shaking a random head around the place, it doesn't tell us anything. He didn't even, he didn't tell us anything that was actually useful. In fact, because of him, people keep thinking that the thing in the back of Sans' uh, house is a time machine. I don't know if that was ever confirmed either. Mel Glam was the song that plays when you battle an amalgamate, since it sampled like two seconds of the Beach Boys song. Oh, that's funny. It has lyrics. Only Undertale has that lyrics. Okay. All right, so now we want to convert the fun into a value of 63, and this is going to be the final follower who is going to be over at L2. So let's go ahead and 63. Both of these text files will save them, and we'll start Steam back up. Now, I'm actually, it, it's good that we got that guy first roll. We're going to have to roll a bunch more times to get this guy. Oh my god, he's the average Undertale fan? Yeah, who is? Who are you talking about now? Oh, you mean the the guy bobbing the head around on the stick? Yeah, he is. He is definitely the average Undertale fan. Just parroting whatever uh, someone else tells him to say. I get it. I, I get where you're coming from. All right, so we're going to go in here, and we want to select floor two. And I'm going to leave. I'm, again, not going to full screen this until we actually get uh, the guy to roll. He didn't roll. This was the one, right? Yeah, we got the guy with the abs who was lower than this, so we didn't get it this time. Which means if we open up our text file, this should roll to zero. Fun value is zero. This one hasn't changed. Weird. Okay. And if we exit this. Yeah, so that hasn't changed. That's weird. But the fun value is zero, which means we did actually correctly roll it, which means we definitely have the right place. That is awesome. So we uh, used uh, deduction. We actually used deduction to figure out exactly where that guy was living. I just think it's uh, pretty cool that technically one Undertale song slightly has less... Slightly less lyrics, even though it's just dear, 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 dear. The guest follower, yeah, the guest follower. I get it. I, I, game sees game. Game sees game. Okay, we'll come through here. We'll go straight back down to L2. This is probably going to be the trickiest one to roll for because he's only got a 20% chance to actually spawn. Down to left forward two. All of our T's are crossed. All of our I's are dotted, so we should get him eventually. Oh, already! Wow, hey, God roll. Nice, that's what I like to see. Okay, so this guy is like a gigantic head, right? Or actually... <laughs> I think I'm actually about to ruin the game for some people. What if this is a guy, like, in kind of like a, a big, a big robe, like the boatman, right? He's got a, the big, the big hood and the cloak. And um, this is kind of like, the face hole of the hood, right? And he's just standing up and he's bent over and he's taking a real close look at his own boner. What, <laughs> what if that's, what if that's, what if this isn't a mouth? What if this isn't a mouth either and he's just trying to blow himself? <laughs> no wonder this one was cut from the game. <laughs> 
<laughs> you see it? Oh no! <laughs> I'm never gonna unsee it. Yeah, the hair as well. Like, Le <laughs> oh poor, poor ass! What a horrible day to have eyes. You don't see it? Oh, Spaghettini! I, I'm jealous of you. I'm jealous of your innocence. What have you done? <laughs> See, you see it as well. <laughs> All right, let's talk to him. Let's talk to this guy who's kind of like huddled over looking at his own boner. Actually, no, this is not an, an eye. This is a mouth. This right here is his mouth. And his head is still recessed into the, into the hoodie. <laughs> the pimple is the mouth, exactly. Oh, terrible, terrible. Let's censor this with the, with the mouse cursor. All right, so let's talk to him and see what he has to say about Gasper. Oh, no, he's trying real hard now. He's bobbing up and down. He can't quite reach, though, because he's got too many ribs. I understand why Asgore waited so long to hire a new royal scientist. The previous one, Dr. Gaster, his brilliance was irreplaceable. However, his life was cut short. That's almost the same dialogue as the last guy we talked to. One day, his experiments went wrong, and... Well, I needn't gossip. After all, it's rude to talk about someone who's listening. Oh, piss off, he's listening! This, I also can't unsee it, by the way. I, I literally cannot unsee it. I can't, I can't unsee it. This guy is literally just staring at his own bonnet. What a guy. So he's claiming that Gaster is listening to us. He doesn't have any evidence and he's trying to blow himself in front of a child. I think that that is degenerate behavior, to be quite honest. I, th I think that's degenerative. And quite frankly, it has no place in the game. Personally, I believe. Okay, so we've seen all three of Gaster's followers. We can see all of the other stuff now, by the way. We don't need to go any further in. We don't need to go past Moffat because there's nothing else in the game. All right, so what else have we got? We have one more little character that we want to see, which is the Goner Kid. Uh, pretty famous, this one, actually. We want to go back to the... What is the value of this? Uh, gone a kid. 90 to 100. So let's go ahead and change fun, which is now probably zero. Yes, it is very good. To, what was it? 90 to 100. Let's go with 99. And we'll save. And also this line right here. We'll change this to 99, which is between 90 and 100. Don't know if anybody can count. Now we're going to fire the game up. We didn't save after we saw those two uh, uh, Wang Dingles um, guess as followers. Toby Fox better see it so much he can't unsee it. Yeah, we definitely got to make Toby Fox see it, right? Somebody, like, create pixel art of this and just, like... Wait, where's the sound? Let me just check my sound settings real quick. Uh, yep. Why is the game muted? Why is the game muted? Uh, yeah, there's no sound, is there? All right, let's go ahead and just close this back down, bring it back up, just in case we may have uh, corrupted something. Let's see. Okay, good. Yeah, something went wrong. There was, it was just a little bit of a bug. Such a thing is unnecessary. <laughs> I got Gonicut twice in a row. Okay, a lot of people are saying that Gonicut is also a pretty integral part in the theories, and I call cap on that vehemently. I vehemently call cap. So we need to go back to the elevator. We need to go back to, I think it's R1 because that is going to lead us back to the uh, central hub where we can meet the boatman, I think. Damn, we are at R1. That's not good. Okie dokie. So it was L1 then? I can't remember. I can't count. That's fair enough. It sounded like faster than my dad. He didn't leave. My, my dad, uh, my, my dad dipped. All right, uh, we're here. But it was because my mum didn't want him around. Quite frankly. Young age. Had a stepdad and everything. What a dick he was. 
Tra la la, I'm the river man. Yes, you need to take me to the waterfall, please. Then we're off. Yes, we are. Thank you, Charon. I'm certain that's Charon, by the way. You know, the ferryman who ferries uh, souls across the river Acheron and the river Styx. Okay, good. And here we are. We're at the waterfall. So, we need to find what this guy's... No, we already stuck in the actual values, didn't we? All right, let's come on up. And... Oh, don't worry. It, like, I know I say it a lot and it depresses my girlfriend every time she hears me say something, um... Like, oh, uh, stepdad never loved me. Like, all that stuff. Like, it, it's, it's a fact. I've come to live with that. And I have reconnected with my biological father. Uh, I love being around him. It's great. It's, uh, being an adult, making your own choices is absolutely fantastic. You can always go and see your own family when you are making the decisions for yourself. It's pretty nice. So don't feel too bad. <laughs> don't feel too, ba too bad about all of that. Timmy Village. The room before the darkening lantern room. Yep, we, uh, we, uh, honestly, I feel like we are forced to go there, almost. Okay, so we're going back to Snowdom, because I'm pretty sure this is actually closer to the room we want to go to than anything else. So I'm going to continue on down. I'm going to do a save. And then I'm going to do something that may save us a lot of time. I think I just walked past the save. That's embarrassing. I feel like maybe if we change the room number as well, we may be able to kind of like skip through a lot of this transit that we're walking along. Although I have kind of enjoyed the journey of kind of finding all of these Easter eggs anyway. All right, we'll go ahead and save right here. Yep, we already got the sound test room. So we're pretty much done in Snowden. I just want to be able to get to the right side of Waterfall because I, I remember that there's that point where the guy with no arms has to hoist us up over a wall and we can't pass that again. So we're going to go all the way back. Dang, was hoping you were on to hide Janir by now. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. I didn't realize you you didn't like secret hunting. Playing Undertale just because of Sans is a crime? Uh, yeah, th th honestly, I would probably, I'd probably agree with that, to be honest. Okay, weirdly quiet and eerie in here. We still want to get the ghost kid. We've got the right numbers. I don't know if there's like a percentage chance that he's going to spawn. We are going to see... Where is this guy's eyes? Oh, he's just going to tell us about the Echo Flower. We've never interacted with one of those without talking to that guy. Okay, bye, Sans. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff falling down there. That's fine. This is the grass. That's also fine. I'm going to go ahead and save here. Wait, what was that? The feeling of dread hangs over you, but you stay determined. That's weird. Why would, why would the feeling of dread hang over our heads? I don't know why that would be the case whatsoever. Okay, so we're pretty close. I think actually in this next room is where the Goner... No. Two rooms away. We're two rooms away from the Goner kit. Okay, we'll come up here. Ah! That guy wants us to step on his face. Right. Okay, there's Washua. We're on the wrong side of this bridge. Gotcha. I couldn't care less about the Gastelor. What Gastelor? I've already debunked all of it. In this one playthrough, we've already debunked every single piece of Gastelor that all of the internet has. MatPat rarely dropped the ball on these game theories. Like, the, it, he doesn't do it much, though. He does not drop the ball much on game theories. It's just this one. He took a swing, and it was a big miss. Big, big, big miss. So we want to go back, don't we? Yeah, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save right here. Because I don't want to have to go all the way back around the gigantic loop just to find the, um, the Goner Kid. We're actually going to Ulti 4 here. And what we're going to do is we are going to keep the fun value there. And we're going to change this room value right here to see if we can fire the game up and then be in a different room. So Goner Kid appears in... Uh, room 91. 91. Let's see if this actually spawns us in. I know that uh, we're probably not doing this mm, very organically anymore, but... We're still doing well. Long ago, two races ruled over. Who cares? Stop, please. No, it didn't do anything. Okay. So this is room... 
90, right? We go back here. Yeah, this did nothing. The room value literally did nothing. Let's go here and whoops, got to bring my um stream software back up. So I couldn't see chat. All right, uh, we can't go through here. We have to go all the way back, which is a little bit of a shame. Is there anybody that can tell me uh, explicitly where the Goner Kid is? Because I could probably look up a screenshot and then recognize exactly where he's placed. Ooh. Good. Maybe it's down here. No, it wouldn't be down there. That would make no sense. Sorry, I meant gas law. In quotation marks. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so... We're getting pretty far along. I'm going to look up a screenshot of the Goner Kid so that we can see exactly what room he is in. You guys will not get to see it. Goner Kid. Images. Oh, a lot of people have theories about this guy. And all of them are marked Gaster. Okay, I've got a screenshot right beside me. I'm pretty sure that's actually where we were, though. Well, maybe it wasn't. Maybe I'm actually wrong. All right, let's go ahead and continue onwards. Oh, I know exactly who this is. Right. Okay, I won't spoil anything just yet, but I know who Gonakid is. I just remember that dialogue from... Remember how we picked him up off of the wall so many times and he says, uh, thanks, I thought I was a goner? So this is supposed to be the Goner Kid. I imagine from a different universe. Or something like that. Again, it's cut content, so it's not like set in stone or anything like that. So this is a useless place for... Yeah, no, this is definitely not where we want to be. We want to be on the other side of that bridge, annoyingly. That is really annoying, actually. That is super, super obnoxious. Okay, we'll do that now. Fine. Bring up the stream stuff. Gonna get us right before where Undyne throws spears at you. Yeah. Yeah, no, I figured that one. I recommend stepping... Oh, yeah, stepping on the fairy guy. He'll take us to the other side of the bridge, won't he? That is a good idea. No, that is that is true. I don't know anything. It's, it's not true. This guy is actually going to take us exactly where we need to go. Three gold for the fairy. Yes, please. Thank you. He's going to pay us, by the way. We almost drowned. We almost drowned, but he's taking us. Thanks for stepping on my face. Here's the gold. Nice. Okay. So, it's back here, isn't it? Right. We are still backtracking a little bit. Continuing onwards. Hey, Yinsen, who would be the last person you would ever think of killing an Undertale? Last person? Uh, Kara. Honestly, it, it, it'd have to be Kara. No, the first time I played this game, I was like, bloodlust. Let's just kill everyone. I did see that we get additional dialogue if we bring an umbrella. So we're going to go and we're going to go forward and uh, get an umbrella. Okay, we skip the fake hallway, with the guest room and all that such. Where is the nearest umbrella? Oh, that's the duck. We could probably actually just... All right, good. Let's get a, let's get a ride. Now, I know it looks like we're about to get the goner kid. We're going to go and we're going to get an umbrella. This is really slow. Monster Kid was my favorite character. Really? Why? For me, it would have to be Asriel and second Chara, third and Monster Kid. Now, here's a question that I don't think anybody has realistically considered. When? Oh, this is going to be a hard one to ask, actually. When do you think Toriel and Asgore figured out that Flowey was their son? When do you think that was? Ah, great. We should be close to the umbrella stand. We are going through here for a reason. The other characters did not really connect me. Really? Monster Kid did? All right, screw this umbrella. Honestly, it's way too far away. It's so far away. I don't know how we're going to find it. Monster Kid is just cool. Is he? He interrupts the flow of the gameplay pretty, pretty frequently, so... Anything above, like... I don't know. Third playthrough just becomes a, an annoying chore to deal with. Yeah, there's no umbrellas around here. Weird. All right. Toriel and Asgore don't know he's their son. What do you mean? Exactly. But 
right at the start of the game, Toriel does not kill Flowey whatsoever. She just kind of shoes him away with a single ball of fire. Now, when she tries to get us to stay in the ruins, she uses significantly more fire than she used on Flowey to get rid of him. So I, I feel like... I feel like she kind of should have gone a bit more nuclear if she wanted to protect us. I feel like at least Toriel knows that it's their son. But it is really hard to kind of exemplify, isn't it? What's down here? Umbrellas? No, that's just the uh, beaten path. Okay. Screw that! Anything up here? That was the ice cream guy. Oh, wait. Where is he? It's a box for storing punch cards. It's empty. Okay. Punch cards, I remember, increase the uh, damage. We might want to uh, start collecting those if we ever figure out that we should be collecting those. We're just going to go see Gonakid, I think. I'm not going to worry too much about anything else. Okay, so we should be in this next zone here, right? Yes, 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 yes. Right over here. Toriel also doesn't kill the froggets. Also, why would she call her son a terrible creature? You're torturing such a poor, innocent youth. It's endearing. Let's see. Oh man, this is a long ass walkway. You really gotta walk a mile to kind of find this kid, right? When will it end? Will it end? Who knows? Oh, hello. Hello there, friendo. So, this is the same kid, right? I'm going to give you some context because I did notice something. This is the same kid that goes to fall down off of the rocks, right? He trips on the bridge. He goes to fall off of the rocks. You and Undyne kind of, they uh, they race for him. Yeah, that's, that's canon. We see it a bunch of different times. When you pull him up off of the ledge, he says, thanks, I thought I was a goner. I'll cite my evidence because I've recorded all of that as well and there's going to be heaps of instances of us seeing it in this video alone. But he's going to say, thanks, I was a goner. This must be a kid who did not get pulled off the ledge. I think in this instance, Frisk and Undyne were too busy fighting each other that he got left behind. He got left behind, he couldn't hold on any longer and his teeth gave out, he fell to his death. So let's, let's see what he says. Have you ever thought about a world where everything is exactly the same? Except you don't exist? Everything functions perfectly without you. Is that the right music? Ha, ha. The thought terrifies me. Have you ever thought about a world where everything is exactly the same? Okay, same dialogue. What terrifies me? Okay. Let's... Let's just suspend some belief, right? And just assume that the machine in the back of Sans house is actually a time machine. If he's going into different timelines, perhaps this is one of the kids he brought back. Maybe the Gaster followers were also brought back from the time machine. I don't want to say that though because they're cut content, right? So I, I can't responsibly use this in a game theory. Tim? Yeah, that's sort of been my theory. This is the right music? Yeah, this is the right music. Broy scares me. I think it, because the, the whole grey theme, right? The, the whole grey theme of everything. It must be that they're from a different universe where there's like no colour or something like that. Maybe it's like an earlier version of NES or something like that. I don't know, but... We've kind of seen everything that we need to see at this point without debugging and going and checking out things like the wingdings. So where do we go from here? We've seen all the fun value stuff. Now we could go ahead and also check out the debug What's My Dingles as well, which are, where are they? There's a few, uh, uh, like, little rooms that we can go into. Where are they? I'll bring them up over here for you. Because now we've seen all of this, right? We've seen all of the, um, except for this, except for the Nintendo Switch version. Simply because, uh, pfft, we don't have that on PC. And, uh, she talks about the protagonist meeting Susie. That's just a Deltarune reference. 
There's, there's nothing new. Uh, we saw this guy. We saw this guy in the fake hallway. Yeah, there is a 10% chance for the mystery man to appear behind the grey door in this hallway. Who is he? Because he's not Gaster. He spoke to us in clear font. So who cannot be WD Wingdings Gaster. He cannot be Wingdings Gaster, who does type in Wingdings because of entry 17, which I am going to try and find now. What time is it? Yeah, I got time. All right, so... Uh, Undertale, how do I find entry 17? Because this is a, a strange one. Entry 17 is a secret room known as Gaster's room. Yes, so I, I don't know who's citing this. This could also be wrong. Uh, but notice how there is no entry 17 in True Lab, and yet there is an, a secret entry. Okay, how do we get there? There's the wingdings. Uh, they've already been translated. Where is it? It's impossible to find in-game. You'll need to edit your save file and place you in the room with entry 17. I'd love to do that. I would love to do that. Please. Oh, the, wing, the text doesn't hint at Delta Room. Piss off, Ghost Sonic. What is up with this? Why are people literally just pulling stuff out of their ass? All right, let's try the uh, the actual WD Gaster wiki. Because now that we've got all of the evidence, we can kind of like come to our own decision. This is not Gaster. We know this is not Gaster. We have actually had it confirmed that that is not Gaster. I don't know, but they shoved a lot up there. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it, right? Relationships of the goner kid. What the hell? Oh, here we go. Main story, room 264. How do we get here? Room underscore Gaster, the text below is displayed in uppercase wingdings. How do we get there? While it appears to be missing the 17th ent lab entry from the true lab, this could be a red herring as there was an alternate 17th entry in the game's files prior in the full release, basically, which added Japanese localization. The alternate entry is heavily implied to have been written by Alphys and it mirrors her entry format, writing style and correlates with her determination experiments. So that was a patch. It was a patch that made it in English. Right? Rather than wingdings. Both entries are inaccessible in normal gameplay. Alphys's entry can only be found in the game's text files. And Gaster's entry is only accessible through save manipulation or debug mode. Room 264 immediately follows the generator room in the true lab. Okay, let's check out this. Let's check out the save manipulation. Um, save files. Please. Good. File zero, when a save point is used, the actual state of the world is used to save to this file. If When the player quits and reloads the game, the game loads this file. All right, let's see if we can't, I don't know. Okay, room 91. What were we in before? Let's actually go ahead and save over that. We'll see what room that we end up in. We'll see if there's actually another entry in the file zero that we should edit as well. It's probably going to be a good idea, right? And then maybe we'll be able to manipulate the save to kind of get to Gaster's room. God, this whole place, by the way, I, I absolutely hate the waterfall most of all, since it's such a heinous place to navigate. All right, good. Let's go ahead and save. And now we are going to ulti four. We'll see what room we are in here. Room, 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 room. There is no room. There's no room. There's no, there's no room value. It's fun, time, the hell? Weird. All right, let's uh, close it down and maybe open it back up again. No, don't save. Uh, file zero, right here. Open it up with Sublime, because I used to program. All right, pooper, good. So now we also need the undertale.initialization file up and running. Where is the room? There is no room value. Oh, here we go, 94. So we're in the room 94. Is there? A value, 94, in the text file. Yes! It's the second last one. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So let's edit both of those. I like Waterfall because I, I think it's pretty. It's annoying. It's dark. It's dim. Everything wants to kill you. I'm not fond of it, personally. Right. Now we've got this. Let's go ahead and uh, just edit this to go to room 264. How does that sound? 264. And this one here is room... Two, six, four. We've got to save both of these because I, I didn't. 
And now we're going to launch the game. <sighs> Under Steam, right here. Good. Let's fire it up. Actually, while this fires up, I'm just going to really quickly uh, do a biological function. I'll be right back in less than a minute. Don't go anywhere. I, I will literally only be a minute. What are you guys talking about? I'm leaving if it's not 45 seconds. Oh, yes. Ah. My favorite song in the game is probably Gaster's Theme. Still come? Yeah, that is true, actually. Uh, the soundtrack does kind of pick up in the waterfall area, doesn't it? Oops, I'm using controller. Okay, so let's go ahead and see where we are. This is gonna get weird. This is gonna get real weird, I think. All right, let's continue. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Let me bring up a translation of this. I mean, we could do a substitution cipher, but I don't think it's really necessary just yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up somebody's already pre-made translation of this. All right, I got it. We ready? Entry number 17. And we actually know that that's true because there's uh, two little dudes right here, which would be two E's. Uh, is E the E? So substitution cipher, we would have figured that one out pretty fast anyway. Darker, yet darker. The darkness keeps coming. The shadows cutting deeper. Photon readings negative. This next experiment seems very, very interesting. What do you two think? That gave me chills, actually. That was very spooky. Uh, ultimately, though, that told us absolutely nothing. And um, if anything, the translation is right here. Uh, yeah, yeah, this, honestly, is where I got the whole Kara has a blackened soul thing from. I imagine that since they had a human down south when Gaster was alive, that Asgore would have... Hello there, DJ. What happened? Uh, we're looking for all the Easter eggs. So when Gaster was alive and the royal scientist reporting to Toriel and Asgore, who I think is probably most likely to be the two people he's, you know, talking about, given that they instated him, they paid him, 
Just makes sense, right? Or it could be Asgore and Alphys. We literally, there's no way of knowing. So uh, whatever that is, is completely up to headcanon. None of this actually tells us anything. But I feel like Kara, because Kara is supposed to be the true name of the genocide route. Kara is representative of uh, just an evil soul. So her soul would be black. And this right here would be like, Gaster has been studying Kara's soul to try and maybe replicate it. And he discovered what her soul was made of. And he was going to tell um, Asgore or Toriel or Alphys or literally anybody. And then, unfortunately, he was pushed into the lava because he, he, he fell into the core, which we can extrapolate from that. Everyone keeps saying he fell into his own creation. Uh, that could either mean that he um, fell into the amalgamation thing, which I don't necessarily think is true, uh, or he fell into the core. And the only reason they would know that is if they found his body. Or they couldn't retrieve it because it was too hot. Like, simple as that. Story of Gaster falling down into the lava underground. Yes, that's why every time we were going past the core, I was saying that that tiny pixel right in the corner of the screen, that was, uh, that was, Gaster's, that was Gaster's body. I fell from the height. Burn or should I die? Ah, oh, he's going to burn anyway. Yeah, so uh, this tells us literally nothing. It, all it tells us, realistically, is that, hey, cut content. Again, you can't get this organically, so we can't use it to theorycraft. Um, maybe not cut content, but just like hidden in the game files and stuff like that. You have to actually edit the game files so it's not organic to the uh, normal story that we have presented. What do you two think? This is the only interesting part of this whatsoever. And also, photon reading's negative. I don't... I, I feel like this... All of this is about the... The barrier. Right, I feel like the core was put together to sustain the barrier. It needed huge amounts of electricity pumped up from the heat to create the amalgamations who were supposed to create a soul as powerful as Kara's at the time. And they had Kara there to gauge whether or not they, the soul was powerful enough. Maybe. But photon readings is another really weird thing because the monsters have magic. Why the hell would anyone be studying any kind of science underground? Right? That, that's, a, that's a really weird plot device right there. The story of Undertale, but it's Gaster falling to his death and burning alive. Yeah, it's pretty good. Epic cover. Definitely. How would he have Kara's soul? Because she was alive. She was alive when Gaster was the royal scientist. So was Asriel. Both of them were alive. No one seems to want to admit that, but they were all alive at the same time. And I don't know about you guys, but if I was king of the underworld, uh, maybe not like hell, but definitely underworld, uh, because the environments really do seem reminiscent of Greek mythology, the Greek afterlife, um, you know, the uh, rivers of the the Phlegophon, the burning river of blood, the Lethe, the um, one that makes you forget, there was um, Tartarus, the river of Tartarus, which was magma, and there was also the rivers Styx and Acheron, which were blended together because the goddess Acheron lived in the river Styx, therefore giving, giving Styx the other name. Got to go now, bye. Uh, it was lovely to see you, Spaghettini. Hope I see you around again. Uh, but here's the thing, right? We just don't know. We just don't know. Why would the royal scientist be studying science? Like, I, I get that his title was the royal scientist, but why would he be studying royal science if he was a monster who could commit magic, unless he was trying to use science to magnify the magic that was already present, that would be the barrier. I think uh, Kara had an evil soul, and I think that, well, well you know, it doesn't matter how she got the evil soul. Some people say that she was a victim, but that also creates dark souls as well. You don't deal with the trauma. I feel like that is probably what we're looking at right here, to be quite honest. Oh, um, the audio that plays during the entry is labeled as music smile in the game files. This file can be sped up by 100% to reveal Muffet's laugh reversed and then looped over. That's strange. I wonder why. Yeah, the man who speaks in hands. We've also seen uh, evidence of this in the game as well. Beware of the man who speaks in hands. That is Gaster. Gaster exclusively speaks in wingdings. So I don't know why people think that the mystery man is Gaster. Because the mystery man speaks. Mystery Man speaks very clearly. I, re I, I remember. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I'll have to actually go back and see. Surprise, Mystery Man. Right. 
So I don't know why this is on that wiki. That is irresponsible. What else is there? Uh, we have room 269. That is the Mystery Man one, which we have already seen. Widely believed to be gas. It can be found... Right, unlike every other NPC, they have no collision physics, and interacting with them causes them to react in surprise and vanish while the sound effect plays. Let's go ahead and find out what that is. Room 269. I think we actually already saw that one with a, uh, an actual fun value. This room can only be accessed when the game's fun value. Okay, we did actually see it. We definitely saw it. And we saw the Mystery Man as well. All right, what else is there? Room 123, the water pre-bird, is a removed corridor with tall grass that is presumed to connect to room 99. Let's go ahead and try out 123. Why not? We've got the time. One, two, three. Saved. And now we want to go into the room over here. One, two, three. Saved. Okay, uh, that's not what I wanted to bring up. Let's go ahead and bring up the... You should find all the goners. Thanks, Fabo. I've already done that. We found every single one of them. Uh, naturally as well. We didn't cheat or do anything other than editing the fun value on the text files to uh, force them to spawn. Okay, so now that we've done that, we want to find the game back up and see what this room 123 is like. Because if this is the place I think it is, this is going to further support my Kara has a blackened soul kind of uh, theory right here. Let's go ahead and just like uh, blow this up real quick. Now, here's the thing, right, about Kara. We don't know where her soul went. We just don't know. Uh, people theorize that it was, it was absorbed into Asriel, but there's no evidence of this. And when he fights us, we don't really see him giving any preferential treatment to a specific soul, which would be basically his sister. So... <laughs> We don't know where Kara went. She could realistically be walking around in the monster's world as a ghost, not being able to pass over to the next area because she was uh, a wrong spirit or something like that. I know she was killed, she was poisoned, or she got sick or something like that. I think that was gas to doing that. So let's see what this room is all about. Ooh. Hello? Whenever the girl moves her net, this bug scurries straight into it. Weird. I'm catching bugs, but the underground doesn't have many. I keep catching the same one. Alright, so there's actually NPCs in the, in the bushes here. A Jew tried to catch a bug, but I just caught a cold. Oh, well, that was weird. She poisoned herself. I'm catching bugs, but the underground... Okay, so this is all just looping dialogue. Right, okay, so this tells us nothing. It's kind of funny, actually. Oh, we crashed the game because it's not linked to anything, which means our character didn't spawn in another room. Okay, so we've seen that one. Whenever I think of Gaster, I think of that one cosplayer dressed up as the Mystery Man sprite, breaking it down at a convention in Italy. Why? Wait, there's, there's no evidence to support it. There's, there's no evidence to support the connection of the two. I was just thinking of that video where he just breaks it down. I'm not going to go and watch another YouTuber. That is the last thing that I'm going to do. I have original thoughts. I am the YouTuber creating the content, and thus I'm not going to go and steal other people's content uh, because, quite frankly, it's probably wrong. It's probably completely incorrect. Uh, as we have definitely found in this one very specific playthrough that I did just to show everybody... That the fandom is wrong. The whole fandom has been asleep at the wheel. Everyone's wrong. Never told you she'll react to it? Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm just not gonna. Um, there are a few others that we can check out. Room 272 is black and has a ghostly figure. Nicknamed Redacted. Okay, let's check that one out. 272. 123? Absolutely not. 272. Nice. And this one here. 272. Done. Let's fire up the game. See what's in this one. You ain't even cosplaying Gaster. Uh, it's, it's probably a good promotional thing. It's, if it's what the lowest common denominator believe, it's what YouTubers are going to push. Yeah. <laughs> 
This was not as advertised. This slaps. I don't know how to interpret this though. <laughs> I don't know how to interpret this. So this is room 272. Hopefully the song is still gonna be up. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is supposed to be room 272. Oh, to access this room and avoid the annoying dog error screens, a hexadecimal editor needs to be used to change the dog check value. To what? Dog check value? What the hell is a dog check value? Four. Uh, disabling dog check. Okay, let's do this. Oh, it's another video, for the love of God. Oh, it's only a minute. We can do that. Okay. Oh, wow. Those are all songs? Why are you opening the game? Right. So an actual hexadecimal editor. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that. So this is an error screen. This is actually an error screen. This dog don't even need college. You're already good enough. I know, right? That was, that was worth seeing, honestly. The error screen alone. Okay, so we have seen entry 17, we've seen room 272, room 264, we've seen man who speaks in hands, we've definitely seen that one. Ah, here we go. Beware of the man who came from the other world. So that kind of supports the time machine theory, but it doesn't necessarily confirm anything whatsoever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just processing that for for a little bit. But where have the man who came from the other world? Again, this is just speculation and hearsay. It does kind of support the whole everybody in grey or black and white or monotone colour appear to come from a different universe which supports the Goner Kid and also the Gaster followers. But all of that again, just, it, it's cut content. It's all cut content. I don't, we can't use that. Unfortunately. I'd be interested to see if this um, was in the, the first release of the game. Have you found Sand Secret Room Rat? Uh, yes, we found that ages ago, uh, about two playthroughs ago. The dog is Toby Fox? Yes, it is, Dust Sands. Uh, we've seen all of the Goner Kid and Gaster's followers. Can't look at the Goner Clam Girl because we don't have a switch. Uh, Sands has a workshop behind his house. Yep, we've seen it. Allegedly, there is a time machine behind it. I don't know who said that, honestly. But... L okay. Gonna kid, the NPC that discusses alternate timelines says with the umbrella, an umbrella, but it's not raining. This may relate to the song, it's raining somewhere else, which plays when Sans takes the protagonist out to dinner in the MTT resort and in his workshop. Why, wait, why would that have anything to do with it if it's raining somewhere else? Then that would not refer to this kid whatsoever. That is literally the opposite of what this kid is representing. Okay, room 80, that is, yeah, that's Sans's back room. We went there organically. Uh, room 264. We went to, yeah, we definitely, we went to room 264. The broken machine in the room has said to be unfixable, according to Toby Fox. This means that the machine was never meant to be fixed. Uh, maybe it didn't come from that world then. Maybe it literally came from another world. <laughs> nice. Oh my god. This is, I wonder if he did this himself. Okay, none of that's actually useful. They, they just link Toby Fox's name. Additionally, one of the types of attack Sans uses against the protagonist during his boss fight, which I've done a lot, in Genocide Route is called the Gaster Blaster, suggesting it's connected to W.D. Gaster. Yeah, he probably made it when he was Royal Scientist. He existed. He existed, but it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, that's kind of cool. The Mystery Man sprite upside down before and after interaction. That is cool. I didn't notice that. Very neat indeed. It's like this guy's wearing a mask, right? The Mystery Man. I know it's, it, it's still, that we don't know if this is Gaster or not, because it's never uh, confirmed or even alluded to whatsoever in the game itself. Have you seen the image of Toby Fox covered in foam? What? What? Is that relevant to the theory? Toby Fox covered in foam. 
This one. Yeah, it's good. I like this. Call me crazy. But. Okay, I'm making a connection. Where's that mystery man icon? Does this look like this? Why aren't people citing this? Remember this is the same man who saw Undertale? Yeah, yeah this, this looks significantly more like the mystery man than anything else that we've seen. Not just because of the colors, but because of kind of like the, the inverted mouth, the black on the inverted mouth. Weird. Amalgamate Toby. If only we could get like a, a bigger mystery man icon. We just don't get one. It even looks like this. <laughs> oh, it's so weird. <laughs> <gasps> oh. Okay, well, that's food for thought, realistically. Just food for thought. Let's get rid of this image of naked Toby covered in foam. So, are there any other rooms that we could potentially see where we don't need a hexadecimal editor? Because that is just excessive. We, we don't need to do that. Just to see one kind of Easter egg room. Uh, WD, oh, that's just trivia, not interested in trivia. Oh, this is Gaster. We want the rooms. Please? Or not? <laughs> yeah, so I think we've seen everything, right? We've, we've seen literally everything that is uh, fun value related in the game. And we've seen most of the Easter eggs. Now, there should be one. Oh, yes, this right here. So, room 123. We want to go back into room 123 really quickly. This is what I was looking for. Room one, two, three. One, two, three. Save. And this one. Room one, two, three. And save. And then I think we've probably seen about as much as we could gather from the game. Right? We've got all of the evidence minus the ending for genocide, which is genuinely very hard. I am having a very, very rough time beating that one. Okay, let's find this bad boy back up. You can say Toby Fox was foaming at the mouth when he took that picture. He was foaming out the pores. Oh, we're still here. Good. So, there's supposed to be two guys. One here. Whenever the girl moves her net, this bug scurries straight into it. Okay, repeating dialogue. Let's go down. Whenever the girl moves her net. Okay. There's one person there. Oh, who's this? Excuse me. Yes, you with the striped shirt. Can you do something about your friend? Yes, your friend. The one behind you with the creepy smile. That right there. That is my smoking gun. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, oh, it's Gaster. It's Gaster standing behind her in that. Let's go back to the wiki. This right here, possible sprite. This is not confirmed. This is not confirmed to be Mystery Man right here. This little thing that we found earlier in the game. They could be flowy. It could be flowy. But I know who it is. I know who it is. For my theory, I know who it is. This is. Well, okay. Yeah, Kara. This is Kara. Look at this. That's a tiny icon. Why don't people upload the... Why don't people blow the pictures up and then upload it? So, if we control F on this wiki right here, In the VHS tips, so that was found in the true pacifist run that we have already got. Kara is implied to be mischievous and can make a creepy face with a certain smile. Now, this is inaccessible from the game, so I can't use this as evidence, but I think that the mystery man might actually be Kara as a ghost because we don't know where her soul goes. We just don't know. Kara is also intelligent, secretive, and persuasive. 
Courage does not let their plan be recorded on camera, and they gain Asriel's trust to continue the plan. So, oh, I didn't realize this was common knowledge. I, I noticed this, the one stripe. Apparently that's Kara falling down into the underground. Ah, oh, that's pretty funny. So, I feel like it's Kara. Where the hell do we get a jump scare? Oh, I should get off this wiki, actually. The spoiler's on here. Right, we found everything. We found everything that we wanted to find. We found that uh, the fandom is absolutely full of misinformation and most of it is just flat out wrong. Like, unequivocally wrong. <laughs> most people are hinging all of this whole Gaster is the story thing on the connection that Gaster is the mystery man when the mystery man speaks in plain text and Gaster speaks in windings. So automatically, that tiny little uh, pebble of a foundation that the gigantic house of theories are built on has just crumbled, right? <laughs> but it's a real big pebble. It's a gigantic pebble, but it's, it's also, it's really skinny. It's really skinny. So I think that Kara could potentially be Mystery Man. I think Kara could be the ghost of herself. We don't see where her soul goes. We don't know if Metatan harvests the soul. We don't know if she's let go. We don't know any of the stuff. All we know is that in that room, there was somebody standing behind us with a creepy smile, which means there are more players in the game than Gaster. There could be Gaster and Kara right here. Gaster could have studied Kara's death. Gaster could have studied Kara while she was alive. We don't know what Entry 17 is referring to. But the black... The, sorry, the, the, the photons. The photons that Gaster was studying, photons are an element of light. So it's got to have something to do with the soul. Or it could be the ghost. Okay, I mean, Entry 17, if you think about it, let's bring it back up again, Entry 17. If we really give it a good think, Entry 17 could realistically also be about uh, Metaton. I'll bring this up. Uh, where is it? Right here. Entry number 17. Dark, darker, yet darker. The darkness keeps growing. The shadow is cutting deeper. The photon readings are negative. So this could also theoretically lead to uh, the development of Metaton, whose sole purpose was to murder humans on behalf of everybody else. So I'm going to end it here. I've got some things to do. Um, thank you, everybody, so much for joining me. I am going to leave you with all of that, uh, all of those considerations to chew on, because there are a lot of considerations that we have just found in the five-hour stream that I just did. Did we not? Did we not find so much stuff that not only debunks the commonly accepted headcanon of this game, but we also found a bunch of other things that we can use to theorycraft for ourselves? Ish. I mean, we can't use all the cut content, obviously, and the, um, the kind of, like, monochrome people. I don't think we can use those either because they weren't in the full release of the game when it first came out. They had to be patched in. Uh, and a lot of people th say, oh, that's just because of typo. Yeah. This was a great stream. Bye-bye. Yeah, it was a great stream, wasn't it, Spray Paints? I think it was a, a really, really good one. I think it was a great one. So thank you so much for watching. Right up here, you're going to find the playlist for Undertale. And right up here, you're going to find another playlist that I think you'd really enjoy. Down the description of this video, you're also going to find a link to my Discord, where you can hang out with me and my community personally. And until I make the next episode, or you catch the next stream, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye!